right. It is time. It's the here, ladies for. and gentlemen. The largest prize pool and tournament in Black Desert Online history is here and we are super super excited i am blue squad and your host my co-caster and analyst here alongside me today is johnny five johnny you excited i am very very excited for this we have a absolutely fantastic lineup of teams and players from different guilds uh we're seeing something a little bit different with the no shy so i'm glad to see that we're going to be able to see a different um range of class compositions for the, the tournament itself and what an amazing prize pool and i know it's going to attract some competition it's going to attract some uh gamers and maybe even a few underdogs and i'm ready to cast this thing yeah absolutely um it is a stretch across two weeks we're gonna do the first two rounds of the tournament uh today today is the north american bracket tomorrow is the eu bracket so it is actually a tournament across two regions uh and it uh, as far as i'm aware has more teams in it uh than basically we have seen uh in the black desert category uh over 27 teams for the eu uh bracket and to over 20 uh, about 20 teams on the money uh for the north american bracket as well and some of the best players in the business here today so we're actually already looking towards our first match here so we're gonna take a look at the player cards for yellow squadron it is, looks like it's gonna be yellow squadron versus team mm -hmm. no drac wusa and valk abusers <laughs> yeah it's it's not my fault it's the uh, it's these team names man what are you, what are you gonna do all I mean, right they're, they're coming in with uh a good way to just show what they're going to be about we have yellow squadron with yellow heart hunter blue and region jupiter um yeah no going, uh, yeah you know these ahead. guys you you, got, you know these yeah. guys these guys are in corrupt right except for uh yellow heart of course which i i know you're also familiar with because yellow hearts is a super t1 oriented uh player at least she came out of t1s and now she's like a top fragger and isolated so why don't you tell us a little bit about hunter blue and and regent here yeah, so uh, Regent Jupiter is an Awakened Striker player. He's in the enemy side of the Alliance. Um, he's a very capable striker. Um, he is on my flex team. I fight with him quite often. Uh, we have Hunter Blue, who is an Awakened Ranger. Uh, Awakened Ranger, one of those classes, as it isn't the greatest of Node Wars, but when you get to these small kind of scenarios like AOA tournaments, that's when it actually starts to shine. That's when it's a good class. That's when you can show off the accomplishments. And he is quite um, skilled on that class as well. And Yellow Heart, um, as well, like you mentioned, being a T1 riser or T1 ranked player for a while, originally playing Suck Nova um, and Isolated, switching over to Awakening Drac um, at a later point in time for Node Wars. And it looks like for the tournament, bringing back the Suck Nova for it. So um, glad to see a little bit of representation from that. I don't know if we'll have much more than that. I believe Ratro uh, should be in the tournament. Yeah, Ratro's here too. So like, which, honestly, like, how do you feel about Suck Nova on Uncapped like this? So um, I think with the class, unfortunately, being kind of mistreated by PA in the last good while, it hasn't received the, the buffs it needs to keep up with a lot of the other classes. Um, I think in the past, you used to build it more of a, like, a, like a bruiser um and you would be able to deal damage while being somewhat tanky but i think anymore you're going to want to build it almost more like dp meme heavy and just go for full aggro full ccs um especially with the gargoyle coming out and just uh, ccing people cross map just doing whatever you can even on the ground with the ccs so i'd imagine she might go for something like that or maybe just a very heavy bruiser um, okay that's that's what i would like to see if yeah. we end up having a, a yellow heart and ratro 1v1 later down the line that'd be great um i believe um Yellow Heart and Ratro worked together for a while. Yellow Heart trying to learn the class was almost like a mentor mentee. So I'd like to see that kind of a uh, uh, reunion in the tournament if possible. All right. Yeah, right on. And how do you feel? Awakening Ranger, Suck Nova, Awakening Striker. I actually feel like that's a pretty good composition. Uh, all things said and done. Yeah, the Ranger's kind of squishy, but uh, with all the iframes that are in the Awakening Ranger's kit, I feel like Hunter can actually play relatively safe uh, and wait for an engage for Regent there. Uh, I'm not sure what the Nova necessarily adds to the composition too much, but Yellowheart is absolutely a super gamer. Uh, on the other side of this... We have no Wusa, Drac, and Valka users. Uh, and this is Chief, Azrelia, and Leifonda. These are also, well, 
Lafond is at least an enemy. Enemy is obviously a part of corrupt. Uh, Azrelia is that menace on the succession lawn. Chief mm -hmm. is Cho Nation, one of Cho Nation's very best striker. I almost said best striker. Then I remember that Divios existed. He actually wrote second best striker NA on his application for the tournament <laughs> because he knew that uh, Divios is in the tournament today. Uh, but it is the rank one striker in AOS for season three. That is our most recent season. Uh, and probably the best striker best striker that we have seen with over five years on the class then you have Israelia on the succession lawn four years on suck lawn and everyone knows who Israelia is probably second on lawn maybe third maybe to ham and khufu uh and that's about it um but and then we have Le fonda on an awakening corsair and you you and i know Le fonda is a succession corsair how do you feel about him mm -hmm. bringing awakening to the tournament so i'm uh just seeing him play in the corrupt alliance i have seen some of his awakened corsair um awakened corsair is one of those i don't want to know i don't want to say sleeper necessarily but it's one of those classes that isn't played a lot um, but it definitely when you have the skill set for it can shine whether in large scale or small scale it's a, a incredibly disgusting class uh, people got to be careful with some of its abilities especially with uh, like Sea Mist being able to penetrate forward guards and CC at the same time uh, from range, nonetheless. Um, coupled with Striker, who can do um, it's it just full aggro from the the Striker and the Awakened Corsair, and then you're gonna have Azraelia just kind of flying around the arena, applying pressure, just a rat in the sky waiting for you to drop your guard. So I, I think this is a decent composition. I think this is gonna be a good team as well. Yeah, I mean, like I'm. I'm a little concerned about Succession Lawn in the 3v3 format. Take away for a moment that it's really is a terrorist. Um, how do you feel that Suck Lawn actually does in a 3v3 format like this where everybody's basically bringing grabs? Um, I think with a lot of the meta anymore being fairly protected, um, it's going to be one of the weaker classes into some sort of brawl composition like the Yellow Squadron team is. But if you have a team that has maybe a, ra or not a rat, but a ranged class on it, like a caster or uh, maybe a bow even for some reason. Uh, it, it'll be a lot better there in that instance, but I think it's gonna be one of the weaker links in the, the tournament just because of the class's play style and what it's meant for. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as we head over to the versus screen here, guys get those predictions in uh as to who you guys think is gonna win this match compositionally johnny who do you feel has this you, you got an awakening striker awakening ranger suck nova with an awakening striker suck lawn awakening corsair it's like a mid-range caster on the corsair suck lawns that melee assassin and then awakening striker kind of that bruiser frontline tank um and i feel like both compositions kind of hinge around that awakening striker trying to get a grab here mm-hmm I, I think it's going to come down heavily to the strikers on which one is going to be the better, um, just better monkey in the tournament. But with it, I don't know. The Suck Lawn and the Suck Nova are both kind of the weak, weak links on both teams. I, I want to give it to the Awakening Corsair team just because I think Awakening Corsair is going to be better anymore than the Awakening Ranger just with some of the abilities it can do. It can do the range damage. It can have uh, CC as well. It can apply a lot of pressure while staying mobile um, and he's going to be able to be evasion on it. So assuming the other team doesn't have a lot of accuracy, they're going to kind of struggle with that. All right. Yeah, no, I completely agree as we're getting uh, ready to kind of go into this one. Honestly, I think that... Uh... Compositionally, I'm giving it to Yellow Squadron here. I really like the Awakening Ranger. There's actually not very many Awakening Rangers in the tournament today uh, for North America. So Hunter Blue kind of uh, part of a dying breed here. Um, so I think that, and then the, the only concern I have for Yellow Squadron here is the, the Succession Nova. I'm not really sure how Suck Nova really is going to perform uh, on uncapped like this. Um, so we will see. Uh, over on the other side, again, uh, it's really going to come down to which striker can actually uh, land that grab faster. Now, before we get into this match study, I'm curious. There are a lot of teams in this tournament. I assume that you have, uh, like, surveyed them ahead of time. Who do you think is the favorite to win this tournament today? Oh. <clears throat> I... That that is not going to be an easy question for this tournament. No, I think it is in a not. Lot of them, no, it is <laughs> not. No, it's a really a, tough question. In a lot of the tournaments, uh, you would be able to look back and say like, okay, like these are the you know like the two favorites or the three favorites maybe. But for this one, there's just there's a lot. Like, um, 
you're, you're gonna have like skeptics team which everyone you know there's gonna be like a, a large fan base for skeptic in it bringing it in um i mean you, you just just the compositions alone for some of these are going to be interesting. Like Ventus is no trash surprise. Has an awake Migu, awake Drac, awake Tamer. Um, Steakhouse has a Valk, a Wiz, and a Wusa. Like these are a lot of players that I've seen in different tournaments or different parts of the game that have all done really, really well. Um, and it, it's going to be hard, hard to I'm say not... like which one's for sure. I think I mean a lot of people are probably going to um, bet on the Divios team. C or team? maybe like yeah. Lazy Noodles or something like that with Larry Fish and Kuma Queen and Nudes. So I, I don't know. Um, I, I I don't have a clear winner for this tournament, which is probably the exciting part of it, in my opinion. Yeah, I every matchup, dude, I had to seed the tournament. I had to like figure, I'm like, all right, so which of these people have the upper hand, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I did seed, I think that Divios' team with Bobo Buddy uh, is and Raiden, of course, he's in almost every tournament he's ever been in, uh, has been with Raiden GTR on the Valkyrie. Um, so you have an Awakening Warrior with an Awakening um, Striker. That Divio's on yep. a Striker in this tournament instead of the, the Sage. Mm -hmm. I guess those Sage nerfs uh, really did hit home on that one. And then Bobo Buddy on the Awakening Warrior. So you have a Valkyrie, a Warrior, and uh, a Striker together. Compositionally, that might not be the best. You know what I mean? Like I've seen, I've seen stronger compositions. What do you feel is the strongest composition in the tournament uh, for a three v three format in uncapped like this? In uncapped, um, I think Awakening Striker is going to be one of the, the the strong classes. It's got the grabs. It's got a ton of tankiness. It can still deal de decent damage. Um, you're gonna maybe want that. I think for sure the number one class that you're gonna want in this tournament is gonna be an Awakened Valkyrie. Um, yeah, since Shies are banned, yeah. So good. Yeah, the Shies are gone. Um, so having the uh, PA, having the heals, having the accuracy buff, which is, I think, one of the bigger things of the three utility parts of the kit to want when you're going to have this uncapped tournament. You're going to have a lot of heavy evasion players, like the Strikers we mentioned, right? Yeah. We have Chief, we have a uh, Region Jupiter, we have um, Divios. These are players that are going to have so much evasion. You have to have the accuracy buffs on a majority of classes. Um, um, I don't think Awakening Warrior is the next best for that team. I don't think it's a bad yeah, that's, pick. That's but the, it's that's not the a question, great right? Pick. Yeah, who who do you replace the Warrior with? I feel like it's an Awakening Draconia, right? I feel like it's it, like it, Valkyrie, Draconia, and then X class, right? Is like the mm -hmm. best that you can get. Um, Awakening and we, Draconia we see a lot would definitely be one. Yeah, and we're seeing I, a lot of that competition, or a, a lot of those classes in the tournament. Uh, Awakening Valk and Awakening Draconia for both regions uh, are definitely the two most popular classes here. Uh, as a friendly reminder uh, to the players, no pets out uh, during the tournament. You will be disqualified if you have pets, if you are found having pets out. We do have two referees walking around today uh, with pets enabled, so we will be able to see that. Uh, the faster load screens in the arena of Arsha, I don't think the developers quite thought it all the way through. Uh, we do have faster load screens now, and sometimes the arena of Arsha does bug out and the gate doesn't actually go down between rounds. So if that does happen to you, uh, in your match, just make sure you stay within the gate area until the time actually begins or we will have to reset the match. Uh, also, there is no gear swapping uh, except between rounds. So when the gate is down um, or between rounds, you're more than happy to switch your gear. Um, but once that gate is up and the round has started, you can no longer swap your gear or use the gear bag. Johnny, you know why that is? Uh... I assume just to not cheese things between getting CCs with DP memes, switching to offensive gear to kill people. Is that that's my guess? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like it, it, essentially, what you what you end up having is you have a full DP meme and then a full AP set, and you just mm -hmm. switch between the two when you find CCs. It takes a lot of the competition um, out of the match, so we do have it banned uh, for today. Uh, it looks like we are just about ready to get into our first match. Um, in the first round here, we have the Goats and Untamed uh, as well. And I feel kind of bad. Untamed actually wasn't in the tournament uh, at the start of the tournament. Um, I feel like it... And they got added kind of after I made the bracket because um, King James IRL went and made his own team. Family and Untamed have been beefing like crazy. And then lo and behold, <laughs> lo and behold, they are the first match uh, in the first round of the tournament. So there's going to be a lot of beef into that second round there um, as we get into it here. Uh, let me look over here at Kiwi. 
Okay. Um, it looks like we are ready to go. Uh, I'll go ahead and take us over to the versus screen as we get going. There we go. And the gates are resetting here. We are just about to get underway for the first match of the tournament. Let's bring it over to the live scene. Uh, on this one where we are spectating Yellow Squadron. We've got Regent Jupiter on that Awakening Striker here. Again, the Awakening Ranger is going to have his work cut out for him. But Hunter very experienced on the Awakening Ranger here. And Yellowheart ready to go on that Succession Nova. And they are all dripped out here, Johnny. <laughs> the gates open up and they're ready to roll. They yeah. got their clothing on. Oh my goodness. Uh, As Azraelian oh. just dove right in there on that lawn and then floated right back out again. He wasn't sure whether or not he wanted to engage or not. Reach it looks for a grab. Not able to find it. Yellowheart playing safe uh, on that suck over there. Staying in that wonderfully balanced frontal guarded super armor as they fonda kind of skirts around the side of the arena with that awakening course there but hunter blue taking so much damage on the awakening ranger he just can't stay alive you just don't have enough iframes and they just ran him down and now it's region on the ground now without that ranger there i'm not sure they have the damage to actually make this team composition work too much region does find a grab though uh and looks for the grab under the fonda but later on it is so tanky yellow heart losing health down at 10% and the bleed is ticking as that suck Nova does not have any regeneration uh, capability. She is probably going to tick down there. She does. She is forced to V and you see the enemy team. Uh, no Woosa track. Valk abusers spread out looking for the sniff on Yellowheart's V there. Regent, the only one left alive on this Awakening Striker here. It looks like he will go down in convincing fashion in the very first round here. Johnny, what went wrong? So right off the start, um, Chief was able to get a grab on Yellow Heart, trying to dump a bit of damage into her. And you notice that she didn't take a lot at first, so she's definitely on the tankier side of builds. Um, Regent also not able to match with the grab as well, is going to be able to, to hold them back a bit. But the, the damage trade between the two teams just seems very, very heavy um, for uh, Team No Drac, Wusa, or Valkyrie. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of looked like it is uncapped so like it, it's that's it looked like a bit of a gear diff but like hunter hunter blue is 730 gear score uh on the awakening ranger there so like he just needs to play a little bit more safe we know that awakening ranger uh can rotate those iframes you see like putting a decent amount of pressure on him here he does find chief on the ground there but he knows he can't actually kill him uh right now he he just has to play so safe as everyone is just always on him as he kites back he hasn't been able to put any damage down at all yet but this is what awakening ranger is capable of when played at the highest level you see these iframes all over the place he's just jumping around like a gymnast constantly avoiding cc but no he does get grabbed he's on the ground forced to v does manage to get out of it looks like the v is going to be uh to safety here comes out of me she finds him barely gets back into iframe and he is kiting for everything he's got right now no v left no iframes left kiting back down on the ground down goes hunter and he is just run down by israelia on this lawn right here the succession lawn just an absolute menace yellow heart on the ground on that suck nova now as well gonna go down as well because there's just not enough regeneration there and now again the only one left alive is region jupiter over there and he's gonna do his best in a 1v3 but it does look like no woosa drac of users uh no woosa drac valk of users is gonna go ahead and move on to the next round of this tournament now keep in mind it is double elimination johnny so, so we will absolutely see them again it. yeah we will absolutely see them again i don't want to say as predicted but i will say that awakening ranger is an incredibly difficult class to play in a situation where you're being dove by three people like that right johnny mm -hmm. I, I you just saw in that last round especially that they're just holding the w key at uh, Hunter Blue knowing that he's going to be the one squishy target and if they just burn him out of the stamina by just keep chasing him and forcing him out of the essays, forcing him out of the iframes, that he's going to eventually just get caught. If he doesn't get caught, he might even just die from the um, damage that's putting, being put on top of him while he's in those essays. And then once Hunter Blue goes down, it's kind of hard for the other two to try to clutch for the 2v3 because you still have 
the suck lawn and the awakening striker applying full pressure on top of you while you have the awakening corsair safe at range just applying nice cc's nice damage putting more pressure on you and it's going to be very very difficult to come back from that yeah absolutely um it does look like it's it again team no drac Wu said valkyries are going to move on to the next round and although they made short work of that round they're fighting divios's team in the next round uh, how do you feel about that matchup where you have Bobo Buddy on the Awakening Striker, Raiden GTR on the Awakening Valkyrie, and Divios, who has never lost a Pearl of His sponsored tournament uh, in his in his career on Awakening Striker uh, into that Awakening Corsair team that we just saw right there? Uh, that's that's going to be a completely different um, matchup, even if the team looks somewhat similar. The Awakening Valkyrie is going to allow Divios and Bobo to both trade better into their opponents because it's not always necessarily can you one combo while standing or can you one combo while even on the ground or whatever it may be, but just being able to trade better, right? If everyone's just dumping damage into each other, being evasive or evenly trading grabs, which a lot of the high-end skills or matches comes down to, which is trading a lot of the same things over and just doing it slightly better. Being able to have that Valkyrie buff is gonna give you a huge, huge damage advantage. Um, which means that you can play not necessarily more risky, but more aggressive because you just keep applying that unrelenting pressure. And even if, let's say, the trade goes a little bit poor and one of you gets grabbed and your opponent doesn't, or something along those lines, you have the Valkyrie still for that PA, that heal, that extra utility, which is going to be an absolute menace to deal with if you don't have one. All right. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these teams in this tournament here. Uh, the next match on our supposed to be uh the goats here um and, and so it's gonna be the goats versus untamed uh the goats is Goticus, hoid and swidex these are some very very well-known players johnny how do you feel about this team right this this is crazy Goticus is super super well known for his succession ninja and this exact Goticus and hoid actually almost gave cho nation a loss in the best in guild tournament in 2022 i was shout casting it it was absolutely insane uh how close that match actually was they did eventually get knocked out in the very final round but it went down to a nail biting finish uh as he Goticus was basically toe to toe with armin but um, a lot of people like to call him on the groundicus uh, because he does choke an awful lot. <laughs> he does choke an awful lot in situations like this, but mm -hmm. he's also an absolute unit. Then you got Hoyt on the Awakening Draconia, uh, and he's only got two weeks on Awakening Draconia, but he he's a gamer, right? Like it, the background, his background on the scene is this guy is just a gamer at basically everything that he does. Uh, and every class that he touches. Awakening Draconia, though, an extremely difficult class to kind of pick up and play, but, like, Hoyt is just that much of a gamer. And then Swidex on the Awakening Valkyrie, certainly one of the best Valkyries in North America, uh, and absolutely rent-free in Bro Bear's head, uh, as I'm sure he's probably having flashbacks <laughs> to Nam, uh, even seeing the name on his screen. But uh, how do you feel about the composition overall with a Suck Ninja Awakening Drac Awakening Valk? So I think what a lot of the... Um the strong compositions that we're gonna see is gonna be two bruiser-esque style classes with one rat. And that's exactly what you have here. You have Goticus on the Suck Ninja, especially with that e-buff, he's gonna be able to apply a lot of damage. He's gonna be able to fish for CCs and stealth possibly, but that class can play extremely aggressive or extremely passive either or depending on the situation. Um, gonna be very good for damage, gonna be very good for CCs. Hoid on the Awakening Draconia. We know it's one of the more difficult classes to play, like you said, or at least to pick up right away. But it's one of those classes that if you can pick it up, if you're a consistent gamer from re-rolling and you have that experience, you're going to be able to be very, very impactful. It has its own heals. It has a lot of damage. It has a ton of movement. So if you want something that can fish out um, some Vs or fish out some damage even or just dump whatever the heck it wants onto the, the battlefield, Awakening Draconia is going to be that class. And finally, Swid, the class that we've talked about over and over and over. Dude, it's being so good. One of the best in NA. Um, Awakening Valkyrie, again, has all of that utility from the PA, the heals, it has grab, it's very tanky, um, it, it, great movement as well, uh, it has vacuums as, and accuracy buffs, like, it has it all, uh, it's the, the one be all class, um, and Swid, again, being one of the top players, uh, in NA is gonna be, is gonna, is gonna bring the hammer down with that thing. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and then if we look over at Untaped, and keep in mind, there is... 
between these two teams. Understand that King James IRL, who now leads the Untamed team, was on um, Ske Don Skeptic's teams, the Skeptic Love Shies. I'm not sure he thought that name all the way through, Johnny. Um, yeah. But like he used to be on King James, like King James IRL used to be on that family team. And then Untamed has basically been getting hunted by family <laughs> relentlessly for like the last two weeks. Uh, and they kind of threw uh, a bit of a fit uh, and decided they were going to answer the team, uh, the tournament on their own. Uh, so you have basically another family team versus King James IRL with this untamed team with Bingy and Hero Play here. And you have you have an Awakening Ninja versus a Succession Ninja. You have the Awakening Berserker on Bingy, uh, and then you have a Succession Sage in King James IRL. Now King James normally main striker. He switched it to Succession Sage last night uh, at the very last moment. So I'm curious um, what he thought was so much better about Succession Sage. But Johnny, how do you feel about this team? I think this is going to be definitely, just from a compositional standpoint, the weaker of the two. Um, the beef, maybe the beef will heat them to go through with this, but King James, primarily being a striker player, is going to be geared. He has a lot of evasion. He's going to be able to deal damage on that succession sage. The suck sage is going to be very good into a lot of the evasion classes that we'll see in the tournament. Um, paired with an awakening zerk and awakening ninja. It's... It's kind of the two bruiser, one rat composition I talked about earlier. Awakening Zerk able to provide some range uh, CCs and damage with Titan Blow and Buster. Able to fly in and deal a lot of damage if it really wants to with Ancient Wave and a few of its other abilities um, like Slugfest and whatnot. Having three grabs is fantastic on Awakening uh, Zerk, making up for the lack of the Striker. And then Hero Play on the Awakened Ninja, seeing some changes in the semi-recent times bringing it more in the spotlight again. I've seen some clips, I've seen some videos of it. It doesn't look as bad as it used to be. It looks like it can drop some damage. It very much looks like a classic in 1v2 or 1v3, maybe for a distraction. I think this is gonna be a good uh, a good spotlight or a good time for hero play to be able to show what Awakening Ninja can, can do with the recent changes. Uh, and I'm excited to see that. Yeah, do you feel like Awakening Ninja or Succession Ninja is the stronger one in this format? Like, they're really, the diff the only real difference between the two is that Succession Ninja, I would feel, fits more of a rogue. I asked Armin about this uh, um, many moons ago, uh, and so this is basically Armin's regurgitated answer. The way he mm -hmm. explained it to me is that Succession Ninja essentially has, mu it's, it's more of a rogue play style. It's like the traditional D&D &D rogue play style where you're basically sitting in the shadows waiting and then you have a tremendous amount of burst damage but you're not very protected um in kind of like the the neutral uh zone as we call it uh between engagements awakening ninja definitely has a little bit more burst damage front loaded on the kit uh but has a front like a lingering frontal guarded c swap when they go from pre-awakening to awakening um and this helps them basically trade a little bit better and play in a little bit better in an extended engagement like that so which of those do you feel like he's better in a 3v3 setting like this? Uh, I, I kind of just want to lean for the, the suck ninja with it. Um, um, yeah, I think that just having burst damage, as we saw in that very first round, uh, the burst mm -hmm. damage can just wipe a person off the map so, so quickly uh, before the match even starts. So... I do feel like Suck Ninja might have the advantage here unless it's more of an extended engagement because like Awakening Ninja can basically disengage and re-engage multiple times. Suck Ninja, you basically have to be playing right on the edge of your seat, but that's why people say that Godicus is both A, a goat, and B, uh, he chokes a lot because like if you mess anything up at all, uh, you can really uh, basically just lose instantly on that class because you're just not very protected. Um on the back side of it. So uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and look forward uh, to the next match as well. We're gonna just gonna start going through the teams here. It does look like uh, Bingy isn't quite in the arena yet. And is totally fine. Let's take a look at Miscreants, uh, which will be in our next match. This is Enza, Ratrospec, and Suna, uh, Johnny. So like, do you know these players super well? I know, I, I know, I know them pretty well from the years of experience uh, in the PvP scene. Uh, these are very, very well-known players. So, um, how do you feel about this team overall? Suck Nova, Awakening Ninja, Suck Musa. So, uh, Enza and Suna, I know from fighting quite a lot. Um, I've seen them in different guilds. I've seen them in different parts of the game. Um, Enza, a very, very good ninja player. Um, is going to be able to come in and really show what the Awakened Ninja can do and to see, you know, to answer our question from earlier, if Suck or Awakening is better. Um, he's going to be a menace on that. He's going to be something that people should kind of worry about. 
Retrospect, I would argue, is probably the number one suck Nova in NA. I've known him for a long time. I've seen him roll in the class. I've seen him go with the class and even take a break from the game due to the class's mistreatment. And he's going to be able to bring that class. He's consistent in AOS with being one of the top players, consistent with being the uh, top one of the top Novas. Uh, and Suna playing a suck Musa. Oh my gosh, that class, when you know how to play it, is so fast and can dump so much damage onto a target that if anyone tries to apply heavy pressure on Rattrail, Suna and Enza are going to be able to just jump on them and blow them up from the back. And I don't know. I think this is a very weird composition, it but I think weird. that they might be able to play together well, and this might actually be an okay composition. Instead of having the two bruisers and one rat, this is the two rats and one bruiser. So I, I, I'm interested to see how it works out. A little shift and a little change in the wind. Um, but I, I don't know. I think they're all capable players, all good players, and all have gear. So I'm ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then uh, the next, like, like the ne honestly, my personal thoughts on this, you have Ratchet Spec on the Suck uh, Nova. I'm not sure how effective the Suck Nova is. We saw it in the very first round of the tournament. Uh, it can kind of fall flat on its face, or it can keep. It can. It can also look incredibly busted, right? Suck Nova and AOS is, whew, man, that that class is kind of rough to deal with. And Ratro is certainly one of the best, if not the most well known, Succession Nova on the entire server. Uh, you have Suna, who is always in the top 100 uh, of AOS, basically no matter what season it is. Uh, he mm -hmm. has some higher up third place finishes in a tournament. Doesn't have too much tournament experience overall, though. But like you said, Suck Musa has a crazy amount of single target burst damage. Not very much AOE, but that doesn't matter so much in a format like this. So I think that having that damage there is is extremely good. Uh, if you look over at Anza, I feel like the Awakening Ninja in this composition is really kind of just the... He's the initiator, right? Um, and mm -hmm. this is this guy won the best-in-class trial tournament for Ninja. Keep in mind, there were two best-in-class tournaments. There was one best-in-class tournament that was uncapped uh, gear, and then there was a best-in-class tournament that had capped trial gear, and he won the capped trial gear, and Enza is super geared um, on that ninja. So this guy is absolutely nothing to sleep on, but his team is absolutely going to be looking at him, um, to be engaging there and they're going to be up against among us V three. Let's take a look at them. There we go. We have multi melter meth and pig fun fact about oh, cool. meth and pig have literally played together in every single tournament in Black Desert history, well, at least the big ones, in Black Desert history since they started the game eight years ago. They play together in every single tournament. I had the pleasure of playing with them while I was in Vertex. These guys have more synergy. It is absolutely insane. If anyone was going to try to come out and win this thing from the first round of the tournament, Math Pig and Multi might just have it because Multi Melter, as everyone knows, is an absolute goat on Dark Knight, but Johnny, he's playing Awakening Draconia. I... The the Awakening Draconia is not what I would expect to see from them, but I mean, like we talked about earlier, the class is good. Um, he's had nine months on the class to, to figure it out. It's a little bit better than two weeks from the last one. Um, but the, I don't know. It's a class. It's going to be able to... That can dump a ton of damage. It can provide support. It has self-heals. Um, it can sustain and get out and, and do what it needs while you have meth and pig and like you talked about playing together for so long You're gonna have a synergy that is unmatched and between those two meth playing an absolutely Geared to all heck awakening Musa and pig on his awakening striker That's a lot of evasion and that is a lot of damage I think if those two go against a team that doesn't have a Valkyrie, they're gonna have a very very hard time killing those two yeah, I think so as well. It does look like we are just about ready to get into this next one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this again. This is the GOATS versus Untamed. So we have Godicus, Hoyd, and Swidex on one team, and it looks like 60% of the audience are actually rooting for Untamed. I would say that the GOATS is actually favored to win this, but the audience absolutely trying to root for that underdog as we get into this one, Johnny. I think the GOATS has arguably one of the best compositions you can have for this. A Suck Ninja, Awakened Drac, and Awakened Valkyrie is going to be gross. Um, so I, I'm... I'm Maybe there's going to be an upset. Maybe we're going to be proven wrong. Maybe it's a cast or curse. We'll see. 
Yeah, and the gates are up and away we go. The accuracy buff comes out for that Valkyrie. You see Goddick is already in position on the side of the fight over here. Just lingering his front guards out, lingering those super armors, waiting for the opportune engage here. Neither team has really uh, gone in here. Hoyt tries to dive across, doesn't quite find anything there. Swidex just trying to stay uh, with his team here. Bingy cutting back the Awakening Berserker, definitely very vulnerable. It is a relatively unprotected class, as broken as it, some people do make it look. Bingy takes a lot of damage, but does manage to get out of it. Gotikus on the Floricus. Oh my goodness, takes so much damage there, and does get out with Shadow Step on the ground again. Gotikus in V right Right now not off to a good start in this one does come out of v and manages to re-engage the fight uh but bingy on the back foot of this one as well both teams trading damage got a kiss down the ground one more time no v this time but oh my goodness innovation we trust gets back up he needs to focus up on this one bingy gets run down and ends up dying despite the fact got just says it's all part of the plan they cc me we kill them that's how family works goes in with red rain there's the katana shower uh and the blade's been going down finds the grab on a king james irl turning on the juice is family in this first one for the goats taking oh it looks like they're gonna take round one but king uh king james irl is still alive on the succession stage but in a 1v3 i'm not sure how much he's gonna be able to get away with here johnny i don't think he's gonna have a great time especially with this composition um but going oh respecting I mean, the one round we're that's the that's the strength of Valkyrie and that's the strength of evasion. I don't know if you noticed it there, but Swid saved Godicus a couple times there. Um, using the utility that the class has to just keep him alive, even with, you know, Godicus being on the floor, um, making a snow angel just rolling around all over the place. So I <laughs> yeah. uh it, it they got to correct that before they get into some teams that can actually kill them through those heals. Absolutely. And what they're doing here, guys, is they used all their class buffs in this round here. So they're actually waiting uh, for time to kind of tick down here so that they can get their class buffs up for the next round. This is a super sweaty way to play, but this is the most money we have ever seen on the line in a Black Desert tournament. So I fully expect this uh, out of teams where you're just trying to sweat uh, out of your mind. Uh, here and now they're just not going to try to kill him because again they're waiting uh, on their cooldowns here uh, I'm not sure uh, what the pivot is necessarily going to be because Swidex peeled so so well there purification if you don't know on Valkyrie has about a five second cooldown it's a frontal guarded heal and if it hits an enemy and an ally it actually basically heals your allies and yourself to full health um mm -hmm. it is it is obnoxious so the way the skill functions is if you hit an ally with it it does heal them but if you hit an enemy and an ally with it you heal for much much more and it's on a five second cooldown protected heal and then it's normal heal um the uh Elyon's blessing actually gives your ally super armor for three seconds um and and allows them to basically get up again and then of course valkyrie also has protected area uh as well so uh we'll see if swedex can keep up that excellent performance in the first round there but untamed they saw their win condition right Godicus was not playing uh as well as he probably could there uh swedex uh absolutely saving him but uh protected area is on cooldown this time and a succession stage can kind of blow him up johnny well, that's one of the things to look out for too is even if uh they don't have protected area with the sa uh that's going to deny a oh. secondary cc versus evasion swidex on the ground gets floated by bingy bingy goes in but then gets grabbed by Godicus. he's on the ground taking too much damage doesn't the actually steps back you see bingy on the side of the fight right there kiting through uh trying to keep his distance on that awakening berserker gets way too low bingy just not not even using v before he dies and again awakening berserker it's a sweep the leg situation i mean if you're really good at that class you can make it work but it's very unprotected it relies a lot on forward guards and against a composition with a ninja like this you're just gonna struggle like that so they are really on the back foot here as hero play is forced into v as well it is a 2v3 and family is letting them know hero play goes down and it's king james irl on the ground as well the goats is gonna take the second round of this one johnny Awakening Zerker being a class that is, you know, considered very, very strong, I think is... I, I wouldn't say it's weak by any means, but I think it's definitely one of those classes that has fallen behind the power creep of a lot of the classes anymore. 
Um, it, you know, it's got this mixed bag of range to melee damage. If it tries to apply full damage at melee, it's got a lot of unprotected skills. It's going to be in danger. And if you make a single mistake on it, you're going to get CC'd, especially with a high pressured comp like we saw from the goats there. It, it's going to be dangerous for you. It's going to be a bit, it's going to be difficult to play that class at its fullest with this quality of people at such a low, um, like a player amount being a 3v3. Right. Um, in large scale, you can get away with some of these things um, depending on where you're playing or how you're playing. But in the small scale versus some of the players that you're going to see, it, it's going to be it's going to be rough. I was actually so worried about them when I saw Godicus. Just like, uh, honestly, he was just warming up. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's just warming up, Johnny. No, no big deal. Um, because I think there's a lot of buttons to press. There is a lot of buttons to press. You really have to hate yourself to play uh, Succession Ninja for as long as Gatticus has. Um, but they were able to pull that one out. And we are already looking ahead uh, to our next match here where we're going to have Miscreants versus Among Us V3. No. <laughs> we did start talking about this before. Again, this is the Enza, Ratrospec, and Suna. Uh, and again, this is the rank one or like the best in class trials ninja um on Anza with Ratrospec, who is arguably one of the very best succession novas since the class came out uh who was basically always in the top 10 overall in aos uh and then suna from snake on a succession musa to bring that damage in there i feel like the musa just plays safe and just waits for uh the ninja to get a pick and then they just blow somebody up right I, I would say, yeah, uh, as soon as just got to run around the arena at Mach 12, like Suck Musa does, and as soon as he sees anyone um, caught lacking or CC'd from the, the ramp, um, from the Suck Nova or from the Awakening Ninja, he's just, he's got to just fly in and just dump all of his damage instantly. One of the, um, uh, the drawbacks of Succession Musa versus Awakening Musa and is that Suck, uh, Suck Musa is going to be very forward guard heavy versus Awakening Musa, which is very SA heavy. Um, and so most people build uh, Suck Musa to be DR, so you can just dump damage and get out. Um, and then a lot of Awakening Musas build Evasion so they can stay in and be tanky and brawl. Um, and so I wonder how that's gonna work with this kind of a composition. It feels like Enza and Ratro are just gonna be fishing for CCs and waiting for Suna to jump in. I'm not sure if Enza is Evasion or DR, um, but that will heavily impact his playstyle. If he's evasion, he can stay in and fight and trade. Um, but if he's DR, then he's got to be like Zuna, where he just stays out of the fight, maybe fishes for CCs, and as soon as the CC is found, jumps in and just dumps damage. Um, so I, I'm, I'm waiting for that one unless they submit it to you on which one they are. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually a little bit more concerned. I think compositionally, both comps mm -hmm. are actually going to be playing very similar. Because if we look over at Among Us here... go you have multi melter meth and pig and again you have this same sort of strategy where meth is on an awakening musa but it plays very similar to the succession musa you're basically playing an f1 you're 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 making laps around an f1 track um like you're verstappen you know what i mean until somebody finds a pick and then you mm -hmm. come in um with big damage on the back side of it in this case uh pig actually put on his application he's an excellent w key uh user uh, he basically just runs people <laughs> down. That's how these two like to play. Like, Pig just runs at you. It's almost infuriating watching the striker whose knuckles, he's basically a quadruped, whose knuckles are dragging on the ground as he gallops after you belligerently, and you're kiting back, doing everything you possibly can, and he's just run at you, and eventually he's going to grab you. Um, and then here comes Meffin from the side. Big damage there, but honestly, he might not even be the biggest damage here because Multi has all of the gear in the game. Well, I think that this entire team, like, you know, Pick has on his W key destroyer, but I think that's what all three of them are going to do. I think they're going to pick a target that they can they can run down and they're just going to W key and dump damage. Meff is going to be very, very high evasion, very, very um, geared player. Pig is going to be going in for grabs and trying to just dump as he can with like spiral cannon, fish out CCs and whatnot. And then Multimeter playing the Awakening Drac, like they're just going to full SA dump on whatever they can. I think that's what they're going to do and that's going to play very well into a team like Miscreants because Miscreants is, you know, two rats and a bruiser. And so what I imagine what's going to happen as soon as those gates open is that Pig, Meph and Multimelter are just going to full rush W key on top of Ratro and just instantly um, eviscerate him until he's 
nothing but dust is my first guess on what's going to happen but um that that's what I, honestly that's what i would do with that team and composition i yeah i think that the suck nova ends up being the weak link here you know and that's why mm -hmm. we talk about suck nova being kind of a weaker class right now even in an uncapped format like this because like you don't have any regeneration and you're kind of just a sitting duck uh and like you really want to play slow but in a situation like this i'm not sure that he's going to be able to uh it does look like we might be ready to go here so we're going to go over to the versus screen make sure you guys predictions are in for this one again it's miscreants versus among us v3 i'll be honest johnny give me give me predictions and thoughts uh from the casting desk i think among us v3 takes this i hate to say it but like as good as miscreants is i think they're 2-0 I think skill can only take you so far. Composition and gear still matter so, so much in this game. And so I, I give it to Among Us V3 as well. Yeah, um, it looks like the gates are about to go up here. As we get into this one, uh, Multi Melter sporting the Shell Bell set on that Awakening Draconia. No one looks disrespectfully uh, at his Draconia, only respectful looking uh, on this one as... Honestly, he's going for the distraction technique from the enemy team right there. Uh, both teams playing uh, a little bit slow right out of the gate. Right here is both teams just kind of looking at each other. And this is actually good for Ratro as he can just throw damage. Oh my goodness, Ratro comes right in. Gets, oh, multi takes a CC. Has to be immediately. Ratro said, no, 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 You're the problem here. Big took a lot of damage on the backside of that one as well. Everyone is in V right now. And it's Ratro on the Suck Nova on the offensive. Galloping forward like this. You just don't see that very often. Finds Mef on the CC. Mef will be the one that goes down. How often do you see a succession Nova? Catching an awakening Musa in the AOA like that, Johnny. Oh my goodness. Absolutely that, crazy. Oh, that, I mean, the, the prediction that we had going into it was exactly what didn't happen at all. A little <laughs> bit of a caster curse for Among Us V3 there. Um, Miscreants actually ended up just just jumping in and being full bore on it ratro being very very aggressive getting that fantastic grab on meth the awakening musa and it, i want to see if it's going to happen again that was yeah, good they went on ratro and they were just ready for it they knew that ratro they were going to see ratro as the weak link and ratro just said who's really the weak link here um and just ran him down and pig i don't think pig was as tanky as he thought he was uh going into that one because he just took too much damage meth getting caught on the back side of it too i don't think that multi thought for a moment because they got a grab uh, i don't think multi thought for a moment that they could trade so much damage this round you see suna on the succession musa waiting to go in waiting for his opportunity uh kind of dashing in meth playing just the same way oh my goodness multi gives him a good trade suna has to back up right away there rats are down at 50 percent as that suck nova doesn't have the regen uh to get back into this one uh as he kites back there meth takes a lot of damage suna and meth both playing um Pretty well here on the side of it. Looks like it did bug out just a little bit right there. Uh, Multi coming back into the middle of the arena, looking for a CC on this Awakening Draconi. and just almost just a better Musa uh, being played like this for Multi here. Just so much regen, so much damage on the Awakening Draconi. looking for a CC here. Uh, basically keeping himself in full SA. Oh my goodness, gets floated right there. Suna finds the damage. And Multi has the V once again. It's the same thing. Ratro's down at 40% though, as we're down at a minute and 40 seconds on the clock. H B bars have ticked down to 80% already, but both teams getting down under 50 as they're just trading back and forth with one another. Multi waiting his turn to kind of go in. Gets behind Ratro. Finds the quick grab from the Draconia. Ratro forced the... Oh my goodness. Did Ratro die there? I'm not sure if Ratro actually went down there or if he got the V off. It looks like he's still up uh on this one but multi kiting through here pig and meth playing much better into the second round uh of this one here as people kite back uh it looks like suna may have crashed there and there's not much we can do about that as once the gates are down uh the match will continue uh until there is a winner ratro is gonna go down there's the grab uh onto multi right there he does stand right back up uh pig's gonna take the leg drop right there as well um it looks like meth Pig and Multi gonna get uh, almost a free round here. It does look like Suna did crash there, but very sadly, uh, we can't restart the match, sadly. Otherwise, uh, you'd have people basically losing a round uh, and then just leaving the match, pretending to crash. So 
Uh, sadly, we are just going to have to take this one. Looks like it's going to even out to 1-1 here uh, as we wait for Suna to rejoin the arena on this one. We'll go ahead and take it back. Um, to the caster yeah. desk here, waiting for Suna uh, to come back here. Um, we will just go ahead and wait. We'll have to wait for the, the, the match to reset unless Suna has already joined the arena. Uh, it looks like the match uh, will go ahead and reset. Yeah, we'll just wait. Uh, it's 1-1, one, one, so whoever takes the next round yeah. is going to be able uh, to just, you know, continue down this winner's bracket. There is still the loser's bracket as a reminder, so even if you see your favorite team lose this first match, um, they're still in the tournament, so don't worry about that. Um, but uh, I, I was... I, I was kind of confused at first because we didn't see the exact same thing from Miscreants in round two that we saw from round one. And then seeing that Suna wasn't in the match anymore, it made a lot more sense. So I don't exactly know when Suna crashed, but I'm wondering how much of an impact that played on the actual fight itself. And if that second fight was very in the air on if anything changed because at first i thought wow among us has just quickly adapted to this right they saw their issues from the first <laughs> round and they just out. fucking changed like that freaking sorry um <laughs> but it was the um it was just uh and then suna crashing made it a bit unfortunate so i'm ready for him to get back in i'm ready for them to prove what they can do um i i'm still actually quite hyped for both of these teams even with miscreants having a little bit of a of a weird composition um yeah, three working. highly skilled players showing what you can do still um kind of making me eat my own words on skill can only take you so far so i really hope they come back i really hope they put up a good show and even if they do lose they will continue on either way though among us v3 being one of those um teams that people are heavily expecting to win or heavily expecting to go far being a Cho Nation team, of course, with Meph and Pig being players you've seen and then having the notorious player Multi-Melter uh, multi is going to be... I don't know. I, I wonder if... Um, what was the vote? Was it 60-40 this one? Yeah. Or... Um, here, let me check let, let me check the prediction uh, on this one. 13% of people thought that Miscreants was going to win this. 87% of people thought that Among Us V3 had this. And then Snake, let's be honest... The difference maker here, definitely Snake, as soon a crash, and then they were unable to win the round. It's definitely just a guild diff, Johnny. That, that's all there is mm -hmm. to it. You know what I mean? It's just a guild uh, It's diff. just a guild diff. So I'm hoping that as soon as it comes back in, uh, I'm checking to make sure that Roots did actually PayPal me for winning that last round there. Yes, it does, does look like that we have that there. So we're going to go take it over to the versus screen. Here, as we are ready to get back at this one, it is going to be a best of one. Uh, for this one, as all of the players are spawning back in here. We have Pig, Meph, and Multi. And I'll be honest with you, Johnny, they didn't play crazy well in the first two rounds of this, so they have their work cut out for them. I think even with it being a 3v2 situation, it didn't look like a lot of the 3v2s look. We saw like in the first match where as soon as um, Hunter Blue died, it was just a complete collapse of the team um, in the 3v2 situation, but we didn't see that. So I I'm excited to see what Miscreants can bring out of the bag in this one. Maybe um, yeah. give a 13% a lot of their, a lot of channel points here. Yeah, it does look like we have um, everybody here this time. Nobody's crashed yet. Thank goodness. Uh, Pig looking for the initiate here uh, on that awakening striker uh, with meth and multi out on the side. Everyone just waiting for the enemy team's initiator to find a pick of some kind. Ratro throwing out those pets. See if he can find anything. That gargoyle is so so annoying uh pig looks like he's trying to get on to enzo right there but not able to quite find it as retro kind of backs up i think that they've kind of changed their strategy after they went on retro uh the last time he just is a little too tanky uh to make anything happen here and retro is just a super super bold and you see how pig's kind of off on his own but meth is always just one render away from pig just in range to make something happen if per pig were to find a grab here suna uh dashing away you're never gonna catch that succession moose amount uh as he dashes around uh health bars do tick down to 80 percent you pig see pig just holding the w key as he runs through the arena uh spiral cannon forward not gonna find uh a cc right there Oop, going in not gonna get Ratro. Ratro playing pretty well on the backside of this one. Does find the grab onto Ratro, and it's a second grave. Mob ball soccer in the middle of the arena right there. As <laughs> Pig is forced to be, and again oh, they find. On the ground. 
Mess on the ground as well on the side of the ring, but he does get up and dash away. And again, he's doing his best impression of Max Verstappen uh, when he gets up and he just starts running around the arena uh, at Mach 5 there. Uh, and it does look like he did get to safety. Pigs down very low as well, so they can't really make it initiate happen here. It looks like Miscreants just honestly out trading them left right and center into this round i don't know if anyone predicted miscreants to come out this strong in this way in the very first match of the tournament this is so close health bars are about to tick down to 50 percent here at the one minute mark so we are capped at 50 percent because that's how the arena of arsha works your health pool goes down lower everyone can be bursted now and there's an awakening draconia walking around suna takes a big burst from multi and goes down to 20 percent and now is on on the run. Fortunately, Awakening Draconia has absolutely no weaknesses uh, as a class, and so he gets right away and gets his health um, gelf, uh, gets his health back, um, and now again, oh my goodness, Ratro comes out of E! Pig finds the, finds the damage, gets knocked over himself! Ratro's gonna go down as well! Pig's on the ground! Do they have the damage for that? Um, no! Pig does make it away! Suda is dead as well, and it is a 1v3! Now, oh my goodness, it does look like Among Us is going to take it, Johnny. So close. That was very, very so, close. So, so close. Was, it was very unfortunate for Miscreants that when um, Pig did find the CC, or I believe it was Pig who found the CC on Ratro there at the end, that Suno wasn't able to actually come in and fully support. We saw Pig uh, CC it immediately afterwards, and it was almost a one-for-one -one trade of the two tanks. Um, but Suna was so low that when he came in to try to dump some damage, he just, poof, gone, just turned into dust, nothing left. Um, and the from there on, you know, it's going to be a 1v3, and that's not something you can really well, uh, win, even for Enza. Just with the way that gear works with evasion and how tanky you are, it's really, really, really hard. Yeah, it does um, look... Uh, we do have an instant replay here. Let's see if this is going to work for us here as we move over. Yeah, right here we see uh, Pig going in here with the Spiral Cannon. Looks for Ratro. Gets him on the ground. Dashing around the arena. Looking for the final pick right there's the grab. Ratro finds him out of V. Ratro goes down on the back side of it. And that is basically the entire match in a nutshell right there. Just absolutely tragic. Ratro being found out of V like that. Um... Yeah, tragically, um, uh, but it's okay. There is a loser's bracket. Uh, crashes do happen. Uh, sadly, you can't replay rounds once the round has started. Otherwise, in a tournament like this with a prize pool this big, people absolutely will wait for the gate to go up. And if the match doesn't look like it's going their way, they can absolutely just alt F for the game and make it look like they've crashed. And there's not very many, there's not very much way for me to check that, uh, as Perlibus can't really check it too much either. Uh, so... Just kind of have to take that for what it's worth, but that's okay. They will go to the loser's bracket, and we will absolutely uh, see them come back one more time. As we look ahead to our next match here, Johnny, uh, we have Skeptic Loves Shies. Again, I don't think he thought it through. Versus Dragons. Um, so Skeptic Loves Shies being, you know, Skeptic himself on the Awakening Dark Knight. One of those classes that you probably wouldn't expect to see in here um we have no gamble no loss on the succession hash again another class that is kind of you know a little bit out of uh the ordinary and finally armin on the succession ninja a class that we uh would see more often one that we kind of expect a bit more and being armin as well um is going to be able to bring it to the the table for it i don't know how geared armin or no gamble no loss loss are anymore um i assume fairly geared especially with armin is he still in Cho? Um, uh, no, Armin is not in a guild. No, he has in... to, do, yeah, he has yeah. to be unlisted. But he is marked into family, I believe. Um, or actually, he's actually he's... in pimps right now, yeah. uh, which is Cezanne's old guild right now. Um, so we have skeptic, no gamble, no loss, and Armin. Armin, of course, the absolute goat um, on the Succession Ninja. He is one of the most knowledgeable players in probably the entire world uh, for PvP in Black Desert Online. And he plays Succession Ninja, and he is no slouch at that. He is rank one overall AOS, and he's done that on multiple regions, Johnny. Uh, he is rank one AOS in North America as well. 
Um, he was the rank nine CM while he was worked for Pearl of Ace, but you know what? In the top 10, <laughs> even though the team is eight people, uh, he did a great job. Uh, he did get first place at the best in guild tournament in 2022, but remember that was the same tournament that Goticus uh, and family's team actually almost knocked them out of. Uh, and now he's on Team Skeptic. Don Skeptic on the Awakening Dark Knight. How do you feel like Awakening Dark Knight fits into this composition? It... <sighs> I mean, it's just triple rat, right? This is a team that's going to run around the map, just fishing things out, seeing what they can get, any sort of picks. And as soon as they do, you're just going to see a, an instant collapse from all three players on top of the target. Um, Awakening DK. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's worse in this one, the Succession Hash or the Awakening DK. I want to lean towards <laughs> the Succession Hash just because it's a bit of a blind class. And when you have a heavy, heavy evasion tournament, it's going to be a little bit rough. Um, but maybe the damage from it, the support damage with the tornadoes everywhere, plus the Succession Ninja and the Awakened DK, they might just chip their opponents to death. Um, yeah, he's counting on that Seed of Catastrophe damage mm -hmm. um, from Skeptic there. And as we take a look over at Dragons, who is their opponent here? It's Flowers, Junso, and Travesty. Oh my goodness. Bro, this team is stacked. Flowers on the Awakening Draconia, who is widely renowned as one of the very best Awakening Draconias uh, in the world. Rank 1 uh, AOS um, overall uh, at certain points in the season. Armin did take it from him uh, at the very end, but certainly the Rank 1 uh, Draconia many times. Uh, and also the best at making a montage. If you've ever seen this man make a montage, absolutely insane. But basically been playing the class since release. And then you have Junso on the only Awakening Guardian in the tournament. And normally I would say that Awakening Guardian is a weak class in a 3v3 uncapped format like this. But if you have Junso on your nameplate, I don't really feel like it's a weak class anymore, Johnny. Uh, it's funny how that works. And then you have Travesty. And again, on an Awakening Mystic, Again, Awakening Mystic is a class that if I saw it on almost anyone else, I would say this is a disadvantage. But Travesty is so good at Awakening Mystic. It's an excellent frontline tank. It's so good at disrupting things. Awakening Mystic can make so much happen for your team uh, with the suction, with the uh, with the AOE, with all of the, the, the slows that it brings and all of the utility as well. I don't, Johnny, who do you feel like wins this? I... I kind of want to give it to Team Dragons here. So the, the composition and what I'm kind of thinking here for him is Travesty is, of course, going to be playing that very, very tanky Awakening Mystic. Just going out and throwing CCs everywhere, throwing dam or not damage, uh, slows all over the place. Um, if you get just tapped on by Travesty, you're going to be, you know, at a crawl. Um, followed up by a, uh, Junzo's Awakening Guardian, um, which is a class that is... A little bit lackluster for large scale, but when it comes into small scale like AOS, um, it has perma SA iframe. It can drop some decent damage within still again protected SA, and with um, the the um, skeptic love shy's team only having the grab from Armin, it might be a little bit rough to try to CC Junzo. It's probably going to be that chip battle we talked about earlier. It is a slower class, so he might have a little bit of difficulty staying alive or trying to find those CCs if Travesty or Flowers aren't able to. Um, but we'll have to see there. And then finally with Flowers, again, Awakening Draconia. It's got a lot of damage. It's got self-heals. It's fairly tanky. It's fast as can be. That class is just darting all over the place. I don't know if he's going to be locking flight. I imagine he will. Um, that'll give him a little bit of an advantage with some of the, the skill flows and some of the changes there. So I'm interested to see if he is going to do that for today's match um, or if he's going to leave it unlocked. But I, I want to give it to Dragons, but not handedly. I would say like a 60-40 kind of a situation. I, I think that the only way that we win this, that Armin comes out and hard carries um, for this Skeptic Loves Shy team, because I'll be honest, this team is, Dragons is too tanky, man. They're, they're so tanky. Um, no cap. Junso and Travesty are going to be bringing the heat, and then Flowers has so much damage on the back side of it. And I think that when, every time Junso swings his, um, swings his Jordan, I think that Skeptic is clenching a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. on the Dark Knight. So we'll <laughs> see. I think that if they play it perfectly, I think Skeptic Love Shies absolutely has a shot at this. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and head over to the Versus screen here. As we are ready to get this one started, uh, it looks like the predictions from the audience look like 
it's almost split 50 50 it looks like 56 percent of the viewers think that dragons is going to win this skeptic love size only has a 44 percent prediction right here um yeah sadly kufu did not enter the tournament and so he is automatically second in montaging guys it's not my fault it's it is what it is let's get ready to go here there we go and we have junso it looks like this might be the only opportunity we have to spectate in awakening guardians we're gonna go ahead and take a look uh, at him here sporting the bugatti set on that guardian is junso um well oh my goodness armin just goes straight in catches junso immediately but again he's too tanky misses the awakening grab gets grabbed again nope stands right back up he is doing just fine but taking so much damage on the back side of this one junso standing in the middle of everything guardian with a lot of iframes but not able to iframe that they actually just let him go there was a catch there uh skeptic trying to pelt him with seed of catastrophe from range those are the purple dark knight animations you see coming in from the side there and junso trying to catch that dark knight with a slow but down at 30 percent and junso just losing out on the health trade it does look like again um we it looks like a uh, skeptic uh is kind of back here no no cc really coming down here armin did is on the ground but he has too much evasion uh for them to get it make anything happen oh my goodness it looks like they just lost flowers out of nowhere he just died flowers just went down and that is the risk that johnny was talking about in a three rat composition at any point you could just get blown up jonso doing an amazing job of jumping around on this guardian being basically a distraction trying to make things happen but they just ignored him and went and killed flowers who is the big damage threat here travesty it looks like he has a lot of dp on and they're just working down jonso just slowly chipping him down he is is going to be out of that one so travesty is going to start taking a little bit more damage here uh you see trav trying to keep up with the fight but like he just he's basically a dp meme he can't make anything happen by himself he has to keep junso alive junso's the only damage and if awakening guardian is your only damage left you're gonna have a bad time he's gonna go down armin doing an amazing job of initiating for family here and skeptic love shies does look like they're gonna take this first round here look how little damage they're doing to travesty here johnny this is this is frightening. So that might just be the tankiness that Travesty can um, achieve on the Awakening Mystic along with his gear. But <clears throat> I'm almost wondering if it's also a composition and gear thing too from uh, the Chai's team here because, you know, the Succession Hash is going to be a class that struggles against Evasion. I'm not sure how great Awakening DK is. I know Succession DK does a pretty decent job. Uh, and Arma and Armin, assuming from how much little damage he took, um, from being on the ground there a few of the times uh, is being evasion. They're going to have a hard time into some of those evasion classes. So they might be able to pull it through on this one, but I, I'm, I'm ready to see what they're going to do against maybe like a pig meth kind of a team. Yeah, uh, we will try to spectate Armin on this one. They did end up winning that. I think if Flowers plays it a little safer, um, I think they'll be just fine because they were actually trading uh, pretty well there. They did find a couple CCs. They just never capitalized. Oh, look at this. He's in stealth. Uh, and you see this lot. No gamble, no loss is also going in in a tornado. They can't see him uh, in there. Oh my goodness. Armin standing in the middle of the arena. Gets Junso. What a clean engage from Armin. That's why he's the best right there. But Junso does stand right back up. Uh, very cleanly played Succession Ninja. Junso taking a lot of damage. Red Rain to debuff him right there. Excellent play uh, coming down as Armin moves through. Really looking for his targets right here. Finds another CC onto Trav, but that doesn't matter oh. too much. As Oh my goodness, who is that really low? Junso down at 10%. Bleed is ticking, but Armin's on his back. Stands right back up because in Evasion, we trust on this one. But Junzo, honestly, he's got so many iframes on that Guardian. He's just iframing around. He's trying to get his health back. He's doing just fine. Standing in the middle of everyone. Uh, are going to find Skeptic on the ground. Skeptic, they said, sweep the leg. Armin just says, come on, man. I'm doing my best. Skeptic's uh, uh, actually dead right now, and it's a 2v3. But Junzo's very low. You can see Armin in stealth looking. Oh, my goodness. Junzo knocks Armin out of stealth, but stands right back up. Gets knocked down himself. Oh, my goodness absolutely insane back and forth from these players right here in a 2v3 armin's on the ground trav just trying to re-cc him and throw slows down as junso has to be minute and 38 seconds left on the clock junso armin finds a grab on a junso can they find the damage down at 10 percent junso is bleeding trying to kite out awakening guardian running short on time running short on iframes this is the problem with the class it's so slow can junso make it work he is gonna go down to the bleed on the backside of it and now it's a two 
2v2. It's not over yet. No gamble, no loss. It's knocked over. Stands back up, though, as he's just got too much gear. Not enough combo right there. Travesty has no damage. Flowers is all the damage on this team. Finds Armin on the ground. Trav's on the ground as well, but Armin stands back up down at 50. Flowers takes a worse trade, though. It is going to go down. Trav absolutely the only one left alive and that was quite an explosive match don skeptic gets put on armin's back and they just no gamble no loss armin carry this straight through oh my goodness uh, i guess that's why he loves shies man you got to get carried by somebody i suppose johnny <laughs> i mean with um skeptic getting grabbed by uh junzo and being forced to v immediately um, and then jumping back into the fight, getting CC'd again and kicked out, turning it into a 2v3, which they managed to pull through. Um, I I wasn't sure what was going to happen after Skeptic kind of went down there. I thought maybe it was a, a possible win for Dragons. But the, the CCs they did get on um, No Gamble, No Loss, and the CCs they got on Armin, there was just no follow-up damage. And I'm yeah. again, I'm not sure if it's a composition thing with Junzo um, and, uh, uh, and Flowers, but oh my god. I, they need some accuracy or something because there was no damage coming out of there tonight. I, in fairness, Armin has an insecure amount of evasion. Um, like it is, it's crazy. You basically can't, you, you can't kill him. You know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's really tough unless you have a lot of, if you have a lot of accuracy accessory, he did. Um, he's super dead, but you see how squishy that Awakening Dark Knight is, and that's how that's mm -hmm. what makes that class so hard is you're constantly at a, on a razor's edge. And you see Don Skeptic uh, was playing, and then he was playing from the spectate mode. Uh, basically, immediately, we do have an instant replay here we'll take a look at. Uh, right here, as we see Armin kind of going in uh, on the side of this one, does get CC'd uh, on the back side here. Goes in, you see him go into stealth here. This is where he finds Junso actually hits him out of stealth. Look at that. Absolutely insane. But Junso was CC'd as well. Um, so honestly, just a crazy close match uh, between those two teams right there. It was absolutely good fights uh, to both sides. Sadly, Dragons will move to the lower bracket right there. Um, as we look ahead to our next match, it looks like Here's the round that people have been waiting for. Everybody wants to see uh, C-Team here. So let me see if I can't find my C-Team. There they are. This is your favorite team to win this tournament, Johnny. Raiden GTR on the, the Awakening Valkyrie. Bo, Bo, buddy. Representing one of the only Awakening Warriors in either tournament. And Divios on the awakening striker uh on this one keep in mind didios has never lost a pearl abyss sponsored tournament in his life and i know what you're all thinking but blue this tournament is not pearl abyss sponsored and that just might be his achilles heel but we're gonna have to see today how do you feel about this one johnny it's looking a little this is a tough team right here this is a very um, good team going into it. I want to clarify really quick as well. On the bracket, it shows Dale McMuffin and Tavala Timis as round five. Are we switching for that or? Um, oh, did they? Um, oh, they are round five. Okay, so honestly, okay, my bad. Yeah, no, they, the tournament director's like, yo, 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 chill, chill. He's off script. He's off script. <laughs> That's okay. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this one then. We'll, 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 we'll come back to this one. It's all a right. little teaser for C2. A little, little teaser, a little teaser, a little teaser. That's all. No big deal. All right, so instead we have Day Old McMuffin, which is going to be Florang, Bath Soap, and Illiterate. Um, uh, Florang, who is probably the rank one open world terrorist uh, in the entire game. I have personally experienced uh, the terrorism firsthand. Uh, he is not, it's it's almost an unethical uh, how good he is at that Kunoichi and the amount of gear that he's actually got. He's absolutely incredible at it. Uh, but his biggest accomplishment is actually that he beat Block Jump exactly one time. Um, and Bath Soap, also from family here, um, he says he's a top frag player in the number two Siege Guild uh, in the game, but he's playing Succession Draconia, which you don't see very often, Johnny. Uh, and then you have Illiterate, uh, in family on the Awakening Valkyrie. Uh, I asked for time on the class, and he just said about tree fitty. 
um <laughs> so i i just I, i'm not sure if that's three fifth 350 hours or what that means exactly uh but we all know illiterate is super good how do you feel about this composition here johnny so this is going to be um a little bit different of a composition again they have the two bruisers and one rat um with the succession drac coming out from bath soap instead of awakening drac um succession drac being a decent large scale class in my opinion but being a bit weaker on the small scale side um one of the big things that's going to hurt the class is it's going to be very burst oriented around the ions and if it doesn't have those ions up which i think in this kind of a fight it's gonna it's gonna struggle with and keeping them up it's gonna not have the damage it needs or the healing it needs Flooring um, though coming in i assume on the uh super heavy evasion succession kuno is going to be very very good for uh cc still has a good bit of damage and finally illiterate on the awakening valkyrie uh, having all of those utilities with the pa the heals um the accuracy buffs vacuums um is going to be a, a very very good class i think overall this is a decent composition you have flooring to seek out uh some ccs and whatnot the Suck Drac and the Valkyrie have a lot of self-sustain. They can keep themselves alive while they're waiting for those CCs. And if it just becomes a brawl in the center match, those two are ready for it. So I, I think this is a pretty decent uh, composition and team. Yeah, I think so too. But if we look at their opponents here... Over on this other side too, Vala Tims has style, drag and drop in making what I believe is his very first tournament appearance is CTG. Um, CTG is probably the best open, uh, or I mean, large scale PVP player in the world. Um, I would say that a lot of people would probably agree with me on that. Obviously, there's not too much ways to test that, but you know that he's top fragged in basically every single major siege guild every single day um, of his life. He just top frags. That's what he does. Normally, he's playing Succession Lawn, though. This time, he's on a Succession Wusa, which is S plus tier, in my opinion, Johnny. In a format like this, in a 3v3 uncapped format, I think that people sleep on the Succession Wusa. We have a few of them in this tournament. CTG has got to be very 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 scary on that suck woosa and then we have drag and drop on an awakening valkyrie only six months on the valkyrie but hey guess what um he can heal you know what i mean he can hold both mm -hmm. shift and e at the same time which makes him valuable to ctg <laughs> um style uh in digital on the succession berserker uh top 100 aos in season two um not very many tournament performances uh but absolutely a very well-known pvp player so Honestly, not too much tournament experience here, but gosh, we know these players. It's the first time we've ever seen them, Johnny. How do you feel about this? So uh, CTG, also known as Ham, switching over from the Succession Lawn to Succession Wusa. Um, from talking to them and other players, saying that Succession Wusa just fills the um, the same role as Suck Lawn of being that, uh, that ratty, uh, quick DPS in the back line in large scale, um, it, just to being a better version of it. When it comes to small scale, is just it tremendously better at what it needs to do, which is just dump fat damage in an area and everything within it dies. And that's exactly what you have with that. Now that Sakwusa class, he's very proficient on it. He knows what he's doing and he's coupled with an awakening Valkyrie who can give him accuracy, which is even more damage that he can pump out on evasion targets. He also has a succession Zerker, um, which is again, this two bruiser, one rat. So I imagine what's gonna happen is that style is just gonna be sprinting around like a mad dog looking for some grabs. And as soon as somebody is being held up in the air, um, WWE style CTG is just gonna come down and just dump all of his damage on top of that player. And they're just gonna evaporate into thin air. Uh, the Awakening Valkyrie and Suck Zerker can do decent damage, assuming the Suck Zerker isn't like a double cadre, um, which I imagine they would do. It's just the full DP Zerker, maybe just one cadre for a little bit of six, um, for a little oh, bit of support yeah. damage. And but I, this this is a gross team. This is a very gross team, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't think he can afford to put the cadre on because otherwise you can't kill flow rank. Um, I think Flo Rang's got so much evasion and absolutely hurts a little bit. So like, I think that you need to be packing at, at can we, can we pack accuracy and how, uh, is the answer for this, uh, for this team. But their name is Tuvala Tims because I think that their average gear score is actually only 735. Uh, and I say that because that's like one of the lower averages, uh, <laughs> in this tournament here. It does look like, uh, we are ready to go. So let's head over to the versus screen. 
it looks like the audience thinks that 64% of people think that Tuvala Tims uh, is going to take this uh, on this and don't want to vote for Dale McMuffin, which is Florang's team over here. A lot of people having faith in CTG's first tournament appearance here. Johnny, who do you think takes this round? I, I want to give it to Tuvala Tims, especially with... So you mentioned um, that style or not... Um... Wait, Style is listed as Awakening Drac on this one and Succession Zerker. Which did, was there a switch up on this one? Um, no, no, it's it's correct. We have CTG versus wait, oh, McRubbery. Who's Mc? Oh, okay, well, no, we're Sty Style was supposed to. Uh, Style was listed as Succession Zerker on the other one, if I read correctly. Oh, he did change it. Um, okay. he did change it. He's an Awakening Draconia now. Oh, okay. So that that changes a little bit. So I I think this team uh, composition is the best composition you can have without a shy. The wake track, wake Valkyrie, and succession Wusa. Just yeah, I, think I so would as say well. that is the best. Um, that's going to be a lot more damage, like you talked about, to kill Florang. The other thing with it is that Ham has a lot of accuracy. He has a Turo, he has a Lunar, and two Ominouses, and double Pendiso, if I remember correctly. That's going to be well well above one thousand accuracy. Um, with the succession, Wuska is going to be an absolute ton of damage that he can just dish out. Um, it might be a little bit painful without the uh, the full buffs that you can normally have in open world or in uh, large scale, but I still think he's going to be very, very devastating for flooring, and he's going to have to be careful. Yeah, no, I'm... Dude, I think that the suck Wusa actually might just pop off uh, in this one. I mean, Awakening Draconia, Succession Wusa, and an Awakening Valkyrie, that's the best composition in the tournament. Um, like you said, that is absolutely crazy. But again, you look over on the other side, and I like to say that, you know, you got to take the nameplates away, you know, and play the class. But like, and you got Florang on the suck Kuno. He's like rank one AOS on Kuno. Uh, Bath Soap, I think that the Succession Draconia, it's a sweep the leg situation. Bath Soap is arguably probably the best Succession Draconia in large scale PvP uh, on our server. Uh, Bits can sit down. But like, I think that in a 3v3 <laughs> uncapped situation, ooh, man, I think that Suck Drac might just be the, uh, the grab here. Might just be the go-to. The class is just really, really slow. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think even if it tries to do its shift Q heal where it stabs the ground and has the bubble, if you can get the, the CC on that and you just dump damage, even if you don't necessarily kill the target, getting that damage off is still a win. Um, keeping them uh, out of uh, ions is going to be very important too. I think as the longer this match goes on, when they're not able to generate those ions passively, they're going to have a, they're going to really struggle into the, the late matches on this one. Yeah, I think so as well. Um as we are yeah resetting bsr here at the start of this one but man johnny every single match is an absolute banger in this tournament i mean like it's basically nail biting these teams are absolutely stacked man this is so crazy uh, as we get into this one we we are spectating the open world terrorist legend himself what an absolute unit Florang on the succession Kuno. Bath Soap, honestly, going to have his work cut out for him uh, on this one. As the gate goes up, uh, all of the buffs kind of come out. You see everybody pre-buffing here. Florang moving across the arena with Tendon Cutter right there. Then just Flash Slash moves in. Oh, my goodness. Block jump in as well. Tries to move through. Not going to find a grab. Going to go ahead and disengage it. Oh, my goodness. He just plays so, so quickly. Look how good. Style takes Ooh. so much damage on the Awakening. Draconia has to V immediately. And now you see Florang uh, in stealth right there looking for a sniff on that V. There's the Tendon Cutter throwing down a lot of damage. Block jump to avoid uh, the back put. Uh, DPS on that one as well. Uh, Florang sees his target on the other side right there as CTG kiting through the middle. Bass up, or style rather, re down at 30% HP, trying to get away. Fortunately, again, Awakening Draconi has absolutely no weaknesses as a class, um, and he's getting all of his health back uh, basically the entire time. Every time he, he uses a skill, his health basically goes back to full health. Um, Bath Soap, a lot of regeneration on Succession Draconi. of Florang gets caught right there, but Innovation we trust. Look at the world just bearing down on the insecure amount of evasion that this guy actually has on unbelievable uh, amount of gear right there down at 50% but didn't even have to use the V and then does trade back is going to pick off 
um it looks like ctg went down on the succession wusa right there uh basically from standing flow rain gets a grab right there dragon drop on the ground very very clean uh job right there style the last one left alive and it looks like they are gonna clean it up one two three johnny a lot of initial cc's coming out especially on style i was not quite expecting it to go in the way that it did for mcrubbery um here just taking the bag for the first round um i i almost want to say that um styles being on the awakening Dracani and so the succession zerker might be a little bit of a hindrance here it is very strong in a lot of the ways but i think with the class composition of ctg being on the wusa the suck zerker might be more beneficial it may have been honestly you see illiterate here on this awakening valkyrie oh my goodness it buffs himself right up um not gonna find anything throws out a celestial spear hostiludium all the way across uh the arena they're gonna go ahead and top himself off on hell style is caught is forced to be right there uh and it looks like illiterate's gonna go ahead and back up and again he's looking for any uh sort of support capability that he has to put in while flow rang basically keeps his foot on the gas pedal on that succession kuno style on the ground again no v this time down he's gonna go terra sancta burying his chance of living right there and looks like dragon drop down at 50 percent as well as illiterate just cannot be stopped uh, on the valkyrie look, moving with the hostiludium through the middle of the arena right there gonna go ahead and throw out the heel again that's three full seconds of super armor dragon drop on the ground as well and it looks like they are gonna get Yet another kill, and it's just CTG left alive on this Wusa. But if anyone was going to 1v3, he said it's just like large scale. I've got this. If anyone was going to 1v3, it would be him. Flowering on the ground. Segunja Plum almost killed him. Flowering down at 50% right there. CTG moving around and illiterate trying to keep him alive. CTG moves back. Going to go ahead and butterfly step in the middle of the arena against his bat soap too. Look at the damage going down right there. Flowering chooses to re-engage. He's down at 20 or 30% health right there um, as they keep trying to trade damage, but you just can't catch that Wusa. They finally do track him down. And it is going to be a 2-0 victory for them here, but an absolutely great performance out of CTG there. I, I, I mean, that was a lot of damage that we got to see out of CTG at the very end, getting the catch on Florang. I'm, I'm a bit surprised on the results of the match, um, but we will be able to see uh, Team Tuvala Timmies again. Um, and Day Old McMuffin maybe doing a little bit of an upset. I'm not quite sure what the uh, bets were, um, but I... I mean, you know, that's one of the things that make the tournaments fun is when things don't go as planned or as expected and you have teams show up and you have teams ball out, they they prove that even if you have something a little bit different, or a little bit off meta, that you can still overcome with skill. We saw that earlier with the Miscreants team showing very, very well, uh, very, very good performance, even with a very off meta team. This team coming in, going against what I would argue is the best composition and still winning 2-0. Um, so I, I'm excited to see as they continue through the tournament, as they continue, if they succeed or um, fall short. And I'm also excited to see if Tavala Timmies can warm up. Maybe that's what they're just needing in the loser's bracket and uh, maybe fight McBrubbery again later. Yeah, absolutely here. Uh, as we look ahead to our next match, it is going to be Stin's Steakhouse versus Sniffa here. Um, an interesting matchup to be sure. Uh, but good fights to both of those teams. That was a very, very close match. I agree as well. There we go. I... Oh, Stin Steakhouse here. Pastor Pete, Details, and Dabin. Um, mm -hmm. This is... Uh, okay, I'm going to let you introduce this team. You know these guys. Yep. So, uh, Stin Steakhouse, um, they're all corrupt and enemy guys. Uh, Pastor Pete playing on the Awakening Valkyrie. Um, again, it's just that it's that class. You must have it. You need it. Uh, we have details in the succession wizard, arguably, um, if not just for sure, in most people's minds, the number one wizard in North America. Um, he was, I believe, second place or third place in his team for the uh, best in guild tournament. Um, and they didn't have a shy. Um, yeah, and absolutely have crazy. Absolutely Dabbing crazy. on the succession, Wusa, all three of these players are very good players. They're all playing very good compositions. You have both the Awakening Valkyrie and the Succession Wizard um, utility. Um, you have double PA. You have so many heals. Uh, you have a lot of range damage from details. He can kite himself. Um, he can provide 
uh, speed spell, which is going to be a big advantage against a lot of teams because they don't have the shy. So it's going to make the, the team play different than you might see Awakening Valkyries or Succession Wooses um, on other ones. But I think with this team, it, it this is a gross one. Uh, I'm ready for Sniffa next, too. Yeah, it's absolutely... Uh, to see what, what, yeah. what they got to go against. Yeah, let's take a look over at Sniffa here. All so as right. we're jumping into it, we have Akari Seo on Succession Maywa. We've seen him in quite a bit of tournaments. Succession Maywa being a little bit lacking of a class currently with some of the recent nerfs. That, I say recent, but I guess a few months ago, nerfs that happened to it. Um, but he's still a capable player. He's played the class for a long time. He should be able to show what it is capable of. He's with Arian, who is a very, very good suck ninja. Again, one of those classes that you want. It has a lot of bleeds. It has a lot of damage. It's going to be able to chip people down. It's going to be able to fish for CCs. And finally, um, we have uh, Rose City, or maybe Rocket City is supposed to be what yeah. it is. Yeah, Rose City uh, Man. Rose City yeah, Man. That's, yeah. On the Succession Wusa, we saw them in the Scholar Tournament, if I remember. Maybe it was the Best of Guild Tournament, um, playing the Suck Wusa. I think this is a decent team. Uh, it's very, very similar to what we've seen in the past, with the Succession Maywa being kind of the oddball in the situation. I, I'm i trying to think on how this team is going to go. The, let's just say the Suck Wusas cancel each other out. We have a Succession Wizard, an Awakened Valkyrie versus a Suck Ninja, and the Suck Maywa. I think the Ninja and the Maywa are going to have a very good time trying to run down the wizard um and that's probably what i'd assume their goal would be is just to run down details um you're gonna have a hard time catching the wusa p i assume is gonna be very tanky um the ninja does have a grab for the valkyrie which might we might end up seeing as well um but if you let details just range full for free it, it's gonna be bad for you um a, a succession I... wizard being one of those classes that is great and uncapped yeah i mean this is gonna be a little crazy as we move over to the versus screen here. There we go. Um, we have Stin Steakhouse House versus Sniffa. I'll be honest with you, I don't think there is a way to run down details. I think he's just that good at Suck Wizard. I think you have to just try to ignore him and try to kill the other people as quickly as you can. Like you, you put a little bit of pressure on him, but he's kind of like flannels. I, I think that like try if you've ever tried to run this guy down in AOS, it's basically mm -hmm. impossible. Um, so you have Pastor Pete on the Awakening Valkyrie, and I think that he's the focus because not only is he the worst player on his team, uh, but he's also on the Awakening Valkyrie. Um, as he, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty slow class. I mean, the guy couldn't even get into Cho. I mean, give me a break, bro. Um, so like I think that, I dab it on the Suck Wusa. He doesn't have too much experience on Suck Wusa, but Davin's kind of a super gamer. Uh, on the back side of this. Um, and then Sniffa, I think that Sniffa's win condition here is Akari um, and Arian basically just one-shotting somebody. Uh, now, I talked to Akari before the match, uh, and I think that he he's pretty confident uh, that they can get through this round here. So they're 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 very confident uh, uh, on the back side of this one, but I think that the audience thinks otherwise, as 71% of people think that Stin Seikaus is going to take this. Johnny, who would you give it to? I... I'd give it to Stins. I, I don't think it's for free. I think they're going to have to work for it, but I definitely put my money on Stins for this one. Yeah, um, yeah, I think Stins Steakhouse probably uh, probably takes it as well. The gates are down, so we're going to go to the live scene here. All right, and it's all eyes. I can't see details. It's like taunting people. Look at this guy. He has the most ridiculous outfit on, and it's in bright <laughs> yellow. Um, there's the magical shield coming down there. Uh, he knows this is the absolute Giga Chad of Giga Chads for Succession uh, Wizard. This is the best Succession Wizard, probably, uh, at least in North America here. Arian taking a good amount of damage. Uh, has to back out on that Suck Ninja uh, as Details kites away. Takes a bad trade, and it looks like he is uh, under a fair amount of pressure. Puts his back to the wall, throws out magical shield right there, uh, and constantly just rotating uh, those super armors. Uh, Pastor Pete trying to get on top of him, but you're not never gonna get there um trying to you see it was just kind of ignoring details now on the max oh my goodness gets grabbed by arian details on the ground oh my god it has to be to get out of it the valkyrie not able to get him out of it um it comes out of v right next to faster pete use your buttons pete oh my gosh asking for a heal begging for a heal and pete was sadly had his monitor off uh and wasn't able to recover the situation right there Poor details came out of V right next to him asking for a heal and just didn't get it. And Pete went down as oh no, Pete is still technically alive. Rossity man looking for the damage. Down on to Davin on that suck Wusa. And he is down at 
Uh, we do have two Vs coming down now. Akari waiting in the middle of the arena, going after... Look, it looks over at Rossity, man. Trying to keep him protected. Faster Pete, running through the middle here. Rossity, man, buying his time. Looks like the team's playing this very slow. Oh my goodness, Akari just goes in and throws down the gauntlet and gets the two kills. That is how much damage Succession Mewa actually gets down. And he's the best Succession Mewa, Johnny. So I think, uh, yeah, I think in, uh, Stins actually has their work cut out for him. I, I mean, again, they're not going to be able to get this for free, and they made that huge mistake by letting Arian just get the free grab on details. Pete unable to keep him alive outside of the V. There was a good sniff on the other team, but Pete's got to be able to use those heals and PAs and keep him alive. I believe he used the uh, forward guard heal you talked about earlier, but that was not enough. Yeah, it's just not quite enough. Akari on the outside of the fight here, looking with those stub arrows, throwing a little bit of damage forward. Uh, not able to find anybody quite yet. Again, he's been the rank one Mewa in AOS for all three seasons of AOS. Oh my goodness. Big damage going down onto Arian right there. Pastor Pete taking a lot of damage as well, but that's okay. He's the Valkyrie. Throws out all the heals and he is just fine. Details doing a great job of kiting the outside of the fact uh, or outside of the fight, rather, as Akari tries to go in and keeps taking bad trade after bad trade. He really doesn't have to. Oh my goodness, finds Davin. Davin's not paying attention. Has to be. Good catch by Akari. Look how slow and patient he's playing on this. A bloodhound is Akari. Finds the dab. Sniffs the, the Davin V out right there uh, and finds the damage. Uh, it does look like Davin is going to go down and now it's just Details who gets sniffed out as well. An absolute bloodhound. Sniffed Niffa indeed found both V's. Clean up the fight so fast, Johnny. And that's how it happened. 2 0. That's the, 2 -0. the first round being a bit more of what I predicted of them going after details, getting the CCs, taking that top player out of the match. And then the second one, doing more of what you suggested of going after uh, Pete and putting the pressure on him instead. I don't think that was what a lot of people were expecting, but again, this is where <laughs> composition is in everything. Yeah. As long as you have a semi-decent comp, you have enough gear, you can you can outskill people day in and day out. I think those rats are going to be something that the other team's going to really, really struggle against. Um, or that the other team really, really struggled against, rather. Um, and so maybe it's a, maybe it was a little bit of a need of a warm-up from the Steakhouse crew. Um, maybe it's... Um, you know, Akari and them just came out hot and ready, ready, to, um, just ready to go. Not sure exactly what I, happened there, but not quite I, the uh, the play we expected from the Steakhouse team. I don't think they were prepared for the Mewa damage. Let's take a look at the instant replay here. I do want to show that. All right, you see, uh, details actually gets grabbed by Arian right here, uh, and it goes into V. Moves over to the other side. He's sitting right next to Pastor Pete. Please heal me! Why? Like, oh my goodness! Oh my god! Like you just you hate to see that. Um, and that's that's why you have the Valkyrie on the team, right? Like, like I'm mm -hmm. sure he had to have been talking about him. Um, and I see the family chats going on in chat right there. As family is looking really, really good so far uh, in this tournament. Uh, I will say that until. <laughs> Akari's been in family for about four hours, and look how much better he is as a player. I mean, just <laughs> won his round by default just for being in family. Uh, this absolutely, is yeah, absolutely insane. Uh, so next up, it looks like we're gonna have uh, Kajino's baked beans, uh, which mm -hmm. I don't, I don't make the team names, guys. It's it's not my fault. <laughs> Versus Ventus is trash. No surprise. Let's take a look at these. All right, so on Kanijo's Baked Beans, it is Death Grip, Ice, and Choice. A lot of people probably remember Ice and Choice have played together before in the Best in Guild Tournament for 2023. They had Romania on their team, though, but since Shies are banned, uh, they went with Death Grip this time. Death Grip, the self-proclaimed best Dark Knight uh, in North America. Uh, three accounts on DK in the top 12 of AOS. But again, you know, when Multi's in the tournament, it's tough to it's tough to say you're the best, right? But at least Multi's on the Draconia, so he's good in this case. Uh, you have Ice on the Awakening Valkyrie, an absolute menace, but he doesn't have Raminia backing him up this time. 
um, to make him basically put his foot on the gas pedal here. So we'll see if his aggressive play style really pays off here. And then you have Choice uh, on the Succession Zerker, everyone's favorite streamer uh, to love. Uh, has played the game for seven or eight years, basically, and has gotten second in just about every major tournament he's been in, with the exception of the best in Guild Tournament, where he got third. Just always coming up short on it, but th today is the day. I fully believe this is it, Johnny. How do you feel about this composition here? I think this is a decent composition. I'm not sure if Death Grips is actually going to be on the Awakening. I think he's on Suck DK. Yeah, it's a, okay. it's a typo. Uh, Death Grips is on Succession DK. Okay. Um, Death Grips, uh, he's on my flex team. He's a very capable DK. He knows what he's doing on the class. The self-proclaimed number one, so he's probably at least, I would hope, number f top five. Um, he's... <laughs> He's he's very oh geared. That class in small scale is going to be able to dump an absolute ton of damage on its opponents. It's not going to struggle that much against evasion players, especially when it's coupled with an awakening Valkyrie. Um, which, have, again, I see being one of the top Valkyries in the game. Very, very good player. Very, very good um, a, a tournament player as well in the class. And then finally, him and Choice have been on teams quite a bit off. Um, I think the last four tournaments that i've seen them in they've been together in um but choice hard capped i mean hard capped outside of um pen fallen god on succerker uh is just going to be able to, to come into this and he can be an absolute menace i don't know if he's going to go for like a high ap or if he's going to go for more of a tanky play style i would honestly think a double cadre build would be best here um he just goes in and grips people picks them up in the air and then tells his teammates to just rain hellfire upon them um but we'll we'll definitely see um if he goes for that full ap build he might he might come out here just trying to dump as much damage as he can as well yeah and now we have ventus's trash no surprise i <laughs> Again, I don't make the team names, guys. Um, Greed's image and Emma Watson. Greed's on the Awakening Megu. Now, keep in mind, he did get second uh, at the Skylar Open. Got to buy around to the finals. Um, and then he got... <laughs> And then he was first in the Ventus versus Muted tournament. But honestly, this is, again, Ventus is trash. No surprise. There's not a single good player there. Got him, boys. Uh, and then there's a fifth. And then he got fifth in the best in Guild tournament in 2023. But I mean, but Greed's is absolutely an amazing player. Uh, and he's coming in on the Awakening Megu. Uh, and Awakening Megu, I think people sleep on this class. If pros, uh, no one has any idea how your class works. Uh, cons, yep. you also have no idea how your class works. So, like, you know, it's a give and take. It's kind of like a Felios in League of Legends. Uh, image uh, from Ventus on the Awakening Valkyrie. Um, and honestly, he's been on the class for about two years. Uh, and everybody talks about Alusha, but Image is also a very good Valkyrie as well. And then Emma Watson is coming in on the Succession Tamer, one of the only Tamers in both tournaments here. Um, and the fir my first interaction with Emma Watson was watching, uh, they were playing Succession Staff many years ago. I, I reviewed a T1 VOD, and they were just standing on a rooftop, so I had to give uh, them crap about it, but they are an incredible player here, Johnny. What do you think about this composition of Suck Tamer, Awakening Valk, Awakening Megu? So this is a little bit different of a composition, um, but I don't think it's actually a bad one. So you have the Awakening Draconia, which we've talked about a thousand times with Image on it. The main two I want to look at here is Greeds and Emma Watson. So Emma Watson playing the Tamer. Tamer being arguably, I would say, the number one 1v1 class in the game. Uh, or maybe you're thinking about something like uh, Awakening Ranger instead, which is something Greed's normally plays. Um, but Awakening Tamer is a class that can dump a lot of damage. It has a ton of iframes. It has good well, movement. It has a quick grab. It's yeah, Suck Tamer? Yeah, oh. it's a, yeah she changed, she, they, they did change it uh, last night. They made sure that I had it right. They're like, hey, I'm a, just so you know, I'm a Suck Tamer. I was like, okay. So it is a Succession Tamer uh, and an Awakening Megu. Um, I'm curious your thoughts on the Awakening Megu, to be honest. I think that people have very strong feelings about this class. Personally, I think that it's very slept on. I think that if you mm -hmm. understand how the pass it, you really... There's no class indicator uh, for whether or not you're in your your um, Spirit Forge passive or not because the developers uh, need to be fired. Um, but like... Like if you if you understand when you're in your Spirit Forge passive and you're hitting the air attack damage, I'm not joking. The class actually has probably some of the highest burst damage in the entire game. It's crazy. How do you feel about this class in the 3v3 uncapped format? Well, Greed's is going to be able to show the class as probably the first ever player on it, but outside of clips from like EU and other regions and whatnot, I I honestly don't know too much about the class. I've been ta uh, I've talked to Greed's a bit on it because he's been trying to sell me the propaganda. 
it doesn't seem that bad for small scale. He sent me some clips of AOS. I've seen some a uh, couple of VODs that I've looked at after it. The dogs are going absolute haywire over Awakening Megu, apparently. Um, I don't think it's gonna be that bad. I think it has the advantage of nobody knows what the heck your class does. Um, so I think he's got a little bit of a surprise. I'm gonna leave it at that too, but I'll, I'm gonna see if he does the little cheese that you can do in that class. Yeah, um, honestly, again, the, the big problem with that class and the reason no one understands how it works is there's no indicator for whether or not you're in Spirit Forge uh, or not. And then like it has like two or three passives and they're very difficult to manage. So we'll see if he can actually do it. The movement on the class can get kind of crazy, but I think that Death Grip on the Succession Dark Knight, we haven't talked about this very much, uh, but Death Grip on the Succession DK might just come out and just out dps everyone because you got choice grabbing people right uh we're gonna head over to the versus screen uh here for this one as it looks like 76 percent of people are on team choice here uh as kajito's baked beans uh is favored to win over ventus johnny quickly who do you feel like um is favored to win this one I want, I want to give it to the bean that the dog named beans in my household barking agrees with me he's giving it to team beans um it, uh, the Awakening Valkyrie Suck Zerker and the Suck DK composition is absolutely disgusting by all three players who are very competent, very good, and very geared. Um, even with the Ventus team having a little bit of an off uh, choice with some decent players, I don't think they're going to be able to match up here. I, I, I think it's going to be... I would give it 80-20 for Beans. Yeah, I, I, I really... I think they're going to 2-0 it. I, I think that Beans probably two owes two this. As well. Yeah, I think that I think Beans probably two owes this mainly, and I think that because, gosh, Awakening Megu is so hard to make work. I mean, when you make it work, it looks really good, but like, man, the class just has so many issues. Um, there they go, diving in right there. Death Grip just not gonna get caught on that DK. Uh, gonna use Nocturne to get out of that. Wheel of Fortune comes down, not gonna find the damage. Emma trading a good amount of damage back onto him. Oh my goodness, down at 50% already. That's the problem with Suck DKs, you have to actually get close. Uh, Choice also down at 40%, taking a lot of damage. Oh, good, but that's okay. Suck Zerker can get all of his health back by pressing two buttons, and he does. There's the grab going down. Death Grip throwing big damage down right there with the Spirit Legacy. Wheel of Fortune not gonna find anything ice keeping everybody tapped off right there as emma watson's kind of on the hunt on that suck tamer wheel of fortune going down right there just not gonna find it oh my goodness and greeds took a lot of damage but it was the valkyrie that ended up going down on the back foot of that and good death grip sniffs the awakening megu that's greeds going down right out of e right there and down goes ventus is trash no surprise 1-0 over to the baked beans but honestly they were trading pretty well johnny at first, coming out of the gate, uh, Death Grips ended up taking a ton of damage, getting down to about 55, 60% health. And like you said, that's the issue with Suck DK, is it has to get close. It's a melee class, but that thing is made of paper, made of glass. It explodes at any touch. But the good thing for the class is it's very, very mobile. It's got good iframes, and it's got a ton of damage. So if you can play the class well enough, you will did survive. Just, did he just V? Oh my god. Oh my god, Ice just blew V right at the start. Nobody saw it. It's fine. Don't worry, Ice. Only it's a handicap. Yeah, only two thousand five hundred people saw it. It's fine. Um, that's all right. They needed the handicap anyway. So oh, Ice choice has a grab and V. Uh, yeah, Choice has somebody grabbed and they are in V right now. They come out of V in the grab. It's Image. He is dead. That's all right, Ice. He didn't need the V anyway. No big deal. Ice is being juggled, but there's just not enough damage there as Image went down too fast. Ice Hostiludiums to safety right here, and you can see Greed's trying to get on top of Ice here because he. Uh, Awakening Megu does have a passive that runs down forward guard. Basically, you can't get your forward guard back with that twirling Rhapsody. Uh, but, like, he just can't get on top of him. And he's the only one left alive now as they are just running this team down on this one. And it does look like it is going to be Baked Beans. Uh, moving on to the second round uh, of this tournament here. Very, very convincingly. Uh, Greed's making a good showing of the Awakening Megu movement here, though. Uh, doing an excellent job of showing everyone how difficult it is to kill that class there they are gonna clean it up johnny and that's what we were kind of predicting to see the 2-0 from baked beans there <sighs> yeah yeah i don't know see it. I, yeah, like I, I wasn't able to actually see anything on the awakening megu besides the movement for it as grades was running there at the, the end 
Um, he, yeah, so he's he what he tried to do, and I saw mm -hmm. the strategy. They're trying to basically work the Valkyrie's kind of a sitting duck, and so he was trying to use twirling rhapsody on the Valkyrie, just like in that clip from Fistanity, like a couple months ago, mm -hmm. um, where like you just twirling rhapsody around them in a circle, like over and over again without them being able to grab you, <laughs> and then like their guard just goes to zero, uh, and then you just kill the Valkyrie. I think that's what their strategy was, but like Ice just kept disengaging with Hostiludium, and it just didn't work uh sadly so like yeah i mean awakening megu does look really good when you play it super well but like sadly they weren't able to kind of get on top of it there and it is going to be a 2-0 uh as we look ahead to our next match here uh what is this round eight now so yep, we, have, we have console boys oh console boys this console boys versus lazy noodles guys these here's the dark horses right here Are you talking about console right. boys or yeah, both of them? No, I think the console boys is the dark horse here. Uh, dark horse here. The all three of these players came from console. Some of them are still using controllers to play with. Pinks is a was the best Maywa on console playing with a controller um, and still plays with a controller to this day. Combat playing on Awakening Wizard, top 100 AOS and the top Awakening Wizard of season three in AOS. And Mahiru also coming over from console on the Succession Kuno was the self-proclaimed best suck Kuno on console, um, but he does hate himself as most Kunoichis do. Uh, it's part of basically playing the class, but like these guys have been playing for a very, very long time. And these guys have also gotten into, I think combat was in Cho for a while. Um, I could be wrong about that, but like these guys are actually super good. How do you think about this compositionally? Suck Mewa looked so good previously johnny how do you feel about a suck maybe with a controller here uh i i don't know i mean suck maybe has a ton of damage it has a ton of mobility i don't know how it's going to play on controller um it, it seems a little bit clunky of a class to play on controller um I'm, i might be you know completely proven wrong here pinks has been playing it for a while um they're used to controllers so it might not even feel any different than a, uh, a keyboard and mouse player um I'm just looking at this composition, though. The Suck Mewa, Suck Kuno, and Awaking Wizard just, it's, to me, doesn't make sense. That's rough, man. Like, the composition is really rough, but they do represent kind of the console community uh, in this tournament. I thought it was really cool they came out. They are up against Lazy Noodles. Let's take a look at this. This is Larry Fish, Kuma Queen, and Nudes. These names probably sound familiar because they're in basically every tournament that you can find. These guys got second at the best in Guild Tournament in 2022, only lost to Cho. They're absolutely goaded. They have synergy with each other. But one important thing to note is that Nudes has never used a microphone. He only communicates with pinks. And they I again, mean... they got second in best in Guild. I mean, like, you think that that would be a disadvantage, but, like, it, it's absolutely crazy. On an Awakening Kuno, no less. And then you have a Jazzy on a Suck Mystic um, and Larry Fish on a Succession Valkyrie. Most people are playing Awakening Valkyrie. This is the only Succession Valkyrie that we see in the tournament. And Suck Valk is no slouch in a 3v3 format like this. It has a lot of burst damage. I, I still think that Awakening probably edges it out here because of the vacuum and things like that. But how do you feel about this composition here? I think the Succession Valkyrie is still good. I don't think it's quite as good as Awakening, but I still think it plays a very similar role. Um, but it is paired with the Succession Mystic, which is Kuma Queen, a class that's going to be able to stay evasive. It has high. It's very tanky with it with being evasive and a gauntlet. Um, it still has good damage, in my opinion, as well. And then finally, Nudes, I would argue, is the number one Awakening Kuno in NA. Um, a very, very skilled player. Doesn't need a microphone if they just kill everyone else on the screen um who needs to calm things when you just do it all yourself yeah so we'll, we'll see with this one i think this is definitely my favorite team uh in this matchup here i think they're probably going to be i think this is a i think they're heavily favored yeah, i think, I they're, think they're, heavily they're heavily favored, favored in this in this matchup they have a proven tournament history they've worked together before their composition mm -hmm. simply looks better um i will say that kuma queen is jazzy sensei she streams uh and she is a she uh, probably the best gamer um, girl that we have in Black Desert. Rank one on the Succession Mystic uh, in Season 1. Got second to the best in Guild Tournament on the class as well. Absolutely dumpsters people left, right, 
and center. I know Jazzy personally, I've met her at the Oasis events and things like that. She is an absolute super gamer and she understands how to play Suck Mystic in a small in a like small matchup like this. I feel that Suck Mystic is actually probably an undervalued ma um, class in a 3v3 matchup. I think it does very, very well. I think that if you add many more people to it, uh, it definitely takes a little bit too much damage. But in 3v3, uh, with the amount of gear that Jazzy has, I really do think that um, she can come out and be very impactful uh, in this match here, with uh, especially with Larry supporting her on the Suck Valkyrie there. I agree 100%. I think this is a pretty good team. This is a decent composition. A lot of the support from Larry that you might need in a team while also getting the absolute high amount of damage and pressure from uh kuma and fine or not damage sorry the tankiness and cc's from kuma and then finally the follow-up damage from uh nudes right yeah no and we're just about to get into this one so make sure you get your predictions in everyone throwing it on to lazy noodles 94 percent of people think that lazy noodles has this in the bag but i'm telling you the console boys Combat's a great player. Like, these, these are really, really good players. So I would love to see them come out and just take this match, but we will see. I'm kind of personal to Jazzy myself uh, and Larry Fish. I love them to death. Um, who do you... Okay, I think you basically already said it, but who do you think wins this? I, I would hands down the last time I saw Combat, they were a Awakening uh, DR player, which is um, a little rough on the, the mage right now. Oh my goodness, they're just running it down. There's Mahiro going in from the side here, trying to catch them unawares. But honestly, Kuba Queen standing in full protection as Suck Mystic loves to do. Oh my goodness, dude's taking so much damage in the middle of the arena. Oh, has to. I think he had to. He had to V, I think. Um, Larry Fish on the ground as well, taking a lot of damage. The console boys running down nudes. Down goes nudes. He is dead. Larry's down at 50%. The console boys just absolutely running them down. Oh my goodness. The tendon cover coming down from a hero right there. And they just collapsed in and they knew their win condition and they found it. Nudes was not prepared uh, for the succession Kuno right there. Uh, as the console boys are playing a little bit more reserved down, they know it's a two v3 they can kind of just wait this one out uh right here and all of the controller doubters there's the grab on the larry fish that collapsed down big damage from that suck mewa larry down at 50 percent stands right back up does get the stiffen on the mihiro but not able to find the follow-up cc looks like he resisted it uh jazzy doing her best on that suck mystic right there um to stay protected as they're in a 2v3 but they have a massive amount of gear health is ticked down to 80 percent. that's why everyone's at least down to 80 percent combat slow charging the meteor on that awakening uh wizard because he knows he's super safe there's hellfire coming down right there oh gets grabbed on the ground right now but no my hero's right there to peel for him Lair puts larry back on the ground and combat stands up safely playing a, uh playing around that awakening wizard so so well uh right there is he you see that lava uh that lava field down in the middle right there that's a d uh man Magic DP debuff right there. His combat just says, come and get it. All right, there on that Awakening Wizard. Larry just not taking any damage. They just can't kill. Um, Jesse and Larry here. They have CC'd them any number of times. My hero's actually getting kind of low. He needs to back up. He needs to get out of there. Uh, Larry in hot pursuit. Jazzy's trying to get on top of him too. And they're down at 57 seconds. Health bars are capped at 50%. Now they can probably move in and try to kill uh, Jazzy and Larry here. Uh, but like, man, it just shows that their gear is just not quite high enough to try to kill the remaining two people. Larry's on the ground again. Do they have the burst damage to kill him from 50%? Not quite right there combat magical shielding looking back at kuma queen in the middle of the arena they know they've got this 30 seconds on the clock uh larry fish did end up going down and it's just jazzy left alive as is tradition here uh does get the cc on the combat right there and is comboing him pretty well but does get cc'd when she goes for the combo as suck missing is not always protected when she has to output damage like that oh my goodness we might see this upset right here johnny I don't think anyone was expecting the uh, immediate death of nudes having to be right away <laughs> fairly out of the gate um getting a little bit of word that nudes is bugged not quite sure if that resulted in his death um or the cc's there or with or if we just need to restart the arena um 
But I think that was what a ninety three percent vote for uh, yeah Lazy Noodle. Yeah. So people might be getting a little bit of a payout here as we go into round two. This this might go crazy on points right now. Pink's coming out on the side here. These Succession Maywas are showing how good this class is uh, in three v three. This is almost unethical. Um, how much damage you can actually put down? Combat just playing safe on the Awakening Wizard. Uh, constantly all these slows um, running around as well. Um, and no one taking very much damage quite yet. Again, his combat's got his back to a wall, and he's making sure he's playing really safe. I'm surprised they're not just going on combat here, as Jazzy looks like she approached him, but not able to find uh, the damage right there. As, oh, maybe the, the arena. I paused it. Oh, the match was paused. Okay, yep. so it looks like, yeah, the match has been stopped. It looks like Nudes was complaining that his gear may not have been working correctly, so we're going to allow him to rejoin the arena. Not quite sure. I saw Nudes say what? Question yeah. mark in we're, the chat. We're gonna, so. we're gonna, uh, Nudes was complaining that maybe his crystals might not have been functioning uh, as as intended. So um, they, uh, the tournament organizer went ahead and stopped the match. Uh, and they're going to let Nudes rejoin here. Uh, but it's still 1-0 for the console boys here uh, as Nudes is going to leave and rejoin. Um, but honestly, I don't think anybody thought uh, that they were going to come out and even take a round uh, off of Lazy Noodles. Uh, from... For, yeah, so it sounds like uh, before, um, oh, before the mat, the the second match even started, everything was saying. So they yeah. were complaining about that before the match. Yeah. They wanted it paused. So, it was just a delay. Yeah, no, it was yeah, it was paused, guys. I apologize. It was not actually like the gates went up because they paused the match, and we thought that the match started. So did the players. In fairness, they were trying to fight each other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, we're just. Nudes had complained that there was a bug for crystals. So like between rounds, we allow players um, to try to fix those bugs. If there is a bug, um, we will try to allow them to fix it. So they'll come back. Console Boys is still up 1-0 uh, in this matchup. Um, he's saying, Nudes is saying things uh, are good to go this time. So it looks like uh, the match is ready to go. I'll throw it over to the versus screen uh, to let our tournament director know that she is ready to go. Uh, but yeah, console boys coming out with a 1-0 on that one. We'll see if they can find nudes again. And I'll be honest with you, crystals or not, the reason that nudes died there, let's not be on some copium, is because he got CC'd twice. Right? Getting, yeah, getting like, cc twice is just going to be the death of your crystals or not. And maybe he's arguing for that the crystals, um, would have given him the tankiness of the damage to not, uh, get CC'd or whatever it may be. But either way, you just can't get CC'd. Yeah, you, you can't afford to do that, especially on Awakening Kuno, which is actually a super protected class. Um, like, it's it's very protected, um, basically, overall here. It looks like, yeah, we are going back into it. Again, the console boys are up. The console boys are up 1-0 as we get back into this one here. Lazy Noodles on the back foot of this one, and everyone sweating in the audience right now because people are nervous. They are going to lose their points um, as... 87% of people thought that Lazzy Noodles was just going to take this. Uh, Console Boys is going to buff themselves up uh, right at the start of the match here. Nude's going to engage. There's Mahiro uh, going in on the backside of it as well. He gets put on, on the, the ground. ground. Now it's him on the ground. It's the man. Nude's the on the ground again. Nude's on the ground once again. Pinks has to back out of the center of everything. You can't be in the middle of everything as a succession Mewa. Oh my goodness. Goes after Nude's. Look how low Nude's is on health. Buddy, I don't think that's your crystals. Um, oh. He is, Pinks is on the hunt right here. And the console blood boys are sharks in the water and they smell blood. As Nudes barely gets himself back healthy again. Uh, gets next to Larry Fish, catches a heal from the Valkyrie and is going to stabilize here. But uh, noticing that he's just super low on health. There's a good grab right there out of Mahiro onto Kuma Queen. But they, she just has too much gear and she stands back up. They basically have to focus down Nudes uh, on this one uh, until the one minute mark. Then they can try to focus down anyone because HP will be capped. There's the 80% HP cap uh, and people will be a little bit easier to kill. You see Pinks has the right idea here trying to get on top of Nudes. But Nudes, I think, starts to understand stand now he's just playing very very safe in that flash flash right there to keep himself protected jazzy's playing safe as well oh she gets cc she is on the ground taking a good amount of damage down at 30 percent but innovation we trust on that succession mystic as she dashes dashes right back forward again combat on the awakening wizard says come and get it there's enough for everyone throwing down cataclysm and just trading like a boss on the awakening wizard there 
pinks backing up allowing combat to take most of the damage aqua jail comes down that's gonna slow everybody that it caught uh in there nudes get stiffened there's the follow-up nudes, nudes has the no v. he's on the ground can they kill him no they don't quite get him hp bars are about to tick down now though uh to 50 percent at the one minute mark uh as nudes does manage to safely get out of there uh and get his health back as larry gets him back to his feet again that valkyrie is so so good oh my goodness my hero is super low the console boys they lost lost two they lost pinks too they just all died when the hp bars went down they got too aggressive and lazy noodles is gonna pick one up on the back side of this it is gonna go all the way to the third round here oh my goodness johnny what a match it was it was it was really close in the first part of the fight. News getting put on the ground and getting all the way down to 11% HP before he ended up being. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of people probably in the, the, the chat right now looking at their points and Sweating. puckering up a bit as they see them <laughs> slowly fade away. But Nudes made it, managing to make it away. Um, Larry and Kuma Queen staying alive long enough for Nudes to regen and rejoin the fight and take the win. Absolutely. As the gates go up and away we go on this one. The last round, uh, Larry Fish kind of playing the side of this, which you don't see super often on the Succession Valkyrie, but honestly just letting his teammates uh, look for any amount of picks there. Just honestly trying to play around nudes to keep him safe. <laughs> Chazzy's done a great job. She's only been CC'd a few times here, uh, and she's got enough gear and is tanky as a class. Uh, it's very difficult to kind of lock her down. Uh, oh my goodness, Larry finds an amazing grab on a combat. Combat barely gets his V off. The Awakening Wizard in V right there. If they can sniff him before he can get a heal off, that would be huge. Uh, it doesn't look like they're... Oh no, they did sniff him. Oh no, tragedy strikes for the console, boys. As scripted, boys. Down goes combat. Pinks is, the, is doing his best but he's losing a lot of health very quickly i'm not sure they have the damage without the awakening wizard there without combat there to make anything happen health is down at 80 percent right there my heroes on the ground on that kuno taking a good amount of damage but innovation he trusts uh as he backs out of that one uh it does look maybe it was a crystal diff you just never know on this nudes is on the ground though uh larry's dashing away from it not gonna help him oh nudes does manage to get back to his feet 30% left on his health bar, though. Larry does throw out a heal, trying to keep him healthy, but the console boys battling back here in this 2v3 might actually be able to find it as the health bars are going to tick down. Nudes down at 40%, but Pink's even lower. Pink's is going to go down, and now, oh, man, it looks like the light is going out for them as it's only Mahiro left alive on the succession Kuno. He is on the ground. He is taking too much damage. It looks like Mahiro is going to go down. Oh my goodness, look at the evasion and the, the iframes on this class are on, uh, just, just not fair. Just staying alive look in at amongst this. three people. Uh, Miss the dodges the grab by Larry. Block jump goes to the other side of him. Finally does get CC'd uh, by nudes right there as they flip on the juice. No, he's just he's back on his feet again. And they're doing their best, but like Mahiro's on the ground. They finally do get him uh, on the backside of that one. But oh my goodness, was that not uh, a charged match? I told you the dark horses, that's okay. The console boys will go to the lower bracket. They are not out of the tournament quite yet, but boy, Johnny, that was a close match, man. That I mean, I, I don't think people were quite expecting uh, the console boys to kind of show a stand like that, especially with the way the voting was. Um, very, very impressive. Even down to the 3v2, they weren't completely out of the fight. Um, they were putting down a lot of damage. Nude's almost getting... Um, killed amongst it but the unfortunate part of a 3v2 is if you turn it into like a, a brawl a, a one selected location and everyone dumps their damage most of the time the three is going to out beat the two and that's exactly what happened there with the suck Maywa dying and the succession kuno having to run for their life trying to kite away um living with about 10 percent hp and eventually going down um securing the win for lazy noodles so um a lot Crazy. of people getting their points but uh my my gosh that was that was a lot closer than I think most people would expect. It was a little sweaty for sure. And now we have one of the matchups that I believe everyone has been waiting for. And I promise this time I have it correct. Now it's time yeah. for C team. Yeah, now it's time for the C team, the rank one seed, the favorite to win this tournament. Raiden GTR on the Awakening Valkyrie, Bobo Buddy on the Awakening Warrior, and Divios on the Awakening Striker. Uh, again, Divios has won every single major Pearl Abyss sponsored tournament he has ever been in. But Johnny, this one isn't Pearl Abyss sponsored. It's not. And that, 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 that might be, might be it. Heel, like you said earlier. Yeah, that might be it. What do you feel about this team? Do you really feel that they are the favorites to win this one? 
I I would say that they're probably the favorite seed of this one. So Divio's having a, a, a you know a perfect track record in the PA tournaments, taking first place every time, either on the Awakening Striker or the Succession Sage. This time bringing the Striker, a very good player, very geared. Um, you have them um, coupled with Raiden GTR, which is Awakening Valkyrie. That class that we mentioned is so important and so good to have. Raiden being one of the top uh, Valkyries in North America, if not the top. Again, very, very geared. And then their final partner is probably the weakest link, but it's not that weak of a link. It's Bobo Buddy on the Awakening Warrior, uh, top consistently in AOS, considered one of the top, if not the top, Awakening Warrior in the game. Very good player. Uh, Warrior isn't what it used to be in small scale, uh, but it is still quite a good um, class. And when you're coupled with high gear and good players, it can definitely succeed and show what it's about. Yeah, and fun fact, Bobo Buddy and Raiden GTR actually placed first in my previous, the very first Blue Squadron Open back in 2022. That was a trials tournament, no gear. And they are back again. Um, Divios, uh, they did replace Dracul with Divios. Dracul uh, was their teammate in the previous Blue Squadron uh, open in 2022, but they you can see best in guild winners 2022, 2023, Blue Squadron Open winners in 2022 as well. Rank one AOS on the Warrior, absolutely insane uh, team matchup here. And they are up against No Wusa, Drac, and Balk Abuser. This, hold up, there we go. This team right here, Chief Azralia and Leifonda. We saw this in the first round. I am concerned a little bit with damage here. Um, you have Chief on the Awakening Striker, and he said he is, he's rank one ALS on Striker, but he also said he's the second best Striker on NA. And guess who's on the enemy team? Number one. Number one is on the enemy team. Uh, so Chief versus Divios is going to be a, a crazy close matchup. And then you have Ezrelia on the Suclon from Stray there. And Leifonda on the Awakening Corsair. Who I would say that Leifonda is probably the weaker link of this team because he mains Corsair, but he mains Succession. He's playing Awakening because Awakening is stronger. Well, he thinks that Awakening is stronger in a 3v3 format like this. So, like, I think that... I mean, pretty obviously C team is favored here. Do you feel like the, the this team no Wusa Drac Valkabusers has a chance here? I think it's definitely going to be very, very rough. Um, Chief Azralia and the Fonda in the last match or in the first one were just basically holding the W key, but they're not going to be able to do that against this other team. They're going to have the gear. They're going to have the accuracy to kill you and to trade into you if you try that. I think their major advantage is that they do have the one class with La Fonda um, with the Awakening Corsair, able to dump damage while not taking it, still being tanky. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough damage to make up for how squishy Azralia is going to be on the Succulon or not, um, but we'll definitely see. I think it's going to come down to, um, honestly, Azralia and Bobo Buddy on whatever one provides more for their team will be the winner of this. Yeah, I completely agree. We're going to look over at the Versus screen here as the match is all ready to go. Uh, as we get ready to go here, 94% of people, 1.2 million points on C team here. Um, no one wants to bet against the king. Um, Johnny, are you bold enough? I am. No, I am not bold <laughs> enough to <again. laughs> He says, yeah, I think that, uh, I think that C team probably takes it 2 0. I'm not, I'm a little concerned with the damage. Uh, on team no drac woosa valk abusers um because again c team is valk abusing so this, this is it's gonna be a little rough as the gates go down here and we get into this one i mean it's one of those situations where the c team you take two of you know any two of them and put them with another player and that's still a topped seed team so it when you have all three boxes checked no weak links for the most part it it's especially rough to play against but nobody loves um or everybody loves a dark horse so let's see if uh non-abusers can take the win here that's right Israelia flying straight into the middle of the arena to start a divios uh confidently kiting through the arena looking for leifonda right now and you just see divios holding the w look at him just jogging after leifonda he knows every single class's protections chief is on the ground he got grabbed it does look like leifonda's doing his best to throw down damage rain's really low too though uh as chief is trading back it's second grade mob ball soccer oh my goodness gracious uh it does look like it's c team that has to bite 
Bobo body has to back up. 20% HP on that warrior. Like Fonda throwing down the damage. As it looks like we may have been wrong, Johnny. The caster curse. They've got the damage. Bobo body's doing his best. Raiden gets him back to healthy again. Uh, and the fight's going to reset a little bit here. As they dive in, there's the big trade. And it looks like, look at this awakening course. They're just shelling out damage uh, on the side of the fight. Uh, Chief doing an amazing job of playing out in front of this one. It doesn't look like they want to do anything to touch Le Fonda here. They feel like they're relatively protected, but that's just simply not the case. It's really, it takes a lot of damage. Chief is really low too. He has to back up. Divio standing tall in the middle. Chief running for his life and Goliath is in a hot pursuit of him. Down on the ground. There's the leg drop coming down. He has to V out of that one and Le Fonda kiting back as well as they try to reset the fight. Uh, health bars are capped down at 80% here as we move down to the minute and 30 second mark. Divio finds a grab v. on a Le Fonda right there. Le Fonda has to V. He does get to safety. Nobody sniffs it. Chief backs up. It looks like the fight resets one more time. And Divios is after this awakening Corsair right now. He knows he can grab him. He doesn't have a V available right here. He's waiting. Knows all of those gaps on that class. Oh my goodness, big damage going down. It does look like Ezrelia went down on the Cyclone, but Raiden's really low too. Bobo Body down at 20%. Chief down at 10 though, as they're taking just a really bad trade there. Raiden down at 10% as well. Bobo gets really low. Oh my goodness, gods do bleed though, Johnny, as they may go down, but they demonstrated that they can win this. They're, yeah, they're definitely not out of it. They still got another round, and even then, they have the loser's bracket. Worst come, worst co uh, serve. But it's the situation of I didn't quite expect or didn't quite think about how the Corsair plays into the Warrior. And one of the big issues is that when the Warrior tries to use their forward guard skills, Sea Mist coming in or some of those range attacks coming in is going to be very, very punishing towards Boba Buddy and him trying to use any sort of um, damage skills. He has pulverized if he wants to heal back up. But again, it's forward guard. It's a dangerous, you know, gamble. Yeah, the gates go up again. You see Bobo playing a little bit more reserved this time because he knows he can take so much damage. Raiden absolutely saved that last match. I think Bobo actually does die there if Raiden is not there to help him. Divios is actually on the ground, uh, but... Uh, he just stood back up. Nobody even touched him because they know that they can't kill him right now. Bobo going in for a big trade right there and does trade indeed. Chief goes down to about 30% health and has to disengage that. Um, Bobo trying to stay next to Raiden, trying to hug his Valkyrie right there. Like there's an umbilical cord connecting them, waiting for this Awakening Corsair to come uh, out of iframe. Uh, not going to find it. Ooh, Bobo misses a grab on the ground. There's the collapse from Israelia. There's the damage. Not quite there. Raiden is just so strong supporting him on that Awakening Valkyrie. It's so hard to get through that damage. You almost have to kill Raiden first uh, because of it here. You can play around this Valkyrie, but you have to be careful. Lefana gets caught he doesn't have be it he is gonna go down on the back side of this uh bobo beautiful catch there out of v uh and divios actually down at 20 percent but raiden's just making sure he's healthy constantly spamming out purification is really is down at 10 percent bleed is tipping ticking lon takes off uses that z-axis to get away chief's on his back he's all alone though and they all three people wailing on him he's just got so much gear on oh my goodness Israelia backing up he's got to get a little bit more healthy so that he can trade chief needs to find a grab here and it probably needs to be uh onto raiden or bobo uh down to a minute and 25 seconds on the clock bobo with a clean grab right there on the warrior slashing the with the big damage and both of them will go down it is going to be c team taking this one johnny but i was definitely like we we saw him bleed a little bit there bro they, they took damage that okay. was i mean we were they're, stressing they're not invulnerable that's going to be the thing with a lot of these teams is as long as you have the gear and as long as you have the skill even the best teams can bleed even the best ones can fall it's not you know it's not easy it's never going to be easy but if you want to take home this kind of a prize and this kind of a competitive tournament, you have to show your stuff. You have to show that you're capable and you have to show you know what to do under pressure against people who know what they're doing as well. Yeah, um, yeah no, I completely the, agree. Um, I think that, that second... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. No, no, no. You, no go ahead. That second round, Lafonda getting killed first there, I think was kind of the the big That's issue rough. with that final yeah. trade. We had so yeah. many low on, on uh, C-team. And I was like, eh, that Corsair was able to pump some damage there. They might have been able to take the round, but it is what it is. They'll have next time. 
Yeah, better luck next time. Down to the losers bracket, uh, where we will see them uh, a little bit later today. Uh, and everyone making sure that they secure that payout. Only got a little sweaty there. It wasn't quite as sweaty as the uh, the Lazzy round. Uh, it does look like our next matchup is going to be Meta Humpers versus the Goats. Again, guys, I do not come up with the team names. I just work here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to the Goats first. Um... As we we have already seen this team, the goats is the Goticus, Hoid, and Swidex team. Um, and again, we saw Swidex. Uh, hopefully, he's he, his fingers are warm this time because he got CC'd a lot in that last match. Um, and I'm a little nervous uh, that uh, if that happens here, he might not be uh, as well off. But again, you have Swidex, who's one of the best Awakening Valkyries uh, in North America. You have Hoid on the Awakening Draconia, and we know that he is a super gamer. And then you have Goticus on that suck ninja who honestly when he's playing well looks like the best ninja in the world and when he's playing poorly it looks like how could we consider this guy the best ninja in the world you know what i mean it's just it's just kind mm -hmm. of back and forth like this but now we're gonna look over at their opponent And it team looks like Meta Humpers. Team Meta Humpers. And this is your team. Again, this is a corrupt uh, stack team with Yongi, the only barcode representative in the tournament, sadly. Uh, Yongi from barcode on the Awakening Draconia, an absolute gamer uh, on the Awakening Draconia. Actually, mains Awakening Ranger, but has played Draconia like the last two months or so. Uh, and then MVI and Fabi, I'll let you introduce. So MVI was in Corrupt for a bit, recently uh, moving over to Cho as per his accomplishment, um, playing the Suck Sage, and then finally Fobby on Succession Wizard. <sighs> this isn't... I mean, they're team meta humpers, and I think Suck Sage and Suck Wizard are both good in AOA, but I don't think they're the most meta you can see. Um, Succession Wizard brings a lot of the utility that Shy doesn't have, of course, with like cat, um, Speed Spell, and PA in the multitude of heals that it has. It has nice range damage and provides good support. But I think when you fight teams like Goats, where they have a Suck Ninja and an Awakening Draconia, you're just going to get ran down. That's what we saw last time uh, with Arian, I believe, um, just grabbing the, the Suck Wizard and just blowing him up uh, versus Details. And so if Details can't do it, is Fabi going to be able to? Um, yeah, I mean... Fabi frags just under details. Um, I wouldn't say he's quite at details level, but Fabi is someone that I recruited in Reforged. Um, and he was a new player in Reforged, and um, we were the ones that kind of just showed him the game, but he was just a super gamer. Um, and so when Reforged uh, went away, he went over to Corrupt, and he does really well uh, in Corrupt. I mean, this guy has only been playing the game for six months and he's on the front page of Corrupt is absolutely insane, uh, the amount that he has played this game. And then you have MBI, um, who is in Cho Nation on that Succession Sage. Uh, and then Yongi again on the Awakening Drac. Who do you feel like wins this? I, I want to give it to the Goats here. I, I think uh, the Suck Wizard is going to have a really, really harsh time versus the Succession Ninja. Um, the Awakening Draconia is going to put a lot of pressure on them. I don't know Yongi too well, so I don't know who's going to win the, uh, the matchup between him and Hoid. Um, Swidex, though, uh, is the like big thing here, where if you're like, okay, well, we have MVI versus Swidex. With those nerfs that happened to Suck Sage and with how good uh, of Swid being on Valkyrie, I'm giving it to Swid here. Um, I, I think it's just the better class for it, um, and I think it's the better player for it too, so... Yeah, uh, um, I, I might eat my words here in a couple minutes like I have in the past, but we'll see for sure. My bets on uh, goats. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm going to go with meta humpers here. I would never bet against the boys here. Fabi, MBI, and Yongi have got this. I think that uh, Fabi on the Suck Wizard is not going to get caught. Um, I think he's been practicing out of his mind for this tournament. Um, and I think that uh, Godicus is going to have a harder time than he thinks trying to get on top of him. Um, he basically plays a lot like Details does. Uh, MVI on the Suck Sage, I actually think is probably the easiest one uh, to catch on that team, and it is not easy. The man is in show, after all. Yongi on the Awakening Draconia, you can't mess up that class, can you? It's not possible. Um, and then Goticus, uh, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like I got the boys over here. And then, again, with the, the amount we saw Goticus getting CC'd in that first round, if he tries to do that here, I, I just don't see it, man. Um, I, I just don't see it working here. I honestly don't see it working either. I I don't know. It, I'm just like looking at the, the composition here. And if I were goats, I would just tell Godicus, like, 
put on the bloodhound mask and just go after fabi the whole time and if fabi can kite then fabi can kite but i don't think he's going to be able to um the drac and the the valkyrie maybe the sage is the catch i don't know i guess we'll see here I in a second this, I, I think mv might be the catch here uh as look at their positioning right now i know they've been practicing this all week they've been waiting he took aqua jail which is a uh typically the good choice here uh goes in looks for damage on Hoyt. oh my goodness gets grabbed by got kiss immediately fabi out of stealth gets grabbed oh no that is not a good start and i'm just eating my words right there now he's kiting away uh as got kiss will not be able to use that oh. Again, and got to oh, got to kiss this on the ground has to be so Fabi trades back the V right there and says, okay, all right, you got me once now, sh you fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, right? Like, oh my goodness, now Fabi waiting in protection. They did get that V right there as the fight kind of resets. Fabi throwing out that range damage. Oh no, oh, a he's double on CC. A double Ooh. CC and a double kill. Actually, only got one kill uh, out of Fabi right there as he just died instantly i don't think he realized he was gonna get grabbed once again right there man fabi just needs to watch those grabs and i think they would be just fine uh as they were trading v's back and forth uh now yongi and mvi waiting for cooldowns both teams waiting on opposite sides of the arena the goats know that they can wait on their class buffs because they just class buff the first round of both matches they just class buff really hard and then they wait out uh, if they can get the pick. They did kill Envy there. Yongi's going to go down as well. And the Goats are going to take round one as predicted by Johnny there. An absolutely fantastic ground by, I believe, Swed. Um, just putting, putting Fabi on the ground. And uh, I'm not sure who the other CC was on. It might have been MVI. Um, just watching both of them bounce in the air as Fabi disappears from sight. That's something you got to be careful of. I mean, if you, if you, you know that grabs can CC on the land of it, and you have three classes that can grab, they're all trying to brawl with you, they're gonna do it, especially when both uh, MVI and Fabi don't have grabs. Yeah, Gotikus not going with the stealth approach this time, uh, but is, oh, there it is. He's gonna look for this suck caster. This is the engage. Uh, he's waiting. He's just kind of waiting over. They should know he's over here, though, as he, he is very vulnerable when he does that. He does come out of stealth. Not able to get Fabi this time, playing super well to kite him. And there it gets the Yongi catches Godicus right there. He's on the ground. Focus Meteor almost kills him. He's going to come out of V right behind Fabi right here. Let's see if he finds it. Fabi, ooh, does see it. There's the Bolide coming down. Godicus, a uh, risky V. Oh, does get back to full health because Swidex heals him right there, bails him out like Joe Biden and the government absolutely crazy uh right there as Godicus gets knocked out of stealth MV collapses down no v do they have the damage ninja step gets him away Godicus barely alive on this one fabi playing this so much better not a grab in sight on this one as Godicus just keeps getting caught and caught and caught again one more catch i think that might just be it i'm not sure swedex has pa uh available to him anymore uh to kind of bail him out Time sticking down to the 1 minute and 50 second mark. Both teams are still alive. Health bars are down at 80%. Got to kiss engaging from underneath the gazebo here. Um, trying to basically play the line of sight. That you can see Fabi pressuring him from the outside on that suck. Um, wizard right there. Swidex getting very, very low as well. Ooh, Fabi uses mass TP. That is a long cooldown, but it does bail him out. Uh, slowly there. TPing away again. MV just went down. MVI on that Sage. Not the person we thought was going to go down oh. first. But Swidex goes down too. Gotta get down at 10%. Traded back. Down he goes. The 2v3. Over to Yongi and Fabi. Come out and absolutely take it. Oh my goodness. That was so explosive. MVI goes down. And then Fabi brings it back. With Yongi on the back foot of it. Oh my goodness. My I didn't... Goosebumps. I didn't see if Godicus was interrupted there, but he was keeping good pressure on Fabi, keeping him low, keeping him running, used his mass TP, he used his double T, his split TP as well. Fabi, all alone, with no movement left, was finally left alone by Godicus, and Fabi just threw all of his damage, got the double kill, and just won them the match. They can't let them do that again. Absolutely crazy. He doesn't have mass TP this time, so if Fabi gets caught, he only really has his V 
um, to get him out of this situation. Mass TP is a great, really long-standing iframe. You can see uh, Fabi nervous to throw damage because he's not sure where Godicus is waiting in stealth for him. Uh, he's sitting between his two teammates, throwing out as much damage as he can, constantly trying to play protected. He's worried about that ninja stealth engage that caught him in the first round. Yongi, basically, you can see how Envy and Yongi are staying right in front of them. They do not want that awakening ninja spamming skills. They do not want that succession ninja, rather, uh, to get in there. There's the block jump going down. Godicus does reveal his location, uh, and Fabi kites successfully. Swidex taking a good amount of damage from the back. Yongi gets CC, but he's on the low ground. I think he will stand up from this. He is taking a lot of damage. He does end up going into V. Uh, MVI taking a good amount of damage as well. We'll see if they can catch him out of V here. Oh my goodness. Can he get his health back? He can. He is an Awakening Draconia after all there. And there's the damage. Godicus uh, taking a lot of damage right there. Fabi went down. Oh no. Fabi died. Godicus is super low though. Let's see if they can pull this back. MV and Yongi are the only ones left alive uh, in this one. We'll see if they can pull it back in the 2v3 like they did in the last round here. This is certainly not over yet, but it is not looking good for Meta Humpers here. Yongi, oh, gets caught. He's on the ground. Red Rain, Godicus, Swidex on the ground too. Godicus comes back in, throws a little bit of damage he needs to, but you can see he's at 10% uh, HP right here, and it's only MBI left alive for Meta Humpers. What a close round that was. I'm not sure what caught Babby there uh, at the end of that, but Dang, it's so tragic. He ended up going down right there. It's now these three can just play super slow. There's the grab on Envy. He is going to be, he's going to do his best right here um, to try to get out of it. But it does look like Meta Humpers is going to go to the loser's bracket here uh, on this one. Dang, what a close I, round, Johnny. Good. I, I mean, I, even in the 3v2 situation um, with uh, Zirconia dying there, Swid was on the ground inches away from him, also under 10% health. It was one of those things where if MVI could have just done one more skill, got a little bit more damage on Swid, and if the Draconia would have stood up for any known reason, then it might have been right back to a 2v2. That was a nail biter through and through. That was a close match through and through. I think a lot of people, including myself, thought that the Ghost was going to come in and fairly, uh, fairly um, win fairly easily, but ended up making it a lot closer of a match than um, they might have even expected themselves. So. You know, it's one of those things of sometimes in these competitions, people come out, they're ready, they haven't done tournaments before, they're showing up, and they're trying to show out. So I, I want to see more of Meta Humpers here as they get into the loser's bracket. Yeah, no, I think they're going to do uh, really, really well uh, as they move forward. I think that Fabi was a little shook in the first round there, getting grabbed like that. And then the second round, I think he brought it back really nicely, and their team composition mm -hmm. actually worked really well, even without a Valkyrie there. Uh, he's pretty crazy. Uh, as we look ahead here to Rule 11, who we have yep. not seen yet versus Skeptic Love Shies. I'll be honest, has family taken an L yet today? Is it? I believe it's Sinister Synergy versus Among Us, the next one. Oh, is it? Oh, it is Sinister Synergy ver versus Among Us. So we'll get to that in a moment. Sinister Synergy, I believe... I don't know. In my opinion, this team actually might have what it takes to go the distance, even against Divios' team. Let's take a look. There we go. Sinister Synergy is Rujinx on the Succession Wusa, Precision on the Awakening Draconia, and Onichan on, on the Awakening Berserker. Um, honestly, these guys have um, a rap sheet as long as my arm. Uh, these guys have been around the PvP scene for a long time. Johnny, do the names not just... Are, are they just not scary enough? Look at the composition. I mean, the composition itself is even really, really good. Uh, we have Rujinx on su su yeah, Succession Wusa. I, I would say he's probably the number one Wusa in the game right now. Um, or at least in North America. It's a very disgusting class. It's very evasive. It's got a ton of damage. It's got good AoEs. Um, we have Precision on the Awakening Drac. Very good player on the class. Very scary class itself. Oni-chan on the Awakening Zerg. And we saw in previous tournaments, uh, in the Best in Guild tournament, Oni-chan uh, teamed up with uh, Details, and I don't remember who the third person was in the tournament uh, on their team. But showing what the Awakening Zerker can do, and still saying that it's a good small-scale class that you can still pop off on it, showing a lot of impact on the class. And so having all three of them on a single team is really, really good. Onishan bringing in three grabs, Precision with his grab, and Rujinx just there to dump all of the damage in the world is an absolute monstrosity. They a have a crazy amount of accuracy uh, as well, because you know I know what their gear is. I mean, like they, 
these guys are stacked and and they are up uh against among us e3 which you've already seen there we go sorry i can't talk during the transition because uh obs just does that uh they, they are up against among us v3 which is multi melter meth and pig i think that this team revolves around pig right uh but like if you bring enough accuracy is the striker relevant i think the striker <sighs> I mean, I still think the striker is relevant, especially with the other team not having a Valkyrie. Um, you can bring a lot of gear, you know, maybe you have four, five, or even six accuracy items on your um, gear ring or whatever you want to call it. But it's a thing of, I don't know. If Pig has enough uh, evasion, Meph is going to be heavy evasion as well. Both of them are just going to W key at each other. I mean, you said with Pig earlier that he would just class buff and then run, all, run around with his knuckles dragging across the floor and just looking for grabs or other CCs. I don't know who they would try to chase going into the sinister, sinister synergy team. Maybe Oni, I, I would say, would probably be their best chance. It's um, tough. Maybe Precision, but it, it's tough. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, this... I would assume that they're going to go for it. Maybe it's an Awakened Draconia trade. Maybe that's what it's going to come down to. Yeah, I mean, like, I think that, like, honestly, I'm so scared of Rujinx. I'm like, it's like trauma. Um, I'm so scared of Rujinx on the Sukwusa in that Sukwusa is such a menace, but we saw CTG on it, um, earlier in the tournament and he just got one shot from standing. And so like, my concern here is that Meph might just kill Rujinx from standing. And I think that might just be the play, um, for them is like pig, pig's obviously going to have to try to find a grab, but these two teams are stacked. And uh, interestingly enough, most of the people in the arena are actually wearing the shell bell outfit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Always just trying to distract their opponents. Let's go to the versus screen here. The real impressive part of that is you knew the name of the outfit. Yeah, of course I know the name of the outfit. It's like a transmog <laughs> competition. Are you kidding me? We all know what the Shell Bell outfit looks like. Um, you know it. I know it. We all know it. Um... Among Us V3 versus Sinister Synergy. Make sure you get your votes in. This match is going to be crazy um, on this one. It looks like 63% think Sinister Synergy is going to take this one. Um, and again, I do want to point out that there's a fair amount of beef uh, underlying this one because, you know, you have like Show Nation versus Black Rose Digi, um, which is mm -hmm. essentially what we have here. The standalone greatest rivalry that has ever existed in North American PvP. And here we go. We got Holy Wars ready when the gates open up. There we go. I, the <sighs> gates are opening. The gates are going up in just a moment. Gates up and away we go. Rujinx and Precision. <laughs> They're all in the shell fell off. It's actually wild. Um, just running right in there. I actually think that uh, the Awakening Berserker on Oni-chan might be the weak link here as you're just really unprotected. But Oni-chan is just such a good player. You see him jumping around the arena looking for the opportunity to throw that range damage onto Pig and they do find him. Getting some solid damage down but they, they does not look like the target. Oni-chan grabs somebody as well but they're both taking damage. It's like they're both CC'd. Oh! My goodness, Meth had to be in the middle of the Zerker arms. They're on the sniff right now for him. Rujinx in butterfly step. Meth running for his life down at 10%. Oni-chan down at 50% already. Uh, as Rujinx takes a little bit of a bad trade right there. But Oni-chan on his back right now. He's probably going to have to V that. There's almost no way he does end up Ving it. Meth forces that. He's going to back out right now. Rujinx playing slow with Storm's Call right there. Um, oh my goodness, they found Oni-chan's V in the corner right there. He is going to go down. Oh no, Among Us V3 in a 3v2, but that doesn't mean Rujinx can't pull this back right now. Goes into Butterfly Step, honestly playing it relatively slow. Waiting for someone to get a pick, staying just off screen. Waiting, waiting for Precision to try to make something happen here. He knows he is safe. He can play very slow. There's the Storm's Call coming out. He doesn't have to do very much. They can wait for health to tick down and try to play this from the 2v3 situation. Um, Oni-chan very sadly getting caught there. You can see how well he was playing, but like how difficult uh, Zerk is to get uh, make work. Rujinx does find Pig here, but doesn't have the damage and he knows it. So he just butterflies the steps across uh, looking for Meph right here. Uh, he knows that Precision is looking for any CC he can onto Meph or Multi. Um, I'm not sure that they can kill Pig until the one minute mark. Oh my goodness. Down goes, goes Precision. Precision. Tragic. Rujing's playing really slow. Finds Pig once again, but not able to get the damage down. 
There's the butterfly step forward. He's all alone. One minute left on the clock. It is a 1v3 with Cho Nation towering above him. Uh, can Rujink to make the 1v3 happen? That's the reflect skill. He can actually, yeah, he's just going to take damage right here, but like he can just stand up and, and turn it all right back around on him uh, as he just should have it charged up with any sort of Segunja uh, expelled at this point. He might just be able to one-shot somebody uh, if he has the damage to make it work there, but they're just running from him. There's Big CC once again. Oh my goodness! Forces the V right there. Rujing says, get out of my face, you're trash. Uh, puts him on the <laughs> ground, looking for the V. Oh, doesn't quite find the storm, um, the, the catch on that one, the Thunderstruck on that one. Trying to kill Pig, 15 seconds left uh, on the clock. Not actually going to get it in there. They just don't want anything to do with Rujinx. Uh, as he moves around here, it's cloudy with a chance of thunderstorms. But Rujinx's team, Sinister Synergy, not going to take the first round of this. Among Us V3, Meth and Pig are titans of industry. Rujinx there showing uh, what you can do on Succession Wusa. Even being alone in a 1v3, still getting Pig. A very, very tanky awakening striker all the way down to like 10 percent hp and pig having to back off for a little bit meth ended up going down to like 10 percent in that fight was able to v into the one spot where he was safe in the um pavilion or the whatever it's called but just sitting there when oni chan was trying to hunt him down made it so meth was able to stay alive while when oni chan tried to v was hunted down by pig so maybe it's very back and forth here as we go into the next round yeah no we have oni chan coming out here Oni Chan had a lot of catches right at the start of that last round, and they need him to get those initiates down. You can see how critical he is to this team's strategy on that Awakening Berserker, but him going down just meant that they just couldn't make anything happen. Pig finds Oni Chan. Here comes Meth and Multi from off screen. That's how this composition works. Pig finds a grab, and then out of nowhere, here come the rats. Oni's got a grab now, too, um, but he's really low. Oh my goodness, they trade really hard down onto the Draconia. He has to be. Uh, out of that one, Multi is in V. Oni Chan's in V. It looks like Multi did go down and Sinister Synergy bringing this back. They're in a 2v3 now. It's Meth and Pig against the world now. Oni Chan bringing it back for round two, turning on the gas. Meth not able to get on top of this Awakening Berserker, getting CC'd right there. There's the damage. Oh, everyone's on the ground. But Meth, does he have the damage to throw it down? Crush Crush comes out, but doesn't quite kill anybody. Oni Chan gets back to his feet. Supporting from range right there. He's super slow. Look how slow that Awakening Berserker is right there. As Meth and Pig, they're saying that we're still on the strategy. We've still got the same game plan. Pig looking for a grab. Meth running for his life, waiting for Pig to get that grab. Pig just holding that W key. Oni-chan moving back in. Meth's really low. He can't stop the Awakening Berserker from pelting him. He just can't run from it in an arena this small. He's in V. They're on the sniff right now. Oni-chan gets CC'd. But Meph was in V, so they couldn't capitalize on it. Meph does come out of V, but you see Oni Chan just free firing now. And Meph can't run away from range skills like that. It's very difficult uh, to do that. And now Pig is in hot pursuit, trying to find any sort of CC that they can. But look how hard Meph is to run down in this matchup. Both these teams just do not want to die. One minute left on the clock. HP bars tick down to 50%. Meph. If, if any big CC happens here, Meph turns this immediately. This is actually getting a little sweaty here. As Pig lands a single CC, Meph could come in and sweep up house right here. Oni-chan pressuring Meph from range. Not able to find anything, though. Pig gets really low. Has to be. It's only Meph left alive. He gets grabbed on that one. He is going to die. Pig's going to come out of V and get immediately killed. Sinister Synergy battles back in round two, Johnny making it 1-1. One, one. I mean, that's what we talked about, right? People are wanting that close match. People are wanting that one heck of a fight from both sides, and that's what they're both... I mean, that's what they're both doing, right? They came to show, and they're performing. Like, it's it's um, one of those times where every second of the match, it could go back and forth either way. If somebody gets a good sniff, if anyone gets a good grab, if somebody is able to find that one CC you weren't expecting, it can be anyone's match going into round three. Right, and the gates are up and away we go, and both teams have to be tense right now as it is 1-1. Loser goes to the loser's bracket here. Um, and Multi takes a really bad... Oh my gosh! Multi just died instantly! Didn't even be because he didn't think he needed it. Rujinx just swept him away. And that is the danger with Succession Wusa. Looks balanced to me. 
Big is on the ground. Precision doing a little bit of damage, but they want meth. Oh my goodness. Multi throwing pigs on the ground. Meth's on the ground with them, and they're just laying there. First time both of them are in V. Look at the Black Rose members spread out here, hunting for those Chodation members. Oh my goodness. For the Rose in the chat right there, as Pig looks like he's going to go down on the backside of this. They could win this 2v3, but it is not looking good. Oni with the grab. No V right there. Down he goes, and it is going to be a Black Rose victory. Darn it. I can't believe Multi died that fast. That dude is 760 I, gear score. I mean, that's gone. That's how it is anymore with a lot of these classes. Like, people talk about the Awakening Draconia being scary, and while it is a somewhat bruiser s class um, in comparison to others, it's not, in, that grand, in the grand scheme of things, not that tanky. Um, especially versus a class like Succession Wusa, the class can dump so much damage that if you're playing DR, um, unless you're double stacked cadre with full DR crystals and everything and such, you're, you're just gonna pop like a balloon. And that's just how it is right now. That's why you see a lot of people building that very heavy evasion build is because it's the one thing that allows you to be tanky in these matchups. Um, and you have to be careful with that. That's that's why those those wooses are scary. It's why we're seeing so many of them. Um, so it, I don't know. I think it was just a little bit of a, um, a lack of thought in a sense. I don't know, man. It was just so it was so so close, uh, start to finish. Uh, on this one uh, and it looks like they are getting the next match ready so we're excited to see those teams once again uh it does look like um that our boys sinister synergy are going to move on uh in the winner's bracket whereas among us v3 has a long way to go through the loser's bracket to battle that back mm -hmm. um and now we have our next matchup which is rule 11 versus skeptic love shies take a look at this so rule 11 we haven't seen yet oh, wait wait, wait. Um, now go oh. yeah we can't wait we go the transition means that it, they can't hear us during the transition for the most part so you gotta wait till the transition finishes there we go uh, uh yeah so this is rule 11 this is cosini alusha and kairos uh if you remember this is the exact same team that played in the best in guild tournament and had such a good showing in that tournament alusha actually managing to get out of the gate three out of four times in that tournament um it's crazy <laughs> crazy good uh but like how do you feel about them here i mean cosini like basically the jesus of awakening um wizard here well uh cosini being on the awakening wizard is going to be very tanky he i believe he is evasion last time i checked i might be wrong here or at least it feels like it in uh rbf um coming in with the incredibly tanky incredibly skilled awakening wizard alusha again that awakening valkyrie that you need it has the accuracy it has the utilities it's such a good class um a good player on it as well and then finally everyone's apparently recent favorite awakening draconia coming in so maybe they have more practice this is their uh, another tournament that they have together uh they're going to be able to fight um a team that isn't like a number one seed per se so i think that they're going to have a, a a good time they're going to have um a decent fight here for sure it's not just anyone's free game like there was sometimes in the best of guild tournament all of these are brawls all of these are good fights so I, i'm ready to see this in terms of who i would bet on well, well here, if we want to go let's and look at look skeptic over at the other team yeah i was gonna say yeah, let's yeah. look at skeptic all right this is the skeptic love shy guys from before armin no gamble no loss and skeptic and again we saw don getting caught a number of times in the first round but armin and no gamble uh pulling it back for him there so like honestly Johnny, who do you feel like wins this i want to give it to rule 11 but again, I don't think it's going to be any sort of sweep. I think it's like a 60-40 kind of a situation where they're going to have to battle it out. It's anyone's game. It's slightly in their favor. But I, I don't think it's... I think it's going to be... I'm hoping for a 1-2 situation from either way. Yeah, I'm not... Oof, man, I, I want to see three rounds. I, what we need to see here is Skeptic not not get caught at all on that Awakening DK. And they should be just fine. Let's look over at the Versus screen here. Uh, make sure that you get your bets in on who you think is going to win in this matchup here. Uh, I will close the betting uh, when we transition over. So your versus screen is basically the cue uh, that you got to get those point bets in, boys. It's Skeptic Love Shy versus Rule 11. And I got to say, I have to favor Rule 11 here. 
I think that Cosini and Alusha and Kairos play so well together. Um, and I think that Kairos, he could get caught. And I think Armin knows that. I think that if they're going to pull this back, Armin would know. He's seen these players in basically every tournament uh, ever. Um, we'll see if they, he can actually find a catch here. Who do you predict to win this one? I say rule 11 as well. Now, I said 60-40. How favored do you think they are? I think it's rule 11-70-30. Um, because I think Skeptic gets caught here, and then I think that they can play safe. This is, of course, assuming that Alusha can find the exit to the gate. Um, let's go see here. I think this is definitely going to be a situation where Skeptic might have an easier time with the Awakened DK not getting CC just because this isn't that super oppressive rat team that we've seen before. So I, I guess we'll find out, though. Yeah, no, and Awakening Wizard is not considered a particularly great class, but man, oh man, do they make this stuff look good. Uh, in the 3v3, Alusha does get out of the gate. Already a better start right there as they just collapse right down. Family, aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Trying to put the damage down to Cosini, but he gets Rabom heal off, and now it's no gamble, no loss. That looks like he's sitting on a casting couch. He has to V and backs out of this one. Are they gonna, oh my goodness, Alusha with the Hostiludium catch on that one from across the arena catches both Armin and no gamble on that one absolutely crazy sniff out of Alusha right there no gamble no loss sitting in the tornado he is trying to get safe right here look how impactful that Valkyrie is skeptic trying to keep his distance Alusha is just climbing up his but with that Lance, though, good grab down on a no gamble. He's going to go down. Cosini is just eating on this wizard. He said, I'm I'm here and I am helping. While Alusha is just gas, gas, gas. He has the Euro beat music on and he has his foot on the pedal. Absolutely crazy. Skeptic on the back foot of it. He's losing a lot of health. You cannot get away from Awakening Draconia as an Awakening DK. It is just a miserable class to have to fight. Armin's very low as well. Uh, trying to get his way through the arena there. Skeptic doing his best. Goes into Nocturne. Kites back with Trap of Adir. Keeps moving. Gets just blown. Blown away by Cosini on the Awakening Wizard right there. And it is just Armin left alive in the 1v3. And again, this is why this composition is just so, so powerful. Armin just trying to die right now. That is 100% intentional on his part. He did not get caught uh, unintentionally right there. He's just trying to die uh, for cooldowns purposes. Uh, he's a very advanced player. He absolutely uh, is going to know how to do that. So, Johnny, I, I, did it go how you expected? I I mean, I definitely wasn't expecting um, for the enemy to, Skeptic's team to come out and just jump on top of Cosini, putting him on the ground. I mean, he got double CC'd. He was knocked down, and he got up, and he was thunder stiffed. Uh, immediately backed up, did the heal, like you said, and just continued to fight it out. So... I, that's a lot of more tankiness out of Cassini than I think they were expecting. Yeah, no, and Alusha comes out, and again, he does leave the gate, which gives them a much higher chance of winning uh, this round. But, oh, that's not good. Gets CC'd right there, but stands right back up because Valkyrie is so, so tanky uh, on this one. Hostiludium's forward, doesn't find the CC on a no gamble. But, oh my goodness, that core on the Hosti is so, so good. Armin's on the ground, but Innovation, we... Oh, never mind. Innovation, maybe we don't trust so much anymore as Armin's just trying to get away right now, down at 20%. Uh, he needs to back up there. Bladespin keeps him safe as he kites through the middle of the arena down at 20%. He can't afford to get caught uh, at all anymore. Alusha just says, yo, get out of here. You can't do this to me. You can't be in my face this much. Oh, the Ash catches Alusha on the stiffen right there. Throws out that super armored heel. Catches Armin one more time. Armin on the ground. He's saving his... Oh my goodness, gets his, catches a heal right there from something that may have been a whale tendon or something. I'm not sure. Uh, but it does stand right back up and does just fine. Armin comes back in to re-engage, throws Red Rain down onto Cosini, which is a bleed and a DP debuff, but not going to find enough damage to kill him right there is Alusha is just not going to let him die. And Kyros uh, on the Awakening Draconia has all the sustain in the world with the Valkyrie as well. Armin... <laughs> Floor POV in this round here, just struggling to make anything happen uh, for this team right now. Cosini doing a great job on the Awakening Wizard right here, just playing safe, uh, keeping everyone slowed, throwing out his AoEs. The evasion debuffs are critical so that his team can do any amount of damage. Skip Alusha just ran across, one-shot Skeptic, and then runs back and says, okay, I'm back. 
Yeah, it's like a timeout. I got to kill this guy. Time in. Uh, and just absolutely wiped him from the map. And now no gamble, no loss is the only one left alive. Is it looks like Skeptic Love Shies is going to get pushed to the loser's bracket of this tournament right here. Oh, my God, Johnny. Oh, my goodness. What a crazy team composition that is. Again, that I don't think anybody thought. Yeah, I thought again, 70 30, man. Like that team, like I've seen these people play together before. It's crazy. I mean, it, it was just an absolute brawl fest. Like everyone is just throwing hands. There wasn't as much kiting as we've seen in the past. There was a bit, of course. Um, but for the most part, it was just we've decided that this location is where we will do battle. And that is definitely what they did. So I, I love those kind of matches every once in a while to see. Um, those are definitely the uh, the more interesting ones, in my um, opinion. I, I watching somebody run out uh, somebody else down is fun for sure. Um, but I love a good old fashioned just bar brawl in the center of the court kind of a situation. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, <laughs> a bare knuckle brawl in literally the middle of the arena, basically the entire time. Honestly, MVP of the match, Alusha. To be yeah. honest, kind of kind of eating. Um, the whole time basically is absolutely insane on that awakening uh Valkyrie. Uh honestly saving his team, getting the CCs, picking off Skeptic at the end there. Uh we do have an instant replay to go ahead and look at. Um we did catch that. Here we go. So Alusha, everything looks totally fine. Everything looks absolutely fine. No big deal. And then all of a sudden, Alusha decides. Yeah, hold up. Let me just finish this real quick. Hostiludium's backwards. Boom! Catches Don Skeptic and right back to it again. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. It was a great heads up awareness uh, by him there to actually catch that there. Uh, if we look ahead to our next match here, we have Tuvala Tims uh, versus Dragons. And this is our first match uh, of the losers bracket. So let's go ahead and take a look, recap on what these teams look like jumping into that with the first match of the losers bracket do you want to kind of remind the audience of how far we are going in the tournament today i have received a few questions saw some yeah, in the chat as well it is the first two rounds of the tournament today so that is it for the winner's bracket if you won both rounds you are finished for today um the losers bracket will go two rounds as well uh and then we will finish up next saturday round of three all the way through the finals there um so yeah, this is the very first round of the losers bracket for the day. This is Dragons with Flowers, Junzo, and Travesty. How'd you like how this team played the first time around? Um, it was a little bit lacking of damage. Was the big the big thing I noticed? It just felt like that there was nothing coming out. Like uh, maybe it was just the team comp they fought. Um, if I remember correctly, they fought the Skeptic team, um, and. It, it just seemed like that they had the CCs that they needed, but there was never any follow-up damage to secure the kills, which is something that's super important. I don't know if Jonzo was built super tanky with like a Kadri, um, or maybe just the uh, the team wasn't working very well together. But I would like to see now that they've warmed up and had some time to look over uh, any of the previous footage if they decided to do so, that they can kind of clear up those mistakes and really try to push forward to, to do what they need to do. Because I like the team, I like the composition. It just felt like something was lacking. It's like when you're you're cooking something and you taste it, and you're like, hmm, it's missing a little bit of something, a dash of something, but I don't know what it is yet. So I think it's damage. I guess we'll find out. We will find out now. They are up against Tuvala, Tim's, that style, drag and drop, and CTG on that succession. Musa again in his very first tournament appearance here. Um, didn't do super hot in the first match there, but I think it may have been a compositional diff uh, on that one. How do you feel about uh, this comp here moving in here with the Suck Wusa Awakening Valk Suck Zerk? That's a crazy good comp. So the uh, style is on the Awakened Draconian, just for the uh, reminder from earlier, because um, he did end up switching it. But style on the Awakening Dr or maybe you said that I might have been the one uh, not hearing anything right. Uh, <laughs> but style on the Awakened Draconia was felt like the weak link in the previous match that we saw. Um, the Awakening Valkyrie and Wake in Succession Wusa from um, Dragon Drop and CTG, respectively, are those two like good classes that you want to see in those compositions that we keep seeing over and over and over again by teams that are competing and doing really well. Um, I think maybe they just needed a little bit of a warm up 
I can't remember exactly what it felt like that held them back, if it was anything particular, if they're, maybe they're just outmatched in general. Um, but I think that those are very good players all around. A little bit more of a warm up. Maybe that's all they need is just to shoot through the, uh, the loser's bracket. Um, my bets are on Tuvala Tims. Um, I would say 70 30. Okay, all right. Well, here, let's go to the versus screen here. All right, and we have Dragons versus Tuvala Tims. Make sure you get your votes in because when we lose the versus screen, that's when the prediction ends. Uh, as you have Flowers, Junzo, and Travesty, I think you, I, th I would agree with your assessment. I think that they lack damage um, on Team Dragons over there. I think Tuvala Tims probably has this. They have enough damage uh, unless Trav can find a really good pick on that Awakening Mystic. Uh, I think it's going to be a little tough, but I mean, Junzo on the Guardian might be able to shell out a little bit more damage. Maybe they have some gear to, to, to trade in here. Who knows? Um, as we come into the very first match of our Losers Bracket for today, the gates are down. As we come in, we see the Flowers POV on that Draconia. Looking respectful as always. Look how cool that it's a it's no wonder that people love that class so much. I mean, just look at the block, bro. It's just, you literally pull a dragon's wing around your body. How cool is that? All right, the gates open and away we go. Junzo actually getting really aggressive uh, on the, the Awakening Guardian. Uh, he does like to be in the middle of everything to get that passive stacking. Flower, oh, get Flower script gets a grab right away. Uh, not able to capitalize too much on it, though, because his team just takes so much damage. Junzo goes down to 10% basically immediately. Uh, Flower's going down to 40% himself as he flies around trying to stay with his team here. You see them staying in position. Uh, that communication, very, very important there. Junzo can iframe for days on that Awakening Guardian, but gets CC'd by Style, and then Style gets styled on by Flowers. Oh, my goodness. That follow-up was crazy. It was just one into the next one right there, and Flower shows him what's up uh, as that basically that C with CC was rendered null and void. Junso gets really low. Flowers dies from standing. Not enough gear yet, my son. Uh, as Junso throwing out as much damage as he can, gets the CC down here, doing his best to try to kill Dragon Drop there, but just not enough as Rujinx, just a terror of damage on that succession Wusa right there. Ooh, misses the Awakening Grab uh, on that Guardian. It is tough to land. It's very, very slow uh, and tough to actually uh, aim properly there. But he is landing that Guardian passive on everyone. Everyone just nice and slowed right now. Travesty doing his best uh, to throw out what... <laughs> What CC he can here, but they're both actually getting uh, pretty low here in this 2v3. Oh, Junso gets a good grab, but he's the only damage. So hopefully he's got it here. Does Junso have the damage? No, Trav might die too. They actually do get a kill onto Rujinx. Junso down at 1% health, lingering his iframes as much as he can. It is a 2v2. They're scrambling to try to get health back right now. Junso trying to buy as much time as he can. Trav trying to come in and help him on that DP set. They they bring it back right now. Trav has a DP set on. He should be just fine. I'm not sure they have the damage to actually kill Travesty anymore. And now Junso actually getting his health back on this Guardian. Is this the turn of the century or what right now? As both teams trading CCs back and forth, Trav is on the ground. Forces a V. 45 seconds left on the clock means HP timers are down at 50. But Junso goes down while Trav is in V. And that is tragic. And as they battled it back from a 3v2 and now trav doesn't have the damage to actually make it happen johnny tragedy strikes it was i i wasn't sure what was going to happen i saw um uh styles with the grab on travesty towards the gate and i was sitting there thinking i'm like okay this is junzo's turn all he's got to do is just hit them in the back and deal as much damage as possible he did the shift f trying to uh find a CC, went right into God Incinerator, I believe immediately afterwards, and then tried to use another skill. And I didn't quite catch what the skill was, but it was unprotected or it was a forward guard and immediately got CC'd. And the clutch didn't happen because of it, unfortunately, for uh, Team Dragons here. Yo, big shout out to Zethian for that monster raid, man. You're an absolute unit. Awakening Sage Specimen, we're in the loser's bracket here. So the loser gets knocked out of the tournament. CTG Butterfly stepping through uh, as Dragon seems to be having a tough time pulling Styles this on one back. 
Oh, Styles is on the ground. There's mob ball soccer in the middle of the arena as everyone just piles damage in. CTG does get CC'd on the Wusa. V's backward. Flowers doing his best to trade around. Lots of iframes on the Awakening Draconia. Again, the class has absolutely no downsides. So he can just bail himself out. Good grab right there um, to follow up and get that re-CC. Does he have the damage to finish drag and drop? Not quite. He's down at 1%. I can't believe he's still in the middle of everyone. Finally does go down. And it is a 2v3. Now, Dragons on top of this one look like they are going to battle this one back in round two. They're actually waiting for cooldowns right now. They know how sweaty this is. If they lose this match, they are out of the tournament. So they're actually waiting for cooldowns right now. They're waiting for their class bus, which they used in the first round of the tournament. And now it's just CTG all by himself. They can get 1v3 by CTG. I would not... Uh, I would not not discount that man. It's the best large scale player probably in the entire world. If anyone was gonna 1v3, it would be him. So they need to make sure they stay protected. He can come out of nowhere and make it happen. He certainly has the gear. Flowers is getting kind of low. He knows who he needs to focus here. Flowers is a sweep the leg situation. Uh, as Travis, he's just keeping him on the ground too, making sure he's slowed and CC'd as much as possible. That's what is good about Awakening Mystic. Uh, is that you're constantly using it's such it's so good in this position where you're already up like this as the awakening mystic can basically just run at the opponent keep them slowed keep them cc'd keep them occupied um as the match continues to move on ctg doesn't have a v the reason he's waiting right now is he's waiting for the one minute mark which we just hit hp bars are now capped at 50 percent he can basically kill someone with segunja plum at this point and just one shot them from behind so we're all eyes on CTG as we go into this one. You see, Junzo is in block with his back to the wall. Chastity belt is tight as can be on that Awakening Guardian right now. He is not risking anything. Standing in forward guarded super armor with his back to a wall. Not a chance. Uh, CTG doing his best uh, to try to get behind someone, but... 20 seconds left on the clock. I'm not sure that he can actually make it happen. You can see how much damage he actually did to Junzo in one shot. To, oh my goodness. CTG down at 10% health. 13 seconds left on the clock. Finds Travesty. Oh my goodness. Three CC forcing a V. Flowers is really low. What is going on? Oh my goodness. Down at five seconds. There's no way he pulls this out, right? Say Gunja. Junzo gets down to 1%. Oh my goodness. But see, that's why they were playing it so safe. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> He's that's so what good. I mean. That's you got to be careful with the succession Musa, especially with a good and geared player. That is travesty on the awakening mystic. I, you know, who knows how much evasion and uh, DP he has on that thing. Still getting chunked by the sock Wusa. You can't let your guard down for a minute, just like you were saying. You got to be careful, um, especially when that HP drops. That's when that class really becomes a menace as we go into round three absolutely yeah it's gates up and away we go here loser of this round is knocked out of the tournament uh and loses the chance at the biggest prize pool in black desert history junzo getting very low on health but honestly that's honestly almost his plan trav actually got <gasps> trav Ooh. has to v takes so much damage he's got a dp set on but you wouldn't even know it um has to v on that awakening mystic barely gets out of there alive junzo's plan here is to take a lot of damage and then just kite around forever with the guardian with the deceptive amount of iframes that awakening guardian actually contains within her kit throwing out all of those slows doing his best in the middle of the arena here as trav kind of recovers uh, a little bit here dragons is taking the worst of these trades right now as junzo moves in again trying to keep that slow down on everyone oh my goodness styles on the ground taking a lot of damage doesn't it does actually manage to get the v off uh gets to safety right now tensions are high down at 80 percent capped hp bars now style down at 20 percent trav down at 20 with him junso also down at 30 percent everyone's getting very very low right now and help and uh, we're running out of v's as well johnny i'm not sure that they're gonna be able to hold on much longer in the middle of the arena here trav doing his best to try to slow everyone junso there as well basically keeping max slows on the opponents basically at all times here 
No one getting a CC. Six players throwing skills all over the place. Not one CC landing. Everyone trading to the best of their ability. A minute and 20 left on the clock. HP bars are about to tick down. Styles can't seem to get his health bar back, which is crazy for an Awakening Draconia. And never mind, he used his skill. He's totally fine. Junzo down at 50%, doing his best to try to base. Oh no! From standing down goes Junso and disaster strikes for this team right here. He is dead and oh, wait, wait. wait. Double trade. Wait. Yeah. Junso died, but the other two died on the back foot of it. What just happened? Dragons flips it back around. Junso dead, but they take the match anyway, boys. What? I don't think I have to see it in instant replay. I actually like I actually was like, wait, who just died? Wait, who? Yeah, I don't what? think anyone was expecting that. That that was crazy. Hold on, I got the instant replay. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so Junso goes down right here. He dies instantly. Then what happens to the remaining people here? It's just a quick trade. It's a quick trade back, and then suddenly it's a 1v2. Unbelievable. Absolutely wombo comboed. Way to bring that back. Nail-bitingly close match right there. Dragons moving on to the rest of this tournament. Johnny, that was crazy, man. That... I mean, it, as soon as Junzo went down, I think a lot of people were like, okay, you know, like, That's it. Dragons yeah, yeah. is going to lose this here. And then all of a sudden, just a devastating amount of damage was just dropped on top of two Violet Timmy's heads. And maybe the, the name is a little bit too um, real for it, but they just, they disappeared into the immediate CC with the other Draconia really low, just finished them off into the 2v1. And that's one of the situations, like... Even if you think you have it in the bag, you have to continue to pay attention. You can't just let it fall through your hands like that. Um, so, yeah. wow, what a wild end to yeah, the, I know. the first loser bracket match. Absolutely crazy. And as we move forward here, we have Stins Steakhouse versus Mink Miscreants. Let's take a look at these teams here. All right, Stins Steakhouse. Again, this is Pastor Pete, Details, and Dabin. Uh, in this one and they didn't do super well in the first round details screaming for a heal uh from pastor pete there so hopefully pete turns on the juice on that valkyrie in this one um do you think that this team has what it takes here johnny uh the steakhouse i so going into the the first match they fought um against uh sniffa i believe yes. uh i I, I was kind of rooting for him. I was thinking that they're going to be the team. We have Pastor Pete on the Awakening Valkyrie. We've talked about it over and over, the class. Uh, details on Suck Wiz, the best Suck Wiz in the game. Again, Suck Wiz, a very good team or very good class. And Davin on the Succession, Wusa, a very good player on a very good class, as we just saw uh, in the last match. And they just didn't have it together, it felt like. It, it like something was in shambles. Something wasn't right. Um, somebody added... Uh, sugar and set of salt to the recipe and that's not what they needed uh, against miscreants as well oh, miscreants let's look was at this. kind of let's like the, the opposite also. of what we were expecting we thought that they were going to get dumpstered and they barely lost arguably to suna crashing mid-match in round two right on um, yeah no we have miscreants right here enza retrospect and suna awakening ninja suck nova suck musa uh on this one uh, I'm not sure. Um, gosh, I'm not sure who wins this, man. You have the first from the best in class trials ninja, top 10 AOS, top 100 AOS. Suna is unironically like the weak link on a suck Musa. That's a lot of damage, uh, right? They have a pretty clean team composition, and Racho showed in the first one he's ready to be focused. Yeah, I mean, we saw in round one of their of their first match where uh, they were just trying to dump damage on top of Ratro, and Suna would come in and just blast people to oblivion. So maybe we'll see it again versus this um, this other team, the Steakhouse team. I think Suna, if he wants to, is going to have a really, really good shot at trying to rush down details and blow him up again. He might even have enough damage that if details are somewhat busy um, by Enza, uh, that he might be able to just even kill pete on the valkyrie 
Um, so I think the big thing that they need to look for is, da is uh, dabbing on the Sakwusa. Those clouds are going to CC you. You have to be careful those AoEs, especially as a succession uh, Musa. Yeah, absolutely insane. It does look like the match is ready. So we're going to move to the versus screen here. Make sure you guys get your predictions in. There we go. Miss Grands versus Stin Steakhouse. Predictions, Johnny. What do you think, man? I kind of want to give it to the underdog this time. I kind of want to see Miscreants come out with this thing. I, I I think it's I think this is a coin flip either way. I think if Steakhouse synergizes really well together, they have it in the bag. But after how they performed in the first match, they can't do that again. If they do anything like that again, I think Miscreants is just going to take it and run. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, the gates are down. Uh, it looks like the audience thinks that Miscreants is going to win. 75% of the audience thinks it's on Miscreants. Let's see here as we see details on the succession Wusa. That's gates up. And away we go on this one. There's the speed spell. Oh my oh. goodness, details! Caught immediately, Insta says, nope. That's all right, details just uh, I have too much gear for you anyway. And gets out of it, but oh my goodness, that was almost a very explosive start to the round right there. And details is locked in now, boys, as they say. Holy moly. Uh, Pastor Pete doing his best. Um, honestly, I it had to be the Valkyrie that bailed him out of that situation. There's just no way. Um, as Pastor is playing right next to Details, so just allowing Details to throw that range damage. Enza just taking it right there on the trade. Has to back out uh, of that one. Looks like he V'd. Pastor beat gets low, but heals himself right back up. Rastros back down at about 70% uh, HP. And again, Suck Nova not known for its regenerative capabilities, so his health bar basically stays where it is, uh, is the problem with that class right now. Unless he potions himself back to full healthier details this uncatchable monster on the succession staff it feels like uh as he runs around honestly got cc'd right out of the gate what am i saying uh earthquake evade right there into aqua jail just making sure he doesn't get oh my goodness look at all the damage he is throwing out right here tps to the other side of the fight very good wizards do that uh because everyone starts facing one way at the start of the fight you tp to the other side and boom look at all that back attack damage uh that you kind of roll in right there look at that hugging each other like they haven't even cut the umbilical cord yet is pastor pete and details here pastor doing a much better job of playing around his teammates this time around uh Davin, uh throwing out storm's call on that wusa not gonna quite find anything there uh he has as a v Yep, Enza's on the ground, gets caught by uh, Bolide from Details right there. Uh, as, again, look at the damage. Shell out from Details, gets CC'd. Beautiful catch right there by Suna on the succession. Musa uh, to catch Details, finds the sniff. Oh, but he V'd right on the edge right there. That was perfect V'ing right there as he just got away from it. We did lose two people. We lost Suna and we lost Davin. It's a 2v2 now. Valkyrie succession wizard versus succession Valkyrie succession. And Musa, and normally you would say that the normally you would say the Valkyrie and the Wizard here, Johnny. But like so much damage and health bars are capped at fifty percent. Suck Musa can just one shot somebody. Details doing his best to keep uh, keep Pete his on distance. The okay, Pete's on the uh, Pete's on the ground, but Ratro's the one down at twenty percent right now. As Details is just shelling damage uh, into that frontal guard, uh, doing the best he can. Twenty six seconds left on the clock. Is this gonna come down to HP here, um, or are we gonna see a clear victor? TP away, fireball explosion. There's a Meteor right there. Not going to get through Retro's Frontal Guard, though, sadly. And Pete is going to go down. Details trades one back. Now it's 1v1. 10 seconds on the clock. Retro, no regeneration. Details knows he's got it. Mass DP's away. Trying to get the heal off. Retro's trying. There it is. Details takes it home. Oh, my goodness. What a finish, Johnny. Holy moly. Oh, like... I don't, I don't, the Woosa, dabbing on the Woosa getting traded out um, when Enza was on the ground wasn't what I was expecting to happen. Pete was also on the floor right next to him. Suna dumping all of his damage onto Dabin, instantly killing him. Pete gets back up, the match resets into a 2v2, um, and they have to be careful. As soon as that 50% hits, uh, Details is becoming such a monster with that wizard damage. Right, absolutely. The gates go up. Oh. 
and away we go and detach me there pastor pete gotta get details healthy once again here uh as we come into this one keeping himself uh topped off as well there uh, Ratro is already down at 40%. That does not abode well for Miscreants here uh, as he chooses to disengage uh, on the back side of this. Uh, it's using Sanctitas de Ancelar, that, that jump right there on Valkyrie uh, to try to close the distance. And again, he's just trying to track details. Ooh, gets CC'd by the Gargoyle. Uh, but, oh my goodness, we lost somebody. It looks like Suno went down out of nowhere on the other side of it. Ratro thought he was the one in trouble, and now he definitely is. As he's at 35% in a 2v3, and Details is just on the hunt for more. Uh, down goes Suno. I apologize. It's the Kuno that died first there. Oh my goodness. Ratro actually tried to Nova Wall right there to keep himself in the corner, but Details wasn't having any of it. And it does look like that Stin Steakhouse is going to clean it up. It, it was one of the situations, as soon as Ensa died, it went down to being Ratro and Suna again. And when you have all three on the opposite side alive, you have that Wusa dumping the damage. Suna was just obliterated trying to run away, right? He threw like a skill or two, turned around and tried to run. Um, uh, the Wusa doing, I believe it's what, Butterfly Step is the big movement skill, doing Butterfly to catch yeah. up to Suna, instantly making him into dust. And then uh, Details as well, just applying all of that speed spell and heals and extra range damage. It's one of those gross compositions you got to be careful about. It's it's one of those things, with, again, like I talked about earlier, with the way the game is right now, if you are DR and you are melee, you have to be careful. You can't, even if you're a rat, you can't just, you know, think that range isn't gonna be an issue. They will kill you standing. They will kill you instant. Now, you know, that that's its own argument and that's its own situation entirely, but you have to just keep that in count the entire time you play. If you're not in heavy iframe class, you're gonna die standing. Yeah, um, and we are moving right along to the next match here. Ventus is trash, no surprise, versus Untamed. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, where is my... There they are. There we go. This is Ventus is trash. This is Greed's image and Emma Watson. Suck Tamer, Awakening Valk, Awakening Megu. Didn't have the best showing um, uh, in the first round of it. Uh, but honestly, Johnny, how do you feel about it in the loser's bracket? In the loser's bracket? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say too much. I, I wasn't really impressed by, uh, what they were able to accomplish with the team composition. I think Emma Watson would have been better on the Awakening Tamer. Um, I don't think the Awakening Mangu is a play. Um, the Awakening Valkyrie is great, um, but we need Image to be able to show off on it. And I don't know if it was just the last team's comp. Uh, that did really well into them, or if it was a matter of um, personal play. But this team, this was a little bit, this is a little bit different of a team, and I don't think it played off this time. Yeah, well, I think that they actually might have the upper hand going up against this untamed team. Let's take a look at them. There we go. Uh, untamed King James IRL, uh, Bingy, and Hero play. Um, Honestly, in that first round of it, I think King James might just be a little inexperienced on this Suck Sage. He was going to bring Awakening Striker. I'm not sure why he didn't stick with that. Um, I don't have uh, a Valkyrie, which I think puts them at a little bit of a disadvantage here. And, and then the Suck Tamer, I think, is just so, so good uh, with their composition. I'm not sure. Johnny, how do you feel about this? I think Untamed has the advantage here um, from a... Uh, team composition. I think the Awaken Ninja is good. I think Awaken and uh, Zerk is also pretty good. And Succession Ninja, or sorry, Succession Sage is good. I, I think you were right with King James being kind of not rusty, but just he wasn't warmed up. Like the, the gears were not oiled enough or something. He wasn't running um, well. So hopefully he got a little bit of practice or did a little bit of um, just button pressing in Battle of Arena in between the matches because they had have they have had some time. I cannot speak today, um, but I, I want to give it to this team. I, I think it's going to be a rough fight. Um, I think it's probably going to be like 60, 40, 70, 30, um, but I, I want to give it to the untamed team. Yeah, uh, I I also want to get, I, I, I don't know. Let's look at the versus screen real quick. All right, I think uh, Ventus is trash, no surprise. I think they got this, but we'll see. I have faith. 
uh, in Emma Watson's Tamer. Uh, it is a Succession Tamer. It's not an Awakening Tamer. Um, image on the Awakening Valkyrie and then greets the Awakening Megu didn't look super impactful in the first match. So I'm a little concerned about greets on the Awakening Megu, but if he pops off, I think that they absolutely could take this. Make sure you guys get your predictions in. That is going to close in a moment here as we are about to start this match. I'm, I'm ready to see him on the uh, Awakening Megu. I want to see it pop off. I want to see it do something. I want to see what that class is capable of. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. All right. It's... I I don't oh, know. This, this could go 50-50. It, it's you about it's, it's about 50 50 yeah like i think it like i'm just looking at the compositions and again he's not on awakening striker he's on a suck um sage that was changed last minute as well um i think that bingy on the awakening zerker i don't know what it is awakening zerker is such a strong class until we actually have to watch it play and then we're like yeah it's the weak link right mm -hmm. um because it just relies so much on frontal guards from range you have to be so good at positioning um, so we're going to see if uh, Bingy can actually pull that out for Untamed here as we go to live. There we go. And we are about to get into this one. King James IRL hero play and Bingy on this one. Not as much beef riding on the line as their first match for sure. But the gates are up and away we go. All eyes on Bingy. We'll see if he doesn't get caught here uh, as he starts to throw range damage here. Oh my goodness, jumps right in. Uh, and that awakening Megu from Greeds is all over him. Oh, backs off very quickly though again uh, as Bingy doing a good job of keeping his distance. Can't really be in the middle uh, of everything here. Really wants to abuse uh, that range pressure. Again, there's Greeds trying to jump on him, but he can't get too close to Bingy because he's got grabs uh, available basically at all points in time. Greens is on the ground, taking a lot of damage. Big E doing a good job getting that Titan blow in there. Now he's on the ground. Oh my goodness. Not enough damage traded back though um, for that Ventus team over there. And Bingy is able to stand up and run away without much pressure. Does look like that Emma Watson on that Tamer eye framing away as well. Everybody trying to keep themselves safe uh, at the moment here. The Sage does go down and that's what I mean inexperience on that sage from king james he is gonna go down here and now it's just bingy and hero play against the world and bingy is working him oh my goodness drops greens to the ground and down he goes it's a 2v2 turning it back now bingy does get cc'd and hero play is the engager here bingy is sitting off on the side and no one is pressuring him at all i strictly think that's a mistake and he's just throwing damage in on the side of the fight, this is where Awakening Zerker just looks so, so good here in this 2v2. Uh, the compositional diff here, it's a Succession, or I'm sorry, Awakening Ninja and an Awakening Berserker versus a Succession Tamer uh, and an Awakening Valkyrie. I don't, Johnny, who do you think wins this? I, I want to give it to the uh, Zerker and oh, the Ninja here. Hold that oh, thought! Special oh, the double CC! Quick double CC and down they go. And just as we think it's gonna it's gonna cool off for a couple minutes and they're gonna wait. Nope, they just take it home. Untamed managed to take the round despite losing King James first in that one. Oh my goodness. I mean, the the timing on the question, you asked who I thought, and I said the Zerker and the Ninja, and as soon as I said that, double CC happened. So we got the reverse caster curse on that one. But it's it's one of those things of when the Zerker knows what they're doing, they can apply an absolute amount or an absolutely ridiculous amount of range damage. So I it, we just have to keep seeing if they can keep the pressure on Bingy. I think that's the big one they have to look for. Yeah, right. Oh, oh my goodness, we have a CC. Greeds is on the ground. The Awakening Megu just doesn't look super good right now. Um, out of Greeds right there. Bingy taking a bad trade as well. And Emma Watson on that Tamer, but Tamer has so many iframes. She is just never going to die uh in those iframes it's absolutely crazy down at 50 percent though bingy does get a grab uh image does stand up uh gets that heal off and everybody's topped off again that's the advantage of having an awakening valkyrie right that um oh king james takes a stiffen right there oh does manage to force the v right there emma watson with a good catch on the suck tamer right there james does v to safety no he gets sniffed out by the megu there's greens coming in big damage in spirit forge there's the awakening megu we were waiting for right there cleans him up 
with the fox claw on that one and now it's bingy trying to do his best to try to disengage this a little bit or no he just wants to trade image on the ground gets rolls back to his feet right now it's emma watson um it's honestly the ventus team still has all three. Oh my goodness they took down another one never mind i every time i say something they immediately die it's immediately a 2v2 once again these teams are so closely matched um as we lost to emma watson on the tamer there and it is a 2v2 once again bingy rolls back to his feet on the awakening berserker trying to kite back now just throwing damage in can't get it down though because he is slowed right now look how slow he's running uh across the arena right there trying to throw out his own return slows uh as he pounds the ground there that is a big movement speed and can Cast attack speed slow. Oh, clean grab, grab on, on image. Yeah, on the image. That's going to be the damage. Greeds is just cleaning them up. Look at that menace coming in there to try to clean that up. You see the Megu come from off screen to do that damage. Uh, Hero Play coming in to try to get a CC for Bingy, who's honestly been putting in work right now. Hero Play gets a good grab on the image. Image is going to die, but Bingy's on the ground. Does the Megu have the damage? Double CC. No, never mind. It's never mind. It was him that got C. I thought he got Hero Play too. My bad. And that is going to be 2 0 for Untamed. You were absolutely right. I mean, even then, the last match, it was really close. It was a bit back and forth. Bingy was monstrously tanky or was just not getting hit by a few of the abilities just able to survive a lot of the the situations more than he should have in honesty um bingy having an absolute grab early on on image full extending the uh, animation for it too and had no follow-up damage from his team i was sitting there kind of clenching a little bit waiting for somebody to do the follow-up damage on top of image to kill him or even just to kill uh bingy himself because that's the duality of those extended grabs of if you grab somebody and you have no team damage to follow up but the enemy team is punishing you for getting that grab you might be the one who dies from it instead so they have to be careful with that they have to keep in mind of as soon as bingy gets that that grab he has to be calling as loud as he can in the discord that they're probably in uh communicating back and forth like i have a grab i have a grab i have a grab i need help and then the team just has to dump whatever they can protect it or not on top of it to try to secure the kill otherwise you might end up having just your own teammate dying instead yeah absolutely uh we're gonna look ahead to our next match here which is getting ready to go here it is gonna be actually this looks really close of the console boys yeah, versus yellow squadron console boys versus yellow squadron console boys actually came out so strong in their foot no one even thought that they could take a round off of lazy noodles but they did indeed and almost won that match and now they're up against yellow squadron here remember console boys guys pinks is actually playing with the controller all three of these players came from console um and are now in this tournament here uh combat on the awakening wizard mahiro on the succession kuno and then uh, Pinks on the succession Mewa. Suck Mewa actually looking so good in this tournament, Johnny. I mean, the succession Mewa was one of the classes coming into it, and even in the previous ones that I said, I thought would be the weak link, but in the, the succession Mewa matches we have seen, it has a ridiculous amount of damage, even after some of the nerfs. Um, I thought that after they kind of nerfed the shotgun uh, range arrow skill, I'm not quite sure what it's called, that it was going to be a lot, very lackluster, but um, the Maywall players in the tournament like Akari and Ash or uh, Akari and uh, Pinks have uh, shown that it can still it can still play the game um, um, Yeah, let's look over at yellow Yellow squadron here region Jupiter hunter blue and yellow heart remember from our first match of the day um, the problem here was Hunter Blue just basically getting one shot on the Awakening Ranger. So he's got to make sure he is an expert at the class, but he's got to make sure he doesn't get caught. He's up against a Succession Mewa. That's got to be a little bit scary. Right, Johnny? In the, yeah. In the, the last match, it might have been a little bit different. It was Pig and it was Meth just running him down. Uh, again, Pig just knuckles full on the floor, just leaving scratches in the, in the arena as he's chasing down Hunter Blue putting full pressure with LaFonda. I don't know if um, console boys will be able to put that same pressure having the um, combat on the Awakening Wizard, I believe, not Succession. Um, but the, the Maywa and the Kuno might be able to keep that pressure up. So I, I think Hunter Blue is going to be the same target again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, we'll see here. We're going to move over to the Versus screen. Make sure you guys get your predictions in. All right.
right, console boys versus yellow squadron. Johnny, let's do our predictions. I think yellow squadron, pro I gotta go with the homies on this one. I gotta I, go. I think it's a coin flip. I think it's a hard coin flip. Yeah, like I think it could go. I, if I'm if I'm being honest, I think console boys actually has an advantage here, despite what the um, audience might think. Uh, let's see what the audience thinks. No, 75% of people think that console boys has what it takes to take this one. And I'll be honest with him. I kind of agree with them compositionally and based on that played in the first round. I think that console boys might just take this, but I'm rooting for both teams. Oh my goodness. Make sure you get your predictions in. We are going to live here. I think if uh, combat is actually wait, 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 on the succession. Wait. Oh. Okay, now go. I think if combat is actually on the succession wizard, that's going to be the big thing with it, is if the other two can keep the W key pressure on top of Hunter Blue like we saw in Yellow Squadron's first match, then that wizard just needs to apply the damage and it should be a, a fairly easy win for him. Absolutely. And we got uh, pinks going through the middle of the arena here. Oh my goodness, yellow hearts already on the ground. That is not good. Big damage coming down from the console boys down at 40%, but manages to get back to her feet. Um, does recover the situation. Region Jupiter doing his best to be a distraction on that awakening striker, looking for any sort of initiate or grab. And there's the grab, just like I said. There's the cleanup. Uh, the goodness gracious, that was a lot of damage coming in from yellow squadron right there. And Region is on the sniff, finds pinks in the sniff. That was so close by Regent right there. Combat PA'd him while he's on the ground. Clean save by Combat with the protected area to get Pinks back to his feet. And the console boys rally back. It is still 3v3. That was a tough situation, but they bailed him out of it. Regent on the hunt for the next CC here. Goes right back in. Looking for the Awakening Wizard. Isn't gonna find it. Pinks sees Regent on the ground. That's his opportunity. Big damage has to dash back on the Mewa. Regent says, no, 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 no. I'm, get I'm gonna catch you. Spiral cannons forward doesn't actually find anything though as we move right back on in with the fight just keeps resetting My hero's down at 20% on that kuno for console boys there and yellow hearts gargoyle is so good against kuno Catching and finding those gaps. The pets don't care about your gas. They're basically a honey badger. It's absolutely insane Region Jupiter finds the grab on the combat. He is taking a lot of damage does get the V off though And they are on the sniff for him Pinks there. Oh, no, never mind. He, he just TP'd away. We're fine. Combat heals himself back to full health. The console boys reset one more time. Regent Jupiter gets caught. Clean catch by the Mewa right there. And Regent has to be on that one. God, Pinks is just playing out of his mind on this. And he's on a controller. Finds Regent in the corner. Does he have the damage? He does find it right there. And it looks like it is now a 2v3. Hunter Blue and Yellow Heart. That is the Awakening Ring succession nova into three of the console boys can they make it happen 50 seconds left on the clock yellow hearts on the ground taking a lot of damage does have to be on that one hunter doing his best but i'm not sure that awakening ranger can act oh my goodness he's so low on health he's trying to isolate the 1v1 can he win the 1v1 before yellow heart loses this 2v1 uh, Yellow Heart is on the ground, gonna go down right there. It looks like Hunter did win the 1v1 though, and Hunter Blue comes back. Now it's just a 1v2. That's what I said. Hunter was trying to isolate that 1v1, and now it's Hunter Blue flipping back on that Ranger, trying to catch his opponent, finds combat. Combat has to be on that one. They actually are running from him. He actually is unironically 1v3 against these people right now, and Pinks is not having any of it. Six seconds left on the clock and hunter just can't get on top of them very tragic but oh my goodness hunter is an animal johnny holy moly awakening ranger being one of those classes that if you if you fight it in a 1v1 or some sort of small scale it can be very scary it's a little bit weaker in the group combat just because of the way that some of its damage uh, works um but if you watch like flannels in previous tournaments he doesn't tend to do a lot of the the group damage a lot of what he's looking for is a lot of fish ccs a lot of range ccs it has i can't remember the name of the skill but it basically has a ranged um kd that it can use and it's one of the very important uh skills on the class that it needs to use in these group settings to just try to fish as much cc as possible all right hunter blue kiting through the middle no one able to really focus him here yellow heart taking a good amount of damage oh my goodness that sucked nova oh my goodness goes in tries for the grab is hunter trying to back up regent right there but his teammates are just taking too much damage too quickly i don't think he can he has the pacing here. Good grab down onto Mahiro, but then Hunter gets CC'd and has to V on that one. Oh no, he just can't find the opportunities uh, that he needs. Stay 
Briefly comes out of V. Pinks does not catch him. He does iframe. Pinks was sniffing for it, but not able to find it right there. Uh, Hunter iframing through, looking for any other grab. He's trying to back up Regent Jupiter right there, uh, waiting for Pinks to try to get close to him because he's just going to grab him. I'm just, I'm just gonna grab him, he says. Yellow Heart kiting back, trying to get away on that suck. Nova constantly low on health. Yellow Heart on the ground, but did... She is in the corner right there. See if Hunter can bail her out. Not quite. Regent trying to peel for her, but it's just not there. And it is a 2v3. Once again, Hunter isolated for a 1v1 right now. Um, trying to find this Kuno. Uh, trying to win the 1v1 before Regent loses the 2v1. Or the 1v2. Over here, Regent is on the ground. Hunter biding his time, waiting to get in there. I think he does need to go help his teammate right there, though, as Regent's in a lot of trouble, running for his life. Hunter finds a CC. Not able to follow it up, though. Mahiro stands back up. Hunter has to high frame back. Neck just can't get back onto him, and Regent is dead. Hunter's in a 1v3 again. Can he make it happen? The console boys look just so strong. Down, but never out. Are, is that console community? Oh, my goodness. Standing tall. Down goes Hunter. Oh my goodness, Johnny. I, I I think it looked a lot closer in a lot of the scenarios than it should have been. And I think part of that is because of um, blunders that the yellow squad just did over and over. Uh, there were several times where console boys had people on the ground that should have died. This, this Maywa was on the ground two or three times. Combat was on the ground a couple times. And there was just no follow-up damage. And by Yellow Squad, there was one of the times where one of the, uh, the console boys were put on the ground by Regent to a feet, like a couple feet away from uh, Hunter Blue, and Hunter was just kiting away, and it's like, you gotta, you gotta do something. Even if you're just throwing a little bit of damage with some SAs or forward guards, if all three of you do that, then you're gonna be able to kill the opponent, especially when they're squishy like a Suck Caster or a Suck Maywa. And I think a lot of that is just experience in the tournament setting or in the yeah. small scale setting. Well, um, the, let's, the UCF players on here have been playing in tournaments for years. Let's take a look at let's take a look at the instant replay here. This is one of the critical moments from the last match. This is so insane right here. Pinks gets caught. Um, the console boys seem like they're on the back foot of this one. Gets caught, has to be. You think that this is over, goes to the corner, but watch the caster come in from off screen here. He think he's dead. Regent finds the sniff, dares combat, gets the PA off just in time, and gets Pinks to safety. Absolutely nuts. So clean. I mean, the console boys just looked so good with it uh, on that one. Uh, and so, honestly, Johnny, we do need to move uh, forward to our next match here. We have Team No Wusa, Drac, and Valk Abusers against Team Dragons. Let's take a look at these team matchups. All right, Team No Wusa Drac Valk Abusers is Chief, Azrelia, and Lei Fonda. What do you think the weak points of this composition are here, Johnny? I, I think Azrelia is the weakest point of the comp, and it's not because of skill. Um, he's one of the best lawns in the game. He's very, very good in the class. He's shown that previously. They took their first, they were in the first match against the Yellow Squad, who we just saw. Um, they were the one who sent him to the loser's bracket, but. It's just the thing of Sucklon's uh, best at large scale, and this is a small scale scenario. La Fonda is newer on the Awakening Dracon or on the Awakening Corsair, normally playing Succession, but they've shown that they've been doing pretty decent on it. Chief, being an absolute monster on Awakened Striker, um, is probably going to be the the key component to this. And as long as he can uh, keep the pressure on whoever he needs to or applies the the grabs and the CCs, I think they're going to be just fine. All right, right on. Uh, and then we move over to their opponents here, which is Dragons. Remember, Dragons was 2v3 and brought their final round of their last match back. They were a hair's breadth away from elimination uh, and now have to go out of the frying pan into the fryer. Um, on this one flowers junzo and travesty we were talking about the lack of damage on this composition but i think that they just played around each other so well johnny i think in the last match that they did they played a lot better with each other maybe it was just the initial uh ice in the veins from starting in the tournament in their match one but getting into the the losers bracket they're doing a lot better they're starting to heat up 
at the end there, uh, Junzo dying uh, in a trade for two was very much worth it as uh, Flowers, I believe it was, was able to just pump an absolutely devastating amount of damage in the back of his opponents, making it into a 2v1 and closing off the match itself. Yeah. I want to lean towards uh, Team No Wusa Drac and Valk Abusers. Oh, I want let's to go to Versus 70. first. Hold on. Go to Versus, all right. Yeah. All right, yeah, so you're leaning towards a No Wusa Drac Valk Abusers. What did you think? 60 40, 70 30? I'm thinking 70 30. I'm giving a little bit more on uh, No Wusa Drac or Valk. I. Gosh, this is so tough, but I really do think that they have the advantage. I think it's 70-30. Woos and Team No Woosa Drac Valk might just take this. Leifana, Israelia, and Chief are just so good together. I, I think Chief is just going to run at Jun Junzo. I think he's just going to run him down and try to get a grip on him. While the Guardian does have a lot of iframes, I think if you know that class well enough, you're going to be able to grab it. Like, especially in the Shift F or in uh, God Incinerator, the Shift Q, you're just going to be able to, you, you just grab it for free. Yeah. I mean, it. we'll see. You know, you say that, but it's Junso. You know what True. I mean? It's it's mm -hmm. kind of a tough situation. As we go to live here, make sure you get your bets in as it's going to close in a moment. All right, and we are about to start this one. Loser is out of the biggest tournament in Black Desert history. Winner moves on to continue to fight another day. The gates are up, and away we go. Israelia takes off on that succession line, looking for a pick. Leifana skates in on the Awakening Corsair here. Okay, oh my goodness, gets CC'd on the ground, taking a lot of damage, trying to hold on to his V, though. Very expertly holds on to... Never mind, has to V anyway. Just as I'm about to praise him, has to back up there. It looked like it did bug maybe a little bit for him. Maybe it put his weapons away, I'm not sure, but he did have to V there. And Leifonda's on the back foot. He just can't get his health back. He's really struggling right now. Uh, as he's at down at 10% and Junzo is hunting him and he has caught him. Look at that. Down goes Leifonda. Oh my goodness. Junzo just would not let that Corsair breathe. Uh, over there and now it is a 2v3 you have chief um you have chief and Ezrelia awakening striker succession lawn into a three man matchup we've seen crazier things happen they absolutely could bring this back Ezrelia trying to catch people unawares attacking from the sky here uh not gonna quite find anything chief looking for a grab Ezrelia can't find anything abusing that z-axis oh my goodness found the cc onto chief junso actually forced to v though and Ezrelia has to get just to run as well he's up in the air flying around the arena above at 10 percent, but no one can do anything about it chief down at 10 percent um as well, still in a 2v3 here. No one managing to pick anyone off quite yet. HP bars will go down at the one minute mark to 50% here. Travesty doing his best uh, to try to get any amount of slows uh, or CC down on people on this DP Awakening Mystic here. Spiral Torpedo right there. Going to throw out the vacuum. Not going to find anything there. Or Dragon's Rip, rather. Uh, and they're more than happy to just wait, it looks like here, Johnny. A minute and 10 seconds on the clock, and Azrelia can't really find an engage. Chief goes in, gets put on the ground, but there's Azrelia on the backside. They do find Travesty, uh, but he's the TP mean they can't really kill him. Junzo's down at 50, uh, everyone's locked down at 50% now. And now it's really going to come down to Chief coming out of V here. Travesty did sniff him. He says, guys, look what I found, and keeps him CC'd in the corner until they're able to find it. Azrelia died off screen. That's going to be 1-0, Johnny. He's got to be careful on the Awakening Corsair. He can't get caught like that, especially by Junzo. Like, I know he's a really good player on that class, but you have to stay at range. You have to stay evasive. You can't get caught or ran down. Um, outside of the V, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to kite, of course, because you have that brief time of where you can't move or cast skills, but he's got to be careful. His goal is to stay safe, and his goal is to give supporting damage in CCs. All right, on, and the gates are up, and away we go as Relia hiding through the middle of the arena. On this lawn, look how graceful this playstyle looks on this class. Um... 
He's waiting for his teammate to tell him that there's actually a CC available. Flowers is on the ground, takes a lot of damage, almost dies, has to be. And you see Israeli is soaring through the air, looking for his opponent like a 747. Junzo at, down at 20%. Israeli says, don't worry, I've got that. Forces that V2. Flowers comes out of V, uh, and Israeli is on the hunt right there. Finds Junzo. That is not good. Can Junzo iframe his way out of it? Uh, they are putting a lot of pressure on him. Throws down the god incinerate. I'm framing his way around. Doing his best. That's what Junso does best. It's just keeps himself alive. And it's really against CC'd. Has to be away on that lawn right there. Leifonda doing a much better job staying alive this time around. Um, As he kites backwards here. No, Leifonda is putting a decent amount of damage down. The fight has reset somewhat. And a minute 45 on the clock here. Neither team... Oh. My goodness, it looked like the Draconian... Oh, Flowers just died out of nowhere. He did have to V earlier. So, like, that does make a lot of sense. I mean, he just doesn't quite have the gear. Junso uh, taking a lot of damage now as well, but they've won without without him in the past. We'll see if they could do it here as well. Leifonda, Innovation We Trust, gets knocked over and just stands there, says, you don't have the damage to kill me without Flowers here. Junzo getting really low. Leifonda gets stunned up again on the ground with Chief. And first time... As Junzo is doing as much damage as he can, but they just don't have it there. Uh, quite, they just don't quite have enough damage. Junzo is going to go down there. It does look like we are going to battle back. Team No Wusa, Drac, and Valk Abusers are going to pull a round back on this one. As Travesty is the only one left alive, and they don't show any interest in trying to kill him, Johnny. None at all. I mean, he's going to be so tanky with it. They might be stalling for time, get some abilities back up. Definitely showing that it's, you know, they're still within the realm of climbing the ranks or still within um, the, the tournament itself. These are the matches I like. I, I love these close 1v, like 1 to 1s, and it comes down the last round. Yeah. Uh, Trav looks like he, like, again, they're taking damage, and then they'll get away from him. And then they'll take damage, and then they'll get away from him. But they're waiting for their class buffs here. They do not want to get knocked out of this tournament. They know that they are one round loss away from being knocked out of this one. They played well in this round. They've got one more round to go. And basically, this just buys time for class buffs. So everyone's class buff should be off cooldown coming into the last and final round here. Trav, look how effective Trav is getting CCs, even when his team isn't present there. Uh, look how good that... Oh, he put on his... A Looked like he may have put on his AP gear there right at the end. But no, I guess not. He can't change gear. I guess that's just Awakening Mystic damage, as little as it is uh, coming out there. Even when you have 160 AP, uh, proccing the, the dragon can do a little bit of damage. And now we go into the third round of the match. This will be the decider on who stays in the tournament, whether it'll be Team No Drac, Usa, or Valkyrie, or Team Dragons. Um... <sighs> I don't know. I think going into this, I was I was favored uh, to team uh, WDAV. I still think I am, but I think it says 70-30. I'm 50-50 here. Maybe right. 60 30, or 60-40. Well, you see how much more effective the enemy composition is when the Corsair is actually alive, uh, Johnny. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, being alive makes you incredibly more impactful uh, in the fight. And Leifonda should be slippery on that Corsair as he uh, finds flowers right there. Uh, not actually gonna, neither of them, like, ships in the night just gonna pass each other, no CCs. Uh, going down, Flowers comes in, swoops in for the damage, Chief is on the ground, gets the re-CC, but does have to back up. They realize they're not gonna be able to get him, and they just back off, uh, of that one. Uh, has his sight set on Leifonda at the current moment. Oh, decides to change targets right there. Uh, this is how fast Awakening Draconia is played on the GOAT of Awakening Draconia. Um... Throwing out some damage right there. Does find the CC once again on the Chief, who takes too much damage and is forced to be Leifonda, which is going to put some pressure on Leifonda. Ooh, this Awakening Corsair gets the Flower CC. That's the V. Flowers knows he cannot survive Leifonda's damage. Chief is in the middle of everything. Is Flowers going to get sniffed out of V? No, Israelia tried to find it, though. Um, and now we're running lower on time here. People are losing Vs. Both teams are running out of get-out-of-jail-free cards. Uh, as we come down here, at the fight resets one last time, it looks like, before we re-engage. The next CC might just win the match. Uh, as we dive in here, Flowers looks for a grab. Doesn't quite find one. Uh, there's Chief with the grab on the Flowers. He doesn't have a V! Down he goes! And he is going to go down, but can they trade one back in quick succession? There's Chief as well. I don't 
think so. Flowers being dead means that I'm not sure that they can actually win this round, Johnny. It's tragic. Junso's on the ground, down at 20%. Lots of damage going down onto him. He is going to go down, and it's just travesty left alive. Team No Wusa, Drac, and Valk Abuser going to move on to the next round of this one, Johnny. And there is no stalling this time. They're just going to look for him and finish him off because they have the bag for this round anyway, or at least the loser's bracket. Right on. Okay. Holy moly. I right. love those kind of matches. Those are always my favorite where it's always crazy close. very close every time. Yep. Yeah, crazy close. The whole time goes to three rounds. Before we go forward, guys, I do want to point out that Perlibus is not sponsoring this tournament, but Invicta is. Invicta is a gaming optimi optimization service. You've probably heard of them. They are everywhere in our category. They help out basically every content creator in our category. They sponsor everybody, and they put up money for this tournament. If you guys want to run BDO in a more optimized way, you need to use Invicta. Uh, like, I, I trust them so much, I invested um in invicta these guys are units they built choices pc that thing is a monster they build do they do custom build pcs and they optimize no matter what game you're playing no matter what pc you have if you have a low-end pc you optimize with invicta you're getting the most out of your money if you have a high-end pc you optimize with invicta you get the most out of your money. It's just a win-win, guys. You can use codes blue squadron at checkout to get, I think, 20, 15, 20% off uh, at, um, at checkout. But uh, guys, we all love Invicta. They sponsor these tournaments, even when Pearl Abyss won't. Um, so absolutely check them out. Now, Johnny, let's look at this instant replay here. All right, so we have um, Flowers coming in here, and he does get caught here. This is what honestly gets them killed. I said the next CC wins. Flowers just eye framing around, doing his best, but Chief grabs him, and then Blayfonda's Awakening Corsair picks up that kill, and it's just downhill from there. Absolute tragedy. Um, Losing the Trakani is going to be rough in that kind of a matchup. Yeah, like abso absolutely tragic uh, on that one. But like, honestly, like Flowers, they did have a good run through the tournament. They won some, they lost some. Absolutely super close. And as we look ahead to the next round here, Johnny, it's Meta Humpers versus Stin Steakhouse. Let's break this down. All right, here's Meta Humpers right here. Yongi, MBI, and Babby. Um, do you think that they have what it takes? So if I remember correctly, Meta Humpers fought Go the Goats the last time and yeah, went one to two round, against them. They put the up a good one, yeah. fight. Yeah, and it was uh, fairly close. Yongi on the Awakened Draconia, MVI on Suck Sage, and Fabi showing off on the Succession Wizard. Um, I mean, I think it's a it's a pretty good composition. I think the Suck Sage is the weakest of the three just because of recent changes to the class. Um, if you know what it's, uh, it's kids about and stuff, you can punish it you can really, really punish it with grabs or damage. Um, I, I I think they're, I think it's a pretty decent team. I think even, I guess it's hard to say because in this kind of a tournament, even the loser's bracket is gonna be, is gonna be strong. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm ready to see what they can do against Steakhouse. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Let's take a look at them. All right, and this one is Pastor Pete, Details and Dabin. Honestly, this is like the situation before where we had Divios fighting Chief, and Chief was like, yeah, I'm the second best caster in North America. But then the <laughs> enemy team had Divios on it, and you're like, well, crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now we have Details, who is the best succession wizard in North America, and Fabi, who is admittedly a new player. He's only been playing for six months, but he actually gets almost as many kills as Details does, and Details has a lot more gear than he does. So, like... Fabi on the come up, but I think the detail still definitely has the edge in that matchup. But Fabi's definitely going to have his work cut out for him to pull his weight. Big crocs to fill, uh, as people like to say here. Uh, Pastor Pete on the Awakening Valkyrie and Dabin on the Suck Wu. So, who do you think the weak link is? I, I think in, in just recent matches, just from a, a skill perspective, it's going to be Pastor Pete on the Awakening Valkyrie. Uh, 
previously playing Zerker and other classes, it's a good player, but Awakening Valk is one of those classes that you have to press a lot of buttons and you have to know which ones to press. If you press the wrong one at any time, you can get heavily punished on it. And I think that's what we kind of seen in the past is that um, he's had some minor mistakes, which on that class result in huge consequences. Um, if he can correct some of those or keeps consistent and warmed up, I think Pete can uh, really be a, a big player for his team. Details and Davin being uh, very proficient players on their classes, so it's just uh, our last remaining thing of Pete cleaning up the the team. Yeah, let's go to the versus screen. It is ready. And we have three more matches for today, right? This yeah, one this and the is, next two? Yeah, there's, there's three more matches to go here um, as we come into this one. Uh, it looks like we we have Stin Steakhouse versus Meta Humpers here, and Stin Steakhouse has an 80%. People, 80% of the audience thinks that um, Details wins this every time. I got to go with my boys over uh, in Meta Humpers. I am hoping for the best. Make sure you get your votes in. We're about to go live. Um, I'll give it a couple more seconds here. While you're giving them, I, I would put my bets on Steakhouse. I, I think it's going to be a 70-30 on Steakhouse here. I think it's probably more, I think it's 80-20, to be honest. I think that Details is a monster. You got Fabi, he's a monster too, but MV, MV's going to get slowed by Details, right, um, on that Suck Sage. And then uh, Yongi's going to do his best to try to run somebody down, but there's a lot of pressure on Yongi, who's our only barcode member in the tournament here. There's a lot of pressure on Yongi to make something happen here. Uh, as he goes to dive in to look for the first CC, Details actually down at 50%. Ooh, Fabi has to, has to V right there as he... He's afraid he's going to get one shot by details. Um, moves forward, throws out a frontal guard. Uh, let's get back into the action here. Davin's looking for Fabi uh, on the side of the fight here. Oh, oh my goodness. Passer finds a grab right there. And it does look like that Yongi went down, but Passer gets traded back. No, he does get the V off. Envy's very low on HP as well. It looks like he might go down as well. Pastor Pete in the corner does get his health back. Davin's really low. <gasps> Drops super low. D Details tries to get a little bit of, a uh, uh, of his health back, but he did almost die right there. And all three members of Meta Humpers are dead just like that, Johnny. And it's 1-0. It, very, very quick 1-0. I think that was one of our fastest matches today in the tournament. Yeah, that I, was... I, that was that, Yeah, that was pretty quick. That was pretty quick. Uh, I think that's a, a, a good showcase near the beginning of the difference between Tails and Fabi of their initial trade into each other and seeing Fabi having to V out of there. You have to be careful um, when you know the other player has a lot of gear and they're going to be just as skilled, if not more, on the class than you are. Right. Um, okay. Now the gates are up and away we go and Meta Humpers are very close to elimination here as Davin dives right in on that Wusa, but it's okay he was just taking a lap um it looks like details going uncontested on the side there and there's not much they can do uh about that uh envy does get behind him looks for a cc doesn't quite find it though uh and it looks like oh fabi just got one shot on the side of it tragically he is down yongi's losing hp um way too quickly he had to v mvi is the only one left alive he does find a cc on the details he's doing his best in this 2v3 here on uh, finds details again hello mv absolutely huge but that's why he's in show a succession sage finding details of all people on the cc right there not able to if he can find him one more time it would be like a miracle but if he could find him one more time it might be uh, a savable round here as they are trying to run him down. Uh, Davin doing so much damage to him, trading back on that suck Wusa. As he goes in, it looks like Yongi went down, and now it's just MVI left alive against three. Oh my goodness, gets a CC on a Pastor Pete. Does he have the damage? He's trying to avoid details this damage too. But nope, is going to end up going down at the end of that one. And Johnny, it is a 2 0 for Steakhouse. Very much a 2 0 for Steakhouse. And. I mean, going into it, that's what I was kind of thinking. You have uh, the very, very meta team that Steakhouse is. You have Details, the best succession uh, caster in the game, fighting against Fabi. While a newer player, while a decent player, isn't going to be able to compete against the number one. And finally, Davin, uh, a fairly well-known player on the succession, Wusa, just an absolutely fantastic class, able to tear it up in these kind of situations as he knows how to play that class in all of these uh, teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right okay we're gonna look ahead 
Uh, <laughs> Johnny. Johnny, did you what? change? Is that... What? No. What? How? Is that a bolt? Oh, God. It's actually just... I... <laughs> All right. I, I, all right, I see. I, all right, we're, look, we're looking ahead to the next one. Among Us V3. I, give me a, I, hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I, I, I don't understand. If you stand next to me long enough, the baldness literally sears the hair off of your skin. Um, But okay, we have Among Us V3 versus Untamed in this one. This is multi melter Meth, and Pig on this one and again we talked about this match where do you think the weak points are uh in this team comp here uh, I, I that's the fun part there are none yeah that's the <laughs> I, 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 pig is gonna be you know he, he's shown how devastating he can be on the class he's so tanky um he constantly chases after you he's holding the w key down he gets in your face meth applying a lot of pressure with the speed and damage that awakening musa has Again, very geared on evasion. It's a tough match. If you don't have a Valkyrie buff or a class that specializes in killing those evasion players, you're going to have a rough time against Pig and Meth. And then finally, Multi Meltor, while not evasion, is still nothing to scoff at. Playing the Awakening Draconia, which is something, again, with a ton of gear, a ton of damage, and is really, really disgusting if you let it just you know, free cast because it's just going to pump that damage in the back of you, like we saw in previous matches with Flowers. Right on, yeah, and then over on the other side, we have Untamed. There we go, Untamed is King James IRL, Bingy, and Hero Play uh, on this one. And Johnny, I, I'm not lying, I feel like it's really one-sided. I feel I, like I it, think this is yeah, it's the underdog say, I think here, this right? This is one of the yeah. most one-sided matches of the day so far. Uh, and that's and that's the thing with this tournament is that even if it's one sided, that's not saying that a team is necessarily bad, but one team is just so far ahead that it's just it's unfair um, in, in some ways, whether it be composition, skill, gear or all of the above. Right on. Yeah, no, we uh, absolutely. I think that Untamed has its work cut out for it, but that doesn't mean they can't win this round. We've seen crazy things so far in this tournament. Uh, but teams are starting to get knocked out now, and your backs are against the wall. Neither team can afford uh, to lose this one as we move over towards versus. I mean, it, this is a thing hold that on, it's hold, always going to be. Oh, okay, go. Okay. Yeah, I think this is uh, still a game for Untamed. I don't think this is 100 to 0. Uh, Untamed has King James on the succession Sage, which is very good into evasion. That's a class that I was talking about, where if you have it, it can do fine. Um, the Awakening Zerker and the Awakening Ninja might struggle a little bit more, especially with trying to get off some of that damage to that W key team. Um, but I think if they play well enough, if they get some of the grabs from Bingy that they need, if Hero Play can apply the pressure that is is required, then I think they can do fine. Uh, but it's gonna it's gonna take some great synergy and some great gameplay from these players. Yeah, this is the audience has this at the most one sided match all day at 94 to 6. Nope, never mind, 92 to 8. So never mind now, the Divios one was then the most favored. And they still, they were taking a lot of damage uh, in that round. So even the favored ones, um, you just never know uh, exactly what is going to happen. I think, I mean, it's it's definitely not in their favor, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to say. Like if Bingy can get... Um... I don't want to say lucky, but if Bingy can isolate one of the evasion players, that's probably going to be his best chance because the class can do really well into evasion, but he has to be able to get his combo damage off, and a lot of that's unprotected. Yeah. It's in transition. Hold up. Yeah, I think that Awakening Berserker doesn't struggle so much into evasion as you might think. Uh, that's... The accuracy modifiers on that class kind of go hard, uh, but you're right. Yeah. It is gonna it is gonna be hard for him to get his damage off. As I think, um, kind of what you were implying there, because like multi and pig running you down. I don't know, man. That's gonna be a little rough, but we'll see. Pig jumping into the middle of the arena here uh, on the hunt, holding that W key as is tradition. Look at him just holding. Like you can see his knuckles dragging uh, as Bingy actually finds the first grab of the match right there uh, and is taking 
Malty's taking a lot of damage. Malty's down at 20%, but that's okay. Awakening Draconia just uses a skill and is totally fine. There is nothing wrong with that class. Absolutely no weaknesses, but this is fine. Uh, Malty just kind of kites right away from it and just heals his way straight through it. Spiral Cannon actually catches King James here, uh, and Pig and Meth just throw a decent amount of damage down onto him. Good backflip there from Pig catching Bingy. Bingy's on the ground. He's gonna have to be right there as Meth is swoops in and throws that damage down on the awakening musa right there pig dashing the through yep there's another catch right there oh my goodness bingy does go down but multi's on the ground too is forced to v this time it is still a 2v3 but i think that they can win this if they can catch multi and they did catch him no v oh no he did okay there's the v from multi multi is back against the wall they have to try to disengage pig and meth right here and hero play is on the ground meth comes in for the big damage and multi reach as multi rejoins this fight here the awakening draconia just needs to play safe and i'm sure that's what they're telling him uh in comms here is it is a 3v2 uh with a minute and 30 left on the the clock again meth just playing the outside of the fight waiting for pig to make any um plays happen here there's the grab right there we should see meth come in from off screen there he is on cue right there and meth honestly showing why this composition is so strong got hero play too and there's meth on his heels so so clean the synergy between these two it's a beautiful thing to watch uh as we go in here hero play is gonna go down and it is a 1v3 now King James IRL goes down as well, and Johnny as predicted there. But almost I, not as predicted. We almost lost. But well, Multi gives a heart attack. Every time this team plays, Multi's giving us a heart attack, man. Well, I think uh, Bingy ended up getting a really, really good grab on Multi. And in my opinion, Multi should have died. He's, you know, he's a drag, and sure, the class can be tanky when it's casting its skills, which heal. But he was being held up for, you know, 10 seconds or so. He should die. Um, I, I think that's a little bit lackluster on his teammates for not being able to kill him. Um, but following up again, Bingy, you know, even if he has some of that accuracy or some of that damage he wants to do, he's built tanky and he's not able to get the full combo off. He needs to get all of that um, accuracy buff or evade shred or anything similar to kill an evasion player full on. Yeah, it's gates up and away we go here. Potentially the last round for Untamed. If they lose this, their back is to the wall. Bingy with another clean grab. He got Meph this time. The critical grab right there. Meph trying to hold on to his V. I'm not... Where is the damage? Oh my goodness. Where was the damage from Hero Play and company uh, on that one? Absolutely tragic. But Bingy finding a clean pick on the meth right there and not able to clean it up. Yo, Choice, thanks for the Songachi buff, buddy. Really appreciate that. Uh, in the middle of the round, everybody gets a free DP and it's gonna help Bingy. It helps the Zerker. He gets back up. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Choice. Paint Pal is in your inventory. Bingy stands back up, grabs multi, returns fire, weapon spree. King James IRL does go back down on the backside of the fight. And so Bingy living didn't do too much right there but why that was actually pretty funny i'm not sure the one dp made the difference but dang that was pretty funny that probably goes to vistanity that was crazy uh right there biggie running for his life right now it is a 2v3 um in the middle of this one biggie needs to find some sort of pick uh here and hero plate needs to capitalize meth is running low uh on hp uh but biggie a, a little unsure of who to grab in this case multi kiting around as well honestly multi or meth are both good targets for him goes in gets stunned oh no multi's on the ground too though bingy um goes into v meth is on the sniff warp it goes the wrong way bingy comes out of v very expertly already walking and continues jumping away from pig pig not able to capitalize on that bingy does land the slowdown um but does actually get caught right there that's the end of him is the multi damage from that awakening Draconi is going to bury him tragically it is just hero play left alive into the final minute here and it looks like this is the last we will be seeing of the untamed team johnny in, in that second round there it looked a lot better for um the untamed team bingy playing absolutely out of his mind there i i was quite impressed by his performance it felt like he just didn't have the follow-up from his team that he needed 
One of the super strong things about the Awakening Zerker and the Succession Sage um, composition together is that when that Zerker gets that grab and extends it, the Sage should just be dumping every bit of damage that he has on top of the Zerker. And that's something we just didn't see, which is quite unfortunate for the Untamed Boys because I think it resulted in a loss in both rounds due to it. Yep. Um, and as we look ahead here, it's important to note, guys, that it looked like Don Skeptic had to leave early for brunch. Um, and so they, Skeptic Love Shies actually asked me if they could sub anyone in, uh, and they found Goldsteinberg. Of course, I have no problems with Goldstein. He absolutely can sub. So it is not going to be Don Skeptic here. We're going to see Goldstein subbed in for Skeptic Love Shy here. Um, absolutely. So let's go ahead and take a look at the team's compositions, uh, as we kind of get going into this one. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. where's my, there he is. There we go. Skeptic Love Shies. We've got, it's not Don Skeptic. It is Goldstein Berg, um, on Awakening Warrior. Uh, he is on his main here. No gamble, no loss on the suck hash and Armin on the suck ninja. How do you think that changes this composition? Um, did you say gold was on his warrior, right? Yes. Um, I kind of like the warrior a bit more than the awakened DK. Um, it's going to apply a bit more pressure. I'm trying to think of how it's going to play into the con the other team before we dive into that part. Um, I, I like it a lot. It provides another grab. Uh, you have uh, not too much extra damage from it, but I don't think that's necessarily their big issue. You have a bit more, you have that bruiser that you kind of need, it, uh, it feels like. Well, it might not be the tankiest of the bruisers. It's definitely more of a bruiser. I imagine gold is going to be super high in accuracy too, which will help against uh, any evasion on the other side. Um, I, I think it's a slight... In let's, upgrade, well, but let's, it's very slight. Yeah, let's look over at the uh, the console boys here. Um, there we go. It's console boys. Pink's combat and Mahiru on this one. Do you think that um, these boys have what it takes to come out and represent the entire console community for us uh, and take this win, Johnny? I think that the console boys have done a great showing for console and both themselves. I don't know how well within the community they are known. Um, I know combat, uh, but I think Pinks and uh, Maru, Maru, Maru um, are lesser known players and definitely showing out um, that they are skillful in their respective classes. I think this is definitely, I, I like this one a lot. I like this match. This feels like a very even-ish match. Um, I want to put it 50-50 either way. I think if the console boys continue playing like they have, they'll do just fine. Um, I think if gold can synergize really well with Armin um, and the suck hash, then it'll do just fine. Um, yeah, I, but I I like the suck Mewa. I'm going to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Man, every time we've seen a suck Mewa play so far in this tournament, it has been just a W. Um, most times, although like the console boys obviously lost their first round, but like they against a team that is like mountains more geared than them right and like mm -hmm. they all they still took around you know like i think that that may would just bring so much damage i think goldstein's gonna have his work cut out for him because he's gonna be the initiator um here as armin and um no gamble no loss are basically just gonna have to play around him uh but we're gonna see here uh as we look towards the versus screen There we go. And again, it is not Don Skeptic. It is going to be Goldstein Berg um, subbing in for Skeptic in this tournament here. So Armin, Goldstein, and no gamble, no loss versus Pink, Combat, and Sayu. All right, Johnny, give me your final predictions. Final predictions, I'm going with... I'm going to go with Console Boys, 60-40. I, uh, I think the Suck Wiz is big, uh, especially with the, the two rats just running people down. I think so as well. I think the console boys uh, might just have the advantage here, but they're up against probably the person who's most educated in the game. Um, on PvP, on it's transitioning. There we go. Yeah, we got Armin TF 
uh pigs we got everybody we got goldsteinberg in here my hero's on the side of the fight looking for armin not gonna find anything goldstein tries to go on the awakening wizard not actually gonna find that though um and again ooh, my hero gets stunned pinks is there to guard him but he does get knocked over there's the collapse down but my hero doesn't have to be right there they didn't collapse fast enough uh as tendon cutter gets him out of a bad situation there um as there's the flash flash moving forward looking for goldstein who keeps trying to get pressure that maywa right there uh goldstein in the middle of everything doing a great job of positioning on that awakening warrior there oh in the corner someone's getting bodied goldstein just got a kill on a combat just ran him down into the corner there as awakening warrior does to awakening wizard and the console boys are down in a 2v3 at this stage right now doing their best to kite around my hero gets stunned he is knocked over do they have the damage here uh, there's Shadow Stomp coming down, not actually finding the CC, though, but Goldstein's down at half health. Can they get the grab? They do find the grab. There's Red Rain going down as well um, to, from Armin, trying to put any amount of damage down. Pinks takes too, damage, too much damage and has to back up. Mihiro must back up uh, as well. There's the same goon buff uh, as well. Thank you so much, guys, for buffing Galtheon, too, uh, like you did there. Mihiro doing his best on this Sakuno here in this 2v3 to try to find uh, a pick here, but it's very difficult as Pinks just has to keep running for his life. Uh, it looks like he got grabbed by Goldstein right there uh, and is getting comboed, but he's now dashing away. Ano forced, a, forced a V right there out of Mahiro. He's the only one left alive. It does look like Pinks did go down. And so it looks like the console boys are going to lose the first round of this one, but boy, oh boy, was that actually pretty close. It didn't look close, but I promise that that was pretty close. Goldstein playing really well with his team, synergizing even for a fill-in, uh, something that's usually not what you see. Uh, usually a lot of the time the fill-in seems to, to stick out a bit. So I'm actually quite impressed with Gold's performance oh, in this my. match. Oh my gosh, he actually almost just, he, he got the grab and then got two CCs and Armin killed him from behind. That was actually, oh, that was sweaty. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> no, that was, that actually got uh, really sweaty there. Uh, for a moment, uh, but that's okay. It looks like Skeptic loves Shies again. I didn't choose the team con the team name. I feel like Skeptic probably didn't think this through too much. Uh, but Skeptic loves Shies. Um, looking so good here. We're gonna lock on to Gold uh, as he seemed to be the initiator uh, for his team in that last one. Awaken showing what Awakening Warrior can do for his team uh, in the tournament here. Walking in, gonna play it relatively slow out of the gate from both teams. There's Pink's coming in. Gonna try to get a cheeky catch on a goal, but not gonna find it. Pinks gets caught uh, on the return from Armin, but no damage. Just stood up and ran away. Maywa evasion goes hard right there. Two people on him. Didn't take any damage. Good grab from Goldsteinberg right there, um, but takes a... It's kind of a rough trade from the Awakening Wizard on the back side of it. Um, tries to catch Pink with that spear. Not gonna get there. Slashing the dead. Not quite gonna find him. And the Maywa dashes to safety once again. Uh, Pink's on the ground, just getting CC'd all the time. You hate to see it. It looks like he did have to V. Uh, oh no, he didn't V. He just stood through it. Ah, oh, the Pink's just so much gear. Oh my goodness. Armin was on the ground for a moment. Stood right back up, though. And no CCs for this team yet, though. I mean, console boys are struggling to find an initiation here. Um, as Pink's is really low once again in the middle of everything. Not what you want to see. Uh, but Goldstein gets very, very low as well on the backside of that trade. Pink's gets traded down. And this might just be the end for the console boys. Uh, as Gold is just trying to wait in block. Uh, looking for potentially a grab on that Awakening Wizard there. Just holding it. There looks like they're looking for the Kuno. Because they've given up on trying to catch combat on that wizard. It's obnoxious. Um, there he goes. He goes in. There's the grab on the combat. Forcing the V right there. And now they're on the sniff. Yeah, I just think that Pink's just played it a little too aggressively here, Johnny. Um, oh, Goldstein's on the ground. Didn't get the re... They didn't re-CC him, though. Ah, oh, tragic. Uh, Mahiro now trade back, traded back a little bit of damage. Combat gets grabbed again. He doesn't have V this time, though. Um... HP bars are about to tick down to 50%. So to be honest with you, there, there's a lot of burst damage about to happen right now. Combat's very low. I'm not sure why he's not TPing away. He's got a heal. Uh, there's the partial heal. Goldstein's looking for the grab. Uh, actually finds the CC. Makes short work of the Awakening Wizard there. Very clean, crisp play right there. And Mahiro is the only one left alive in a capped situation in a 1v3. Uh, where HP bars are capped. And Goldstein will find him and clean it up. 
Jason actually ended up having a very, very large impact on that team. His ability to chase down the caster and anyone else who's trying to make it away was fantastic for uh, the team's performance. Um, so I wonder if they'll end up keeping him in or if they'll uh, bring Skepta back in uh, next week for it. But uh, yeah, they'll, I, they I, will have I, to I make a match. decision. Yeah, they will have to make a decision. Uh, I did, again, like technically, you know, like subbing someone in mid-tournament. That could be a little dicey, but again, I, I, I have no problems with it. So um, it is what it is. Goldstein absolutely had an impact on that match there. I think he did a great job. Um, and they will proceed to the next round of this tournament here. Um, and that is going to be a wrap on our matches for today. Uh, next time, guys, we are going to have a round of three through all the way through the finals. That's going to be happening next Saturday at noon Central Standard Time. Tomorrow, we have the EU bracket, um, which I will be shoutcasting with by Septimus Prime. Um, uh, at least on the first day and Schlieri on the second day. Um, but yeah, the first round of the EU tournament is tomorrow. Uh, it will be at 6, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, 12 p.m. Um, Central European Time uh, on that one. So, uh, Johnny, tell me, what was your favorite part of the day? What was the... Okay, the bald cap is crazy. <laughs> I thought cap? I was on bottom there from... Like, normally at that, like, I was like, are we in the bedroom? What happened here? Oh, wait a minute. Um... The, the favorite part of the day, I think it had to have been the uh, the the two v three into the two v one switcheroo from the Dunzo team. I I it was one of those things of as soon Crazy. as Dunzo died, I could feel like oh it's over, and then the flowers just throwing all the damage in the back, just saying no, it's not not yet, and just ending the match or killing the two opponents, uh, allowing them to end the match for a victory was was probably one of my favorite parts of the day. Absolutely. Um, guys, again, I want to shout out Invicta. Is a huge shout out to Invicta Gaming, um, who is sponsoring part of the prize pool for this tournament. Most of it is right out of my pocket. Um, but um, uh, Invicta is putting up the prize for second place in this tournament. Absolutely huge, especially since Pearl Abyss uh, chose not to sponsor the tournament as well. So if you're looking at trying to get your PC optimized, maybe you're looking to build a new PC uh, or you don't know where to start, they offer free consultations uh, for PC builds. You can ask them, go ask an expert to help you. Even if you don't necessarily use Invicta to build the custom PC, they can absolutely help you pick the best parts um, available to you. If you don't believe me, go ask Choice. If you don't believe me, go ask Goldstein. Go ask any creator in the category. They are absolute specimens. Uh, and I want to say a big shout out for sponsoring this tournament, guys. We love companies that sponsor Black Desert Online stuff because it makes events like this possible. So go out and support them. We absolutely love them. Um, my favorite part of the day was the whole thing. I'm just going to cop out. Like, literally, I'm so excited for the rest of this tournament. It's going to be so hype. There will be a hype video coming out uh, on Wednesday of this week, a little hype trailer, if you will. Um, and I will update the bracket and post it in Discord this evening um so that everyone can see uh what it looks like you can always do exclamation point um bracket as well uh to try to find that um johnny you want to give yourself a shout out here yeah uh my name is johnny five i host the node war podcast 11 15 est on fridays host the siege cast whenever there's some content do vod reviews and other pvp stuff throughout the weeks and days as i can uh thank you blue for uh letting me shout cast with you it's an absolute blast to do these kind of tournaments and uh competitions so i was glad to be on today yeah no i am um, i'm super glad to have you johnny i couldn't ask for a better shoutcaster to be with me on the desk here i just have every faith that you're gonna carry me through it and then you always bring something to the you always bring something to the broadcast which is what i love and honestly we look we're kind of twinning right now it's kind of this kind of crazy um you wouldn't know unless that the warrior thing in the background there so guys <laughs> make sure you guys go follow johnny five i'll give him a shout out right here uh there we go Okay, there we go. Make sure you go follow Johnny Five Guys. He runs the Node War podcast. He's constantly shoutcasting with me on the desk. He runs his own tournaments as well. Um, and he's absolutely a character. So make sure you guys go support him as well. Um, let us know in the comments on YouTube which match you thought was the best, guys. Again, supporting stuff like this helps us do more stuff like this in the future. If you have the Amazon Prime sub, don't forget to drop it. It is free um you are supporting a good cause here uh we're gonna see you guys tomorrow for the rest uh or for the start of the eu bracket which should happen in about 
14 hours from right now. So set your clocks by that. Um, the EU bracket actually has 28 matches tomorrow. There are 27 or 26 teams in the EU bracket, which is the most EU has ever seen for any tournament in Black Desert history on top of the biggest prize pool in Black Desert history. Don't tell EU they don't show up. So guys, make sure you tune in tomorrow. We'll be back next Saturday as well um, with uh, the finals for this Blue Squadron Open. I absolutely love all of you. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Siege is going to be incredible too.